<laughs> and welcome to tonight's episode of Critical Role, where a bunch of us nerdy ass voice actors sit around and play Dungeons and Dragons. Yeah, we do. Um, it's been a while. I, well, it's, it's been a little so long since Matthew Mercer run Dungeons and Dragons. It's been a while. It's been a nice break. That, that chair's been violated by more than a few people. I can smell it. Okay. Yeah. Um, no, well, they I, told me to wear pants. I just went my way all the way through to the bottom. Yeah, the very <laughs> onion musk you got from that end of the table. Uh, I miss it. I do. I'm excited for the new campaign in the new year. I've been working really hard on that world. You guys uh, hope you get excited too. I'll have information about that first game soon. Um, but tonight, we're excited because when we get to have the fantastic Jennifer Hale join us. Jennifer Hale! I am honored and terrified. Good. <laughs> You'll be fabulous. I am a virgin. Just in quotes, right above your head. <laughs> honored and terrified. Call me HT. There you go. <laughs> Hashtag. No, um, so yeah, we're happy to have you, Thank excited you. for the play. Um, once again, don't feel stressed. Yeah. Ask questions if you need them. People here to help you. Yeah. Be good. Yay! Be stressed. Um, Be very, very stressed. No, nobody's watching. <sighs> Laura, we talked about this. Um, but tonight, on top of that, we have a very special uh, one shot tonight. Yeah. Uh, the fantastic mm -hmm. folks at Blizzard have come together and asked us to do a Hearthstone one shot in celebration of the upcoming expansion, Kobolds and Catacombs. Yeah! Uh, super excited about that. Um, for those who don't, aren't aware of it, uh, it's an upcoming expansion for the card game Hearthstone. Uh, that brings kind of the classic fantasy dungeon crawl element to the awesome existing card game. Uh, it incorporates a bunch of cool, mysterious magical items and uh, nine new legendary weapons, uh, some of which you'll recognize if you've played World of Warcraft in the recent expansions. Um, there's unidentified magical items that you can find in the game. So it kind of definitely has more of like a D and D, you know, classic dungeon crawl feel. Uh, there's spell stones, you have to power as you go through. It's got a lot, of, a lot of really cool new mechanics that adds to the game. And they have a single player dungeon run mode now where you're actually doing a dungeon delve with your Hearthstone deck, playing through a storyline, making choices, and it, it brings a whole new kind of tabletop element to the game, which I've seen a bunch of it. Uh, they even had me come and sing in the trailer. So I've been kind of yes, yeah. kind of tied to this. It was so fabulous, that sweet Matt. vibrato mm -hmm. making oh. its Possibly way. other elements of the expansion. But, uh, but it's been really fun, uh, and we're excited for you guys to check it out. Um, there's also, for those who've been playing the game, there's a new mechanic called Recruit, which allows you to recruit members to your party, basically minions from your deck to help you out. Um, so it has a whole bunch of new mechanics that work out for the new dungeon run mode uh, and other elements of the game, so definitely look forward to checking that out. It is uh, coming out December 7th, so right around the corner. Oh, man. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so keep an eye out for that. Uh, go to uh, the, the uh, uh, bit.ly slash crhearth to stay up to date and learn more. Uh, also, to celebrate the release of Hearthstone, uh, the people at Blizzard have created a custom kobold escape room uh, based on one of the layers in the world. Yeah, and they'll be live streaming uh, players and personalities from the Hearthstone community going through that escape room uh, on December 5th at 7, sorry, at 4.30 p.m. Pacific time uh, at twitch.tv slash play Hearthstone or youtube.com slash Hearthstone. Uh, check it out. You get to vote on items to help them try and make their way through it. It's actually a community what? interactive event. It looks to be pretty cool. Um, so definitely go check that out on December 5th and then the expansion oh, on December 7th. This, this is why I feel bad that not reading the, the announcements now. Yeah, I'm like, that sounds like fun. Yeah, it's all a surprise for us. <laughs> oh, oh, what, what? I have an announcement. What's your announcement? <gasps> wait, but I don't think I have it with me. Wait, oh, no. wait, wait. Oh. is it this? Is it this? Wait, wait. It is that! Aha! Look at okay. that. Okay. <laughs> I'm ready. All right, go for it. Oh, okay, it's my turn. <laughs> <laughs> da, 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 da. We have new merch in the store now. We've been waiting on these ones what a segue. for so long, and they're finally here, and it's so beautiful. It's so pretty. This We've is been the artwork that's like on my it's my save screen on my phone. It's oh, been wow. that way for me and Ashley is. both. So we're in love with this art, and it's got pages, and so you can take all your personal D and D notes in here. <laughs> That's why we did it. And it goes with our pencil set, so you can have, what? you know, you can, you can have one, you can pick one. Yeah. You, can, yes. you can make your own art book. And That's Sam right. When you die. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, go wow. check it out. It's in the store now. Oh, it's awesome. Thank you, Laura. You're welcome. Wow. Um, it's so cool. Uh, also, cool note, uh, the third issue of Critical Role Vox Machina oh, Origins yes. comic oh. is available. Um, and Kyoga. It, it, it starts getting more and more intense as each issue That's goes so along. Good. Check it out if you haven't had a chance. He has it on Comixology, uh, digital.darkhorse.com, and wherever else you can find digital comics online. Um, it's pretty rad. And even the next few, and, and me and Liam, who've read the uh, the scripts and 
giving notes and scripts for future issues. It's just getting better and better as it goes. So, screening test. Y'all like the kings of the kingdom. Like, we don't even know, but you do. Three yeah, just came out. I just read five, and oh. it is so baller. Oh, oh my god. Oh, I don't want to know. Uh, you will always you have four and five. I know. That's yes. true. I may have to steal that. We'll see. What are you be giving? patient with the rest of them. Tell us. No. <laughs> Patience. Is um, also, to rewind, yeah. that beautiful art on that book is by at Nat Rose. Rose yes, with a Z. Thank you. Uh, yeah. And they uh, that made that ages ago, and Laura's been in love with it for ages. Yeah, so we had to put it on. Yeah. It is kind of beautiful. Mm-hmm. And doesn't it look just so perfect? It's so perfect. And by the way, it's the Feywild. <laughs> oh, yay. Tonight, I I was, I'm, I was, very, I'm very excited. I, I, I was not aware books. this was coming down the yeah, pipe. Yeah, and it's shiny. I don't know if you can see it, but there's like a little, I bet, got a little they can shimmer. See it. it's got, I, I've learned, thanks to the art book, I know what this is called. It's got spot gloss. Oh. Now that I know oh. the technical, thanks to the it's art book, gloss. I know it's got a spot gloss, gloss. gloss cover. Oh, so that's yes. very nice. Gloss? That is one wow. shiny bare ass right here. Yeah, that's, 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 that's a. It's just so. That lovely. is a polished. You can rub it for luck. If you're so inclined. If you rub it too much, though, he goes. Yeah. So you were all here tonight to witness somebody in a very completely honest way shout excitedly, and it's in the Feywild. And I love that that is a thing that happened. I've missed you. What's going on? It's the Feywild. All right, a couple other quick announcements so we can get into the game. Um, I will be at Paradise City Comic Con in Miami, January 12th to the 14th. So all you folks out there, East Coast, Florida, I'm uh, visiting my old stomping grounds where I originally grew up. Um, so you can check me out there. Also, later in 2018, I'll be at Oda Fest in Calgary, May 18th to 20th, and Acon in Texas, June 7th to 10th. So, oh, early announcement for those dates, but that way, you, if you want to come and say hi, you can mark it in your calendar. Oh, because I'll yeah. have to say hi to you. We're, we're at Sac Anime, yeah. January like 5th or 6th or something. something. It's the first week of January. Yeah. Oh. We, we hated missing when Sam and Liam yeah. went, so. We love Sac Anime. We love Sac, yeah. Sac yeah. Anime. So, we'll be at Sac Anime first week. Laura and I will. I got yeah. to hang with you guys at Sac, Anime, at Sac mm-hmm. Anime a few years ago. We did yes. a little interview. We did a, pl- a, a podcast. Show. Yeah. So, yeah. And we're so also fun. doing. Something else. We tried to get you to talk about get killing your friends, and you would not do it. You wouldn't do it. I wouldn't do it. Why won't you kill your friends? <laughs> What's the matter with you? You're gonna go down. You're gonna go down no. hard. Oh no, it's gonna you be know. Bad. I, I get okay. Tonight I will. Yeah. There you go. <laughs> no, you're supposed to it's collaborative. We'll see how it goes. <laughs> right. <laughs> uh, did a new episode of Madness go? A uh, new episode of Madness. It came oh. out, and we have uh, this guy to show. Oh. oh. This is the shirt for for Sagas of Sundry Madness. <laughs> I am a Jenga pro. If you want to learn how to play Jenga, you must watch Saga of Sundry <laughs> Madness. Wow. This eye glows in the fucking dark. It glows. Let me see, let me see. Ew, I, do, I do like the idea that it the Jenga does. catchphrase from Critical Role was just preparation for you to actually That's be right. a Jenga master. I surprised myself, let me tell you. <laughs> we, were, we were like, we loved our dread shirts. We were like, it's a shame they don't glow, and they were like, next time. I'm like, yeah. man. Go. Uh, this, I think this is Ivan Van Norman's eye. I hope it's his eye. It looks about right. It's about the color. Yeah, you, oh, you better hope oh, that's it's, an eye. It's, it's the door of the house, right? It's, 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 it's the door of the house. <laughs> <laughs> Some elder chores are more horrible than others. <laughs> mm, that's terrible. Yeah, off the yeah, rails. The off fuck. the rails. All right, guys. Off the Happy rail. to be back. We missed you. Sorry for the chaos. Uh, bringing yeah, it yeah, down, chaos. we've finished our announcements. That means tonight we step into the world of Azeroth as we prepare for tonight's episode. Are you prepared? Of Critical Role. <laughs>
welcome back. <laughs> so, as we bring ourselves into this story, I missed you guys. <laughs> it's their fault. <laughs> <clears throat> It's okay. So, <clears throat> the Burning Legion has returned. Oh God, oh God, oh God, oh God. The world conquering armies of the corrupt Titan Sargeras have assaulted Azeroth, and the greatest heroes of both the Alliance and the Horde have gathered their resources to combat this apocalyptic scourge. Traveling off to the Broken Isles and to Argus beyond, to fight for the salvation of Azeroth, these heroes will be the stuff of legend. And while they're away, things are a little slow down here in the Eastern Kingdoms for you guys. As a, as a band of friends seeking to make a name for yourselves, the streets of Iron Forge grow dull with fetch quests and baking runs. Gilneas' biggest torment is a terrible flea infestation. After Stormwind holds a pet racing contest, which you each individually lose, you gather your frustration and head east in search for real adventure. Trudging through a mire of uninteresting quests and aid to local farmhands and wandering merchants, you've all amassed some equipment to aid you for the new challenges ahead. Although the uh, patchwork sources leave your gear somewhat mismatched in color and make, Bundle, you in particular, uh, yeah. seem to take pride in your lime green robes Bundle. that you were assured carried a powerful enchantment. Your troop now. It's from a boutique. <laughs> your troop has now found your way to the valley of the Red Ridge Mountains, seeking solid work, only to find the work boards empty and the wild beasts that roam the surrounding <laughs> landscape well in the hands of the local guard. You all sit within the Lakeshire Inn, within the village of Lakeshire. Two cups into your woes as you lament your life choices in clashing attire. The warm interior is rather vacant outside of your band, the hearth empty with naught but a smoldering log to combat the chilled morning air. That's right, you're two cups in for breakfast. The innkeeper, Brianna, yawns and leaves as the bartender, a fiery orange shoulder-length hair and mustache, walks over to deliver your next round of breakfast drinks. Sure is chilly in this place, huh? <laughs> <laughs> Maybe uh, you can add another log there. Over here in the fireplace. Yeah, in uh, that in that hearth. I'll throw one on. Okay. Thanks. All right. Let me know if you want another round. Yeah. Okay. This is a little weak. Do you have anything stronger than this? I I, I can go look, but I gotta do the log thing first. <laughs> Log, right then grog, yes? All right. If, if you have a menu of breakfast beers, that would be most gracious. All right. Mm. He looks a bit scattered, but goes off to put the, the log in the hearth. Um, so, as we go on the table, if you wouldn't mind, take a moment to describe your, scare, your character as you appear at the table. Yes. <clears throat> I am Locor Windfollow, paladin, keeper of virtues and righteousness. I am devilishly handsome, and I don't play well with others because of that devilish handsomeness. But my skills are always for sale, and, and my fellows seem to appreciate my <clears throat> roguish glued looks. Mm. You are quite handsome. Why, thank you. Oh, hi. My name is Greldamine Clipsol. <laughs> I'm a, a gnome mage. Um, I am short, even for a gnome, I know, that's fine. I, I wear my hair in a high bun. Um, it's brown. Um, and I'm uh, just the biggest fan of, of Jaina Proudmore. I think she's just the most amazing mage I've ever seen, you know? I hear good things about her. She's so powerful and, and beautiful and sounds amazing, I hear. I don't know, I haven't met her in person. But. Oh, okay. <laughs> I have to catch my breath. Okay. <clears throat> uh, my name is Bundle. Uh, I'm a dwarf. Uh, I've got a very, very nice lime green uh, robe. It's beautiful. Thank you. I'm very, very proud. I'm, I'm a priest, and uh, I've been studying for quite some time. Uh, 
learning my trade, perfecting it. It's, I'm a bit behind. I mean, there's, I've got some younger brothers that are doing much better than I am, and it's certainly they're succeeding more and going further, and that's fine, though, that's fine. I'm, I'm uh, doing my best, I'm taking my own pace. Uh, Going a bit, uh, a bit bold, but I'm trying to do my best to bring it over, to bring it over, <laughs> and it's going into a, it's not a great beard, but I, I, I use the, the, the hammocks to sort of, to liven it up a bit. It's good, no, it frames your face very well. Um, <laughs> and uh, I, yeah, I, 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 I feel like uh, I'm making my way at my own pace, very well. So, more beer, more beer. Oh. <laughs> I'm uh, Erwin Whiteclaw. It's been quite a long time since I've been in this much company. It's rather overwhelming. Um, I am a night elf of the rogue persuasion. I come from a long line of rogues. I attempted to be rather more of a business person and healer, but was quickly dragged into the family business. I spend large amounts of time alone, in the dark, by myself. I dress in black. I prefer it that way. <laughs> No reason to spend all that time by yourself. <laughs> I'm ready for another drink. <laughs> uh, yes, my name is uh, Quasarad Toulouse. No, Quasarad no, Toulouse? Quasarad Toulouse. Oh, okay. all ten of them. All, all ten, <laughs> yes. Uh, I am uh, Dranai, we're all white at all times, mm. top and bottom, underneath and front. <laughs> Whole nine yards. Uh, I'm simple man. I like uh, to uh, test myself in battle for the glory of Argus. Every day of my life for the glory of Argus. I also like to uh, sample the fine spirits of the realm, and I am a big uh, player of MMORPGs. <laughs> I like to unwind at night uh, when I am done killing the Burning Legion. What's uh, your handle, cuz? Uh, <laughs> uh, it is L-O-R Jenkins one, two, three, four. <laughs> <laughs> oh, creative, I like it. Cheers to that. <laughs> At this point, wow, the uh, for Argus. <laughs> the bartender comes by. This time, with the next round of drinks, the the one loggy place in there is like starting to catch a little bit, but it's cold enough in the morning where it's taking a little while. The smoke's kind of just billowing up a bit of it, dribbling past the uh, the top of the fireplace and kind of hitting what you can see as a casual uh, kind of stain of gray that reaches the roof of the interior of the tavern above it. Um, as he sets it down, he goes, I, "I'm sorry, I, I didn't mean to eavesdrop, um, but based on your conversation and the." Uh, Attire, I can see that you seem to be aspiring problem solvers. <laughs> Is that right? I guess so. That does describe it. Seems fair. Yes, I suppose. Well, wonderful, wonderful. Uh, my, my name is, uh, well, I'm the bartender here. I'm known as uh, Wentel. Um, I happen to have a problem that's in need of saving, friends, and solving. You see, well, um, this inn, it's been in my family for generations, left to me by my late father. And while it does keep me busy, and he looks around to a very empty tavern around you, <laughs> extremely busy, <laughs> my passions lie elsewhere. My hobby, my greatest of loves, is being a smearmonger. Oh. A, a, a what? A smearmonger? A, a smearmonger. Smear. That sounds great. A smearmonger, a chandler, crafter of light. Of course. A candle maker. Oh. Oh. oh! Yes, I thought you would. Oh. Make. Oh. What kind of candles? No, oh, all kinds of candles. Scented, colorful, sizes, Explosive. long wicks, short wicks. No, but I haven't dabbled either. Any black ones? Ah, <laughs> that'll bring us to the crux of our conversation. There were. I've been hoarding all the oils and fats from the kitchen since I was a boy, slowly learning to build a stock and keep it beneath my bed, and then eventually moving it to a shed off site, reading what books I had in secret. Now my father knew my interests in candle making. Anyway, and you see now his eyes begin to well up a bit and his hands are shaking. I went to go to my storage shed after buying a small homestead in Goldshire and opening, hoping to open a shop at some point in the future. It's all gone. All of it, just gone. Every single. Candle I've made. Oh no! God. <laughs> Just the horror. Even your fat stores? Well, the fat stores are normally stored in there, but they've gone bad since 
I, I asked for it to be investigated, but the guard just kind of laughed at me. They have no appreciation for fine candle work. At which point you notice across the room, the, uh, one of the other women who are in there, who's the local boyer, kind of chuckles under her breath and she eats her cold toast and stays at the table. Wendell kind of shoots her half glad, like an icy dagger glance and back to you. I, I ask, if, if you would help retrieve my life's work, I, w I would greatly make it worth your while. <laughs> I, I, I have my savings, which isn't much, just about 520 gold pieces. Uh, oh, oh and so I could probably muster some armor that Matches. That'd be great. What do you say? Do you have robes? I can be arranged. It doesn't have the match. Mm. I feel like I'm working on that. Well, we should present yeah. a united front, though. I mean, people should be able to see that we are a group. If you want to as join the lime green, green, that's as long as it's white. As long as it's <laughs> lime green. I'm partial to purple. I'll see what I can do about dye colors. Are fine. Yeah. <laughs> I'll have to send away. Possibly to Westfall. They have some good dyers there, but uh, if if you agree to this, then the, the sooner we can get off, the better. <laughs> and he kind of twirls his mustache with both of his fingers, kind of a nervous tick or an exciting exclamation of physicality. Shall we? I'll agree as long as you never do that again. <laughs> Very well. Uh, <clears throat> like twenty-five of those little red plants, but this sounds. This sounds fun. This sounds fun. Wendell, mm -hmm. you can count on us. I jump on top of the table and raise my fist into the air. I shake into my chair. He kind of awkwardly reaches out and like side fist bumps it, not sure what to do. Candles! I like her. <laughs> I'm sure I'm, the, this morning's fair will be also a part of the range. Sure. I was going to ask for a couple bottles of your best vintage to be added to the agreed upon prize. Oh. Very nice. Yes. Yes. Very well, I'll be happy to place it upon your tab that will be wiped clean upon the retrieval of my candles. A, a steed or two. I saw yeah. something out back that looked rather suitable. Ooh. I'll see what I can do. <laughs> uh, I only have so much I can do in the town, but let me try. <laughs> anyway, uh, and he rushes off and he comes back and he brings you two bottles of wine. Not the greatest. You, you don't get a lot of decent import over here at uh, Lakeshore, unfortunately. It's a little, little out of the way. Will it mess me up? Uh, if, if you were to chug it now, most likely. That's a deal. All righty. Uh, follow me, I'll take you to the shed. Yeah. See if you can learn anything. Yeah. Great. That's a bingo. We may need a clock for this one. <laughs> so, uh, uh, Wentel guides you outside of the Lakeshore Inn, around the back, and up past some bushes, there's a number of trees that crest right against the base of the Red Ridge Mountains, just above uh, the location of the inn. As he comes around, you can see there's the one stable off to the side. Which is, uh, uh, I'll talk to them and see what I can do, but uh, to be honest, a stable master, when we don't really get along. Just show me where he is. I will. I'm sure we can work something out. V very well. Um, should I take you to the to the shed first, or do you need your steed now? Maybe to the shed, since it's close. We can go to the shed. I like a shed. I don't want to make the small one run. <laughs> I don't you. mind. All right. Uh, and you see, like, he. He seemed to have confidence around the gnome, and he gets really sheepish in the gaze of the <laughs> night elf who stares down and probably stands a good you know, six inches taller than him. <laughs> um, so he leads you up past uh, this section of the, uh, to the base of the mountains, and you can see there's a, uh, a really, really nice looking shed that's settled between the edge of the mountains and a tree over there. It's closed, it's locked up, there's chains, um, but as you walk up, you can see that the actual lock has been broken and the chains kind of dangle off to the sides of the two. Uh, the two doors that open up into it. Mm. There's a trouble you left it unlocked. <laughs> I, I think someone broke the lock. I, I, you're making assumptions, I feel. That's a, that's a lot to just, just assume, just taking a first look. He opens the front doors to the shed, and upon looking inside, you can see uh, there are shelves arranged, there are small crates that have been pried open. Across the entirety of the floor, you see scraps of wax scattered here and there. Uh, large spaces where apparently uh, clusters of it were set and has since been pulled, and it is entirely empty and scraped wow. of any possible remainder of wax. And there's a sudden smell that comes out too. Uh, it could be a combination of either uh, rotting animal bits and or <laughs> some element of fecal matter. It's hard to really pick out, but it's not a pleasant interior. Are there any markings, uh, <clears throat> footprints, uh, different uh, toe patterns, any kind of claw I marks? I looked everywhere and saw nothing. Um, 
I'm also a bartender, and so I asked you guys. Yeah, that's fine. Um, cool. So if you want to have a look, please. Hi. Yeah. I was actually asking the DM. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> Do I see you with my Dranai eyes <laughs> as I stroke my chin tentacles? Uh, is there? A, it has Tentacle. been a while. You have tentacles. Oh, wow. you have tentacles on your chin. On my yes, chin. I, I don't. Uh, I don't like to draw attention to them. <laughs> you don't need to. They've been dripping. They've been dripping. All right, so are you getting Aww. to the ground? And That's right, I want to see if there's Go to make an investigation check. Yes. Please. I'm making an investigation check. I'm okay. rolling a d20. That's not very good. <laughs> uh, that is, uh, hold on, I've just solved the entire game. That's a two. <laughs> You get close to the ground, and there's a lot of small bits of wax, and you start pulling them together and piecing them, and you figure if you spend the next couple hours, you can maybe put together a very small candle. There were candles here. <laughs> you are correct. Father, you are astute as always. Bundle, would you mind checking the lock to see if uh, it is? Uh. And take a look at the lock. Make an investigation check. Oh, boy. Oh, wow. Oh, uh, wow. No. Up it's to a really good start. <laughs> <laughs> warm it up, warm it up, guys. Seven? <laughs> Seven? Holy smokes. Uh, the lock appears to have been broken through blunt force, but you have no other information you can draw from it. Lock appears to have been broken by blunt force. I spend lots of time in the I don't lock. know. Let me have a look. All right, do you want to go and make an investigation check as well? That's a good idea. Okay, <laughs> that's better than us. Uh, so that's you go from there much. to there, and you add so, that. So uh, it's uh, thirteen. Yeah. Thirteen. Mm. Thirteen. At this level. So as good. you, as you start glancing around, first things first. When you get closer to the ground and elements of the of the doorway, you can smell in the air. It's almost like a wet fur scent in the air. And as you glance towards the edge of the shed's opening and the mud and dirt that surrounds the exterior, you can see faint foot tracks in smattering different directions, many of them. There's multiple sets, sold shoes or boots of some kind, but it looks almost like there's also a toe or two protruding from the front. Um, smaller than a man's feet. Um, they lead away from the shed and then further up the mountain range to the westward direction. I've seen these before. It's been a long time. It was very far from here. I hesitate to name it. I'll leave that to the dungeon master. <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead and make a. Uh, <laughs> you can also it's tell. It's my first game! <laughs> you can also tell there were candles here, yes? Yes. Uh, I, I, yes. yes. I, can, I can smell there were candles here. <laughs> so go ahead and roll d20 and add. Too higher than grass. Yep. Add your intelligence modifier to this one. Okay. So look at your, your intelligence. Far left. Liam. Went up with the intelligence and modifier. Intelligence oh, modifier is up here, yeah. Five, five. plus. Oh, so it's, it's, it's 13. Saving 13. Throw, technically. 13. It's a saving throw. Oh, so, the actual. Oh, so intelligence check, you say? Yes. Um, intelligence check. Well, then it's just that plus. Uh, where the hell is it? I don't it? have any. There no, it is. Two. Ten. Uh, ten. Yes. Ten. Okay. You, you recall seeing tracks like this before, but you. The name is on the tip of your tongue. You're not entirely okay, certain where it is. The name's on the tip of my tongue, and I can't quite it's grab it. Can someone else grab it for me? Yes, let me see if I recognize these tracks. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Wait, so yeah. does anyone know that you make candles? Uh, mm. Other than your father? Well, he doesn't know yet. I was going to open the store first oh. and have him come take a look at it, but. Okay, so you don't have any candle enemies? I don't believe so. Not in this town. There isn't a candle maker. Not anymore. And are your candles scented? Some of them were. Do most of them smell like animal fat, though? Yes, they do, uh, by their very nature, but I try best to uh, add lavender to the batch, and occasionally. Lavender, you say? Yes, lavender. lavender. What about potpourri? Oh, lavender. It's, it doesn't it's mean anything. Potpourri. We've discussed this, it's potpourri. You're dropping off the tea. No, it's, it's just potpourri. You're fucking with me. No, I'm. <laughs> For the fourth time, not. <clears throat> Were you going to track them? I'd like to try. Okay. Right, make a survival check. Natural twenty. Oh! oh. 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 With your grog eyes. With grog eyes. You watch as the, uh, the the armored human paladin gets low. His eyes suddenly spark as he looks to the left, looks to the right, looks down to the ground, and almost like a hound dog begins just trailing. 
this tracks curving around the shed into the west as you guys slowly follow Good suit. Go. This is why we pay him big, big gold. Mm-hmm. Big bucks right there. And because I'm heavy. Yay. We pay uh, him beer and women. Uh, oh. As you guys follow, Wentel stays a few steps behind. He seems kind of excited, but also not sure what you guys are going to discover. And you can see the tension kind of rising in him. His shoulders are slowly creeping up across the sides of his head. Um, stay back. Yes, stay we're back. clearly much more experienced fighters than you are. I completely agree. Mm. I hope. Um, I, I, at which, at this point, you catch up uh, to your human pallet in front over there, and you find the trail. Uh, the the tracks lead up to a large cluster of bushes that are embedded right in the base of the mountain range. What do bushes want with camels? The thorny. <laughs> They're thorny. They're dry. It's just like a like a small bramble cluster. It's about five or so feet up. It's a wide chunk, and you can see bits and pieces of it kind of scattered across the edge of the, the mountain range here. Um, as you get closer, you can see some of the jagged edges of the bush have a faint a bush of oh, the bush. A mighty bush. <laughs> Are we amused by the bush? The bush is the. Bu- <laughs> You find the bush. Boucher. You find the bush rather amusing. <laughs> I like the bush. <laughs> We've heard that about you. <laughs> you. On the jagged edges of the bush, you see what appears to be faint elements of a waxy residue that have been scraped onto some of the thorns of the brambles. Probably um, unrelated. <laughs> and you just beyond, you can barely see a dark recess about four feet tall and about four feet wide behind the bush that presses into the mountain range. The tracks lead to this bush. If you see. Just beyond, there's a recess <laughs> in the mountains. How big is the recess? It's like four, four, what is it? It's how far beyond? Four, four, four foot wide? Four foot wide? Four foot tall. Four foot tall. Oh, that's small for a human. Indeed it is. <laughs> so I wonder if these creatures who stole the candles are smaller than humans. My hypothesis exactly. <laughs> what are prone to crawling? Oh, or that. They could be they could be crawlers. They could. Also true. That's mean crawlers. Although Gren Grel 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 Greldamin. Greldamin? Greldamin. It's okay. It's a it's a hard name. Okay. Especially for elves. It looks as though you could stand upright in that hole. I could. Yes. Hmm. So another element we should uh, factor in to our search. Should I go in? Let's see. Should we all go in? Let's go. The first little one. Gladly. Can we move these thorny bushes out of the way, though? Absolutely. I, I start ripping the, the dried brush the, out of the way. The brush is actually not attached to the ground. It comes and pulls out of the way really easily. Oh, it looks somebody's like covered it, it up. He, pulls on it that hard. Uh, he almost does. He's, he, he teeters on one foot, as a sheer show of strength. Tear them out, overcompensates. Uh, and his armored self, being top heavy as he is, he stands there and awkwardly wobbles in place. And uh, for a moment, you see as the uh, the bartender, Wentzel, kind of swallows deeply at the choice of companions that he's Wentzel, hired are you coming with us? Oh, God, and it's no. Are you sure? We have extra daggers and all sorts of things. I, I, I have a job. It's busy, a lot of people in there. I need to make drinks, mm, breakfast. Mm-hmm. I heard you did this for me. Could you please do this for me? Of course, yes, don't okay. worry. We will take care of this and be back expediently. You can count on us. Wonderful, Easy, thank you. Please have dinner ready. Y- yes, ma'am. <clears throat> Waffles. <laughs> I can't tell if he's crushing or legitimately super frightened, mm-hmm. but good luck. One and the same. <laughs> no, <laughs> both. Yeah, could be both. Uh, so pulling the bush out of the way, you can see this. This uh, has been a, a deliberately dug cavern that uh, recedes into the mountain and into darkness. Hello. Oh, good. Hello. Um, <laughs> it does echo a bit. Can you see in the dark? Um, yes, but I also have light. And I send light down the tunnel. Was that a snap? Can I do that? Was that what that was? Can I send light down the tunnel or just light up around me? Well, you you choose an object to then light up like it was a torch. What do we have on us? I have a torch. Oh. I have 10 of them. Would you like a torch? We should probably just use a torch then. Rocks additional notes on the ground. Oh, oh, I'll pick up a rock and cast light on the rock. There you go. As you pick it up, the rock. That was a good idea, whatever your toes. Yes. 
Is there room for our World of Warcraft pauldrons to go into this space? Four foot wide, at your size, barely. Just barely, okay. It scrapes the edges as you push inward, <laughs> kind of digging two small grooves so along the cavern. Perfect. Send him first. <laughs> so <laughs> Someone push him from behind. <laughs> Just grease it up and <laughs> squeeze right perfect. in there. There's candle wax around. Yeah, yeah. Just <laughs> wax the corners and push them through. Well, uh, either the small magic one or the sneaky one should be going first. I think this. So, well, she can stand upright. I'll go first. All right, go for <laughs> it. All right, so, little stinker, let's see what you can do. So, girl, I mean, as you light up the rock in your hand and it's giving off this bright torch light, you hold it in front of you and you just walk right into it. Um, as soon as you begin to step into the chamber, you can already feel there's like a faint cold breeze blowing from the open world behind you into the chamber. Um, and you're kind of drawn deeper and deeper into the darkness within as it begins to faintly grade into a descent. Um, what's the order in which you guys are traveling behind oh, her? Jeez, this is so dumb that I'm in the front. What do you mean? <laughs> what do you mean? Well, we're not you sneaking. You went upright. 37 hit points. <laughs> <laughs> you're all a little squishy. We're all a little squishy. Yeah. I, to make you feel better, I will be second. Oh. Okay. I'll go right in the middle. You're like a wall behind us. I'll go after him. All right. <laughs> Drama mean, lead the way. <laughs> As you continue delving deeper down this cavern, uh, the smell of damp earth seems to be ever present. Uh, as a recent rainfall has left a lot of this path, the early portion of it rather muddy. Your feet kind of slip and slick against the soft floor as you occasionally have to right yourself against the walls of the cavern, uh, being careful as you push deeper into this. And after some time, the path comes to an abrupt halt where the floor seems to drop down about five feet into a tunnel that opens larger and wider 15 feet below you, deeper still into the mountain. Can I hear anything? Make perception check. Ooh, twenty-three. Wow. Nice. A little bit of wind is kind of passing through down into the cavern. Uh, in listening, you can hear what sounds like a faint rock fall, like a <laughs> some scraping sounds, and a door slam. Distant, below you, and distant. Might this be a good time for some shadow melting? Mm -hmm. What is that? It's up to you. <laughs> you can only use it once per short rest, so keep that in mind. No. And if, yeah, <laughs> if, if there's nothing currently around you, you can still stealth whenever you want to. I'm, I'm, I'm inclined oh, yeah, to stealth. You can stealth. Okay. I'm so, yeah, I'm inclined to go stealth. Go ahead and roll stealth check. I'll be the stealth person. We can all try to stealth right now. Mm -hmm. Because you, here's the thing: even if you are supremely sneaky, which you are. I'm fucking bullshit with sneaking, so we all have to, you know, pull our weight. <laughs> Maybe you Just roll a 20. We'll see how I do. So I, I do, let's see, my roll plus three. three. Good. 28. Oh, oh my god. <laughs> your, your darker night elf complexion vanishes into the shadows. There you go. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Uh, 15. All right. 13. 13 as well. Okay. And I lied. Five. <laughs> <laughs> that makes a difference. All right, so as you guys all quietly look down into the small cavern, it drops down. Uh, you're like looking over feet. the edge. About five or six feet down below. You just kind of jump down if you want to. Should we jump down? Yeah. Should They'll never see us coming. Oh. <laughs> Shh. Put a sock in it. <laughs> Put a sock in it. So I all suppose right. I should go sneak ahead. ahead. I'm going to sneak ahead because I'm the sneaky one in this one. All right. all right, I'm sneaking ahead. As you guys all leap down into the uh, the tunnel below, oh. you, it's... Okay, safe ahead. You all then leap afterward. <laughs> um, you go ahead and, and begin to sneak ahead a bit, and it, switch back, it switches back a bit, and it goes into a much more steady decline in the direction of where you came from below. Is it slippery? Uh, this is actually much drier now. You're further away from the cavern entrance. It's looks like the water It's dry too. here. So I'm going ahead. <clears throat> I smell something. It's very familiar. <laughs> but my intelligence is not as high as I'd like, so I can't remember what it is. Lavender. <laughs> it smells like lavender. It does. Good reminder. Does it? 
Uh, you don't smell lavender. I don't no. smell lavender. Yeah, I take that back. Um, <laughs> uh, but you, Stop it, I'm new. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you do begin to hear, as you begin to approach, what sounds like faint rushing water. I hear rushing water. <laughs> and you see ahead, as you're pushing forward, are you guys following behind her? Or are you? Yeah. yeah. No, we're following. We're okay, following. so like, thinking about 20 feet or so back? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, eventually, the path begins to curve to the left, you can see a faint source of light that just begins to emerge around the corner as you begin to curve around. What does it look like? It looks well, like a you... long, thin ray of light. <laughs> Vertical, I think. <laughs> I'm waiting to find out if I'm right. Are you making this up? I am, <laughs> totally. Am I allowed? Am I allowed to do this? No. Oh, I'm stop now. I don't know this game. What That's happens okay. is he will create the environment and the things around you, and you interact Sorry. with them and roll dice occasionally. Go under here for a minute. No, no, you're, you're in great. control of your personality and the actions you do in this Not world. Not really. <laughs> he, he's the world. I don't know. Do I see any light? So, <laughs> as you as you coast around the corner, go ahead and make a perception check. Okay. There it is. Oh, once again. Oh, that schnazzy. Yeah. Oh, guy's back. Eleven. What is that? Uh, yeah, 18. 18. 18. All right, so as, as you coast around the corner, placing your hand on the edge of the cavern, you glance over and you can see the hallway opens up into a much larger chamber of natural stone formations and stalactites that seem to litter the roof above you, uh, the cavern top. There's apparently about 20 feet beyond this entrance, an underground river that is stretching across from one side to the other before diving and vanishing beneath the rock wall on the far right side. Mm. Um, Crossing this small recess where the water seems to be rushing, you can see the occasional uh, mist and spray from uh, looks to be wayward rocks that are breaking up the flow of the river. Uh, Two rickety wood plank bridges that cross past it that are attached and uh, nailed into portions of the rock and then right across, you can see the source of light. Uh, there's a number of sources of light that are slightly shifting on the opposite end of the chamber. There's another platform on the other end of the river where you can see uh, roughly nine nasty-looking humanoid creatures that are clustered with patches of fur on portions of their body. They carry satchels and packs. A single melting lit candle rests atop each of their heads. As their light source in these dark tunnels. That's really cute. You now recognize what was in the tip of your tongue. These are definitely kobolds, and they appear to have been coming through a door that is now closed and being locked on the opposite side by one of them that appears to be larger. They're carrying these large sacks, and they're all kind of talking amongst each other. You can see their features are somewhat rat like, and their protruded snouts and whiskers that shoot off to each side. Um, they haven't noticed your presence yet. Um, how tall are they? About three and a half, four feet. So they're taller than I am. Mm-hmm. I put my rock out. Okay, so your, your light source vanishes. Yeah. And have we been trailing the elf? Yes. So. Yes, now, now we're in the clear, so I'm going to step back. Um, what should we do? How many of them are there? One, two, three, four. Nine. Nine? There's about nine of them. Okay. Do you think we could take nine of them? Yeah. Of course. Has anybody tried talking to kobolds before? I haven't. I've never talked to one before. If, if our mission is to bring the candles home, what would happen to the candles if we took them out in a violent manner? Would they be damaged? Would that how many candles are missing? Boxes of them. Boxes. An entire shed's it worth? Was, I think it was more than it was more than one. nine, so like ten candles, Not ele- so eleven, probably. <laughs> I, I we'll wonder find if out these are his actual them. candles or if these are old candles and they're, they stole his candles for new candles because their candles on their head are wearing down. Do you know what I mean? You just said candles a lot of times. Yeah, it was very hard to Who's feeling particularly sneaky right now? I can be invisible. That's right. Feel like um, journeying in a little bit, seeing what else you can see? Sure. Sure. I cast invisibility on myself. <laughs> okay. You watch as <laughs> you watch as the 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 outside of your gnomish companion shivers and then vanishes. Um, you find yourself invisible and you kind of step carefully. Okay. I'm gonna walk across the bridge now. We can still hear you. 
Yeah. I, I, I'll be quiet once I get towards the bridge. Give the bridge a good Excellent. look. Okay. See if you can see any of the other candles. Okay. There are two rickety bridges right I next to each other. I walk towards Excellent. one of the rickety bridges. Okay. Um, go ahead and make a stealth check just with advantage because you're invisible. Mm. Yeah. Changing. That. 22. Okay. As you carefully make your way over towards the edge of the bridge, you can see the water is maybe about a foot and a half, two feet below where the bridge is, and it's not rushing super fast, but enough where it's making it's breaking the water a bit. You're seeing a bit of a bit of spray mist, um, and you see these these nine cobalt creatures across the way. Um, it looks like uh, the one that was locking the door is currently talking and giving instructions to the others. You see the larger one is standing there with this uh, massive pack on his back that's like filled to the brim, um, and he all of them seem to be carrying pickaxes to the side. Um, but he has kind of the wicked, more like strongly built one. As he's kind of pointing to them, he's talking. Uh, go make a perception check. Oh, yeah. oh, natural oh. twenty. Ha. Nice. So you can, you can hear faintly what he's instructing us. Stop complaining. Because to get these tunnels boom booming for more closer people time. Now here, place there. Here, place there. Me, I place everywhere else. And they all begin to scatter a bit and make their way towards the two bridges to begin cross over in the direction of you. Oh, oh no. Oh, God. Oh. I start backing up okay. towards my companions. Okay. And I, I run towards them and say, they're, they're on their way over here. They're going to blow things up. I think the big one has the, the back of candles on his back. You, you, you sure you heard blow things up? Yeah, he said something about blowing things up. Where are Boom. you? Boom. I'm right at your. And I punch him in the knee. Ah. <laughs> Gotta stop them. I could have punched something else. <laughs> We've got to stop them. There's nine of them. We can do it. There's five of us. What if we take out oh. one of the bridges while they're on the bridge, cut the rope, and then some of them that are on the bridge will fall? While you're having this conversation, uh, two of them have just now finished traversing the bridge. Shit. <laughs> <laughs> Quick, go cut the bridge. Go c cut the bridge? Cut the rope on the bridge. Can I Can I take them out? Well, well. Well, if you'd like to. I'd like to take time. This is the time to take All right, so as I was having this conversation, you kind of pull around the corner with your hand crossbow and make a shot at the closest one to you. You see one of the kobolds is kind of lumbering up. He's reaching into his satchel and he's pulling out what looks to be a small rod of some kind. Go ahead and roll an attack. For it. And it's an advantage because she's hiding, yeah? Exactly. Yeah, so roll it twice and take the higher one. So is a 17 plus your attack from the crossbow is, is uh, 25. Oh, crap. Okay. Yeah, 17 plus 9. Oh, that most definitely plus eight. hits. Oh, sorry, plus 8. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Yes, right, 25. Yeah, that most definitely hits. So go ahead and roll damage on that with sneak attack damage. Okay, so the damage is a 1d6, so you roll one of those cubes. One of the, yeah. one of the cubes. It's one. Okay, 3 plus your sneak attack damage, which is at your level. Probably 1d6, uh, maybe? It's not on. It's yeah. 46. It's under the attack. There it is. 46. There it is. 46? So roll those oh, four, and that's level 7. Yeah. Oh, shit. <laughs> so, so add that to your three, 17. plus the five. So 22. 22, yes. 22 points of damage. So as that one crosses the way, it pulls out its rod and kind of like, <laughs> and just goes straight down, just limp, kind of drunk E.T. style, just kind of oh, yes. on the ground, yes. just slams face first and is done. Oh, um, we need to get the other one, yeah. don't we? Uh, yeah. at, th at this point, the one that just finished crossing the bridge on the side goes, Sit up! <laughs> Walks over and kicks him, Aww. and then looks over and sees you holding the hand crossbow. Yes. Oh, no. oh, Do I have time to get one attack? I need you all to roll initiative. Okay. Uh, so so we're it? seeing what the order is. So we're we'll 20 again and add this. Okay, okay, and then just keep up. that number in your head for a moment. Okay. Oh, well, um, you changed it. Roll it again. I saw it. I saw what it was. But oh, if you know what it was, then keep it. I do know what it was. Okay, yeah, that's, I, I can't, can see that. I can't read your die, Jen. Yes, that's good, that's 23. Okay. okay. 23. Just remember that. Wow. Why can't I roll well? Okay. <laughs> what did you roll? 11. All right, so we have 23, we have, uh, I, I spell your character's name again? Uh, A-E-R-W-Y-N, but it's I-N, either one. Erwin, okay, yeah. cool. J-E-L-O-O. -O. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> Perfect. Uh, 14. So, so, uh, was 20 to 15? Anybody? Oh. She had 23, right? Yeah. yeah. Oh, 15. Uh, 20 to 15. I'm 15. Alrighty. And spell your name for me, Girlfest? Uh, 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 L O H K O R. Low core. Low core. Low core. 
<laughs> Alrighty. Uh, <laughs> so, uh, 15 to 10. 14. 13. Alrighty. 11. Lies, 12. <laughs> Lies. <laughs> Alrighty, and then uh, eleven Quasarat. Quasimodo. Q, U, A. Perfect. I got Z. It. I got. It. I. I got. It. I'm naming you Toes. That's all I can remember. All right, cool. So, top of the round, as all the kobolds now notice you guys clustered right there at the entrance of the cavern, start rushing over the bridge with their pickaxes out. And the larger one on the opposite side, seeing this, seems to be preparing for something. What are you doing? I'm loading up the crossbow. Okay, so you pull out another bolt, load it up, and staying in there, you're gonna fire at uh, which one? Uh, the one in, the, they're all behind the one in the front? Uh, the, the, there's the one that just, did, they just kicked the guy you killed, no. and then there's two sets that are running across the bridges currently over the water. I'm going for their leader. Okay, cool, so you might have to get a little closer, you're about 40 feet away from him. Okay. Well, you can fire from now, but you'll have disadvantage on the attack, but up to you. I can move a little close. I'll move, hit, and then move, right? Okay. I can do that, can't You can I? do that, yeah. Okay. So you go ahead and move forward your 30 feet. That'll get you into a 30-foot range. You'll be close to one of the, almost in, in melee range with one of the kobolds. Um, so go ahead and take a shot at the leader. Uh, and that's these? No. Uh, to hit, you roll the 20, D20. so roll around the and you add your attack bonus for crossbow. 16. 16. 16 just hits. So you roll damage, it's not sneak attack, because you're not hitting. Yeah, so now you're just rolling d6, a cube. d6 cube, which one is the d6? It's a, it's a cube. This one. Okay, there you go. And then you add a five, so. Seven. Go. There we go, seven points of damage. Yeah. You seem angry as he begins to reach and fiddle with the back of his pack on his back. Um, you can use your bonus action to dash backward if you'd like to back into the cavern entrance. Yeah, yes, I think you. that's most useful. Okay, so after firing, the kobolds are rushing in, and you kind of just back up, getting behind your allies to protect you. Um, all right, that brings it to Lokor. I don't know why we always try and do this stealthily. Warhammer out, and I'll reach forward to the one and just take a big swing right in his face. Go for it. Yeah. So this, like a waste of time. This is the one who kicked his friend trying to wake him up. Uh, 18. 18 hits, good old damage. Nice, one D. Eight D. N. 13 points of bludgeoning damage. 13 points of bludgeoning damage. All right. I have another one because of extra attack? You do. Nice. 15. 15 hits. Nice. And that is seven points of blood damage. All right, so as you rush forward, the first hit bah, hits him upside the chin. You see a spatter of blood across the rock behind you. He gets back and pulls at his pickaxe. Bah, his anger, like whiskered face. You see fury in his eyes, and you just sink the hammer into his face. It's like, oh. and he falls to the ground dead. <laughs> yes. I turn Why to the rest of them and I say, let them have it! And I take off running into the, into the fray. All right, great. Uh, as that's happening, ah, you're running the larger leader on the back who finishes fiddling with this, with this pack, pulls what looks to be a small rod of some kind, holds it up to the top of the candle on his head, and you watch it spark. Uh -oh. And lobs it in an arc <laughs> over to where you are. Uh, as the kobolds stop running and watch it going <sighs> as it arcs over, except for two of them that weren't paying attention and charging towards you as it between your legs, rolls a little bit behind you, and there's that brief moment where everything slows down for about an instant oh, no. before it just <laughs> explodes in a cacophonous explosion of flame and, and force. I need all of you to make a dexterity saving throw. Oh, no, oh, no. no. problem, no problem. So yeah, roll the 20. Dexterity save, so you get, get a plus two. Oh, oh no, 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 I'm, I'm all right. You're too far away. <laughs> Sorry, I'm new. Nice. All right, so. Uh, What'd you get? 18. Okay, that succeeds. Eight. Nope. 18. Succeeds. 16. Just barely succeeds. Ooh. And this is a save, not ability skill, correct? correct? Oh, that's a big 11. It's a failure. No. All right, so, so, <laughs> so Bundle, uh, uh, Bundle and Quasarat, you guys both suffer 18 points of fire damage. Seems fake. Oof. Mm -hmm. uh, the rest of you suffer nine points of fire damage. Oh, right and the two nearest kobolds who are rushing in to go after Lokar also just yeah. explode into pieces and are thrown behind you. It's just, <laughs> just done. They seem running like, ah! Huh? <laughs> and are just yes. destroyed Nine? by their own dynamite. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So that's a All right. Oh, jeez. No, sorry. Oh. And you hear this laughter in the back of the cavern. <laughs> Father! <laughs> he seems to be rather excited and given this bit of fury, inspirational boost from the 
the carnage he's caused. Um, all right, that's going to end his turn. Uh, he's going to stay right there at the edge. Bundle, your turn. Ah, oh, oh god, it's everything, everything hurts. Uh, one second. Um, I'm going to, just in case, where is, where is it? I'm finding a thing. No uh, class abilities. We're all like <laughs> flexing in the thing that we've never played before. Yeah. I know, it's yeah. just so difficult. At least I'm not the only one. Um, no. no, we're we're gonna gonna like no. I'm going to quickly cast Mass Healing Word on everybody. Wow. Well, I'm not even get up, I'm just going to sit up and cast Mass Healing Word on the group. Okay, so go ahead and roll that. That's, uh, it's a d4 plus your. Oh, that's okay. I think it's it auto. That's right, it's auto. So d4 plus. Uh, plus your wisdom modifier? Wisdom modifier. So that's a. Six. All right, so everyone heals six hit points. Nice. nice. And I'm going to use my bonus action to create a uh, spiritual weapon. Okay. What kind of weapon are you taking the form? A giant hammer that looks a little bit like an anvil that's bigger than his hammer. <laughs> Just a bit. Okay. I'm going to put it right, Ooh. it's going to manifest right above the, the main cobalt, right above the main cobalt head, like okay. 10 feet up. All right, so as it begins to apparate in the sky, uh, <laughs> A little car. You look across and you can see the hammer, just slightly larger than your hammer apparates. Son of a bundle? <laughs> <laughs> and, it does uh, take a swing at the leader, so go for it. Uh, oh, it does. Uh, it's a I believe in you summon, it gets to take, take one hit. Uh, do I, does it get to take one hit? Okay, that's Double check. Uh, but, uh, yeah, I'll go for it, because it's it's a. Take a spirit weapon. Yep, you didn't cast spell, create a melee. Uh, that's 15. 15 unfortunately misses. Yeah. It swings, and you can see the cobalt look up as, as it sees your eyes trace up, and you see that, he goes, Argh. Sees it, leaps backward, and slams into the ground, cracking the stone beneath, and he just dodges out of the way. <laughs> Still with the performance issues, eh, Bundle? I'm getting up! <laughs> and I use my movement to stand up and push it off. All right, cool. Ending Bundle's turn, uh, that'll bring us to uh, Grendelmine. Uh, okay, uh, it's Greldamine. Greldamine, sorry. Thanks a lot. Grel. Um, <laughs> I, reading my own handwriting is a problem. Greldamine. <laughs> It's a um, name. Are are any of them in a line? Are they on the bridge still? On the bridge, there's three on each bridge that are in a line. Uh, and then the big one. Actually, no. There's there's at this point there's two because two of them got blown away. So yeah, there, there's two on each bridge. Right okay. Bridge. And the the big one is he lined up with a bridge or is he? Between no, he's the in bridges? between the two. Okay. On the other side. On the opposite still side. Invisible? Uh, she is currently. Yes. Okay. Oh, how long? How? how uh, what's the length of those bridge guesstimation lines? Uh, the bridges are about twenty feet across, fifteen to twenty. They're not super right. long bridges. It's not a huge chamber. How many of them are left now? Yeah, we were Five down to eight. total. Two on each bridge. Big guy, other okay. side. Okay. Big is relative term. Got it. Okay. Um, for fear of damaging the perhaps bag of candles on the big one's back, that would be bad. Um, I'm going to cast. Um, Burn, burning <laughs> hands towards one of the bridges with two of the things on it. Okay. <laughs> so you so so you rush forward as the two to the surviving kobolds on the right or the left bridge. The left. Okay. So you run t -t 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 over the left bridge, and as the kobolds are rushing across with their pickaxes out, going, <laughs> you just. <laughs> You watch as her invisible form suddenly appears, uh, apparating as the the illusion that has been hiding her vanishes. As a flamethrower or gout of fire just <laughs> burns up from in front, uh, engulfing both of the uh, the kobolds. What's the saving throw on that? Uh, What's your DC? My DC. Your spell DC is sixteen. Sixteen. No. Oh. Yes, one of them succeeds, one of them fails. Okay. So what's the damage on that? It's three D six fire damage. So go ahead and roll three D six. Um, and it sets things on fire yes. that are... <laughs> the bridge is definitely on fire. <laughs> nine damage. All right, so it's nine damage, and then one of them takes four damage. Okay, so as that smoke, ah, they pull back a bit, and you can see like the edges of their whiskers are curling in and burn. The fur is kind of uh, seared at the edges. Some of the actually have caught fire, and a little bit of smoke is pouring off. But the edge of the of the bridge that they're standing on, that you're right in front of, has definitely caught fire. And you can see the two kobolds now are like ah, ah, trying to figure out what to do as they're kind of stuck in the middle right now. I'm going to run away from the bridge and hide behind Lokor's legs. You uh, used your movement to approach the bridge. Oh, I did. To cast burning hands. Great. Can I move it all? I'll give you five feet. I'll back up five feet. Okay. <laughs> do, 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 do. 
their eyes are trained on you. Mm -hmm. oh, shit. All right, that ends your turn. That brings you to their turn. So, oh. <laughs> as far as kobolds go, the two that are on the bridge uh, start rushing towards you. I'm going to go ahead and see if the bridge maintains its coherence for both of them. For the first one, it's fine. The second one, it is not. So, the first kobold runs forward, and it's going to go ahead and, and swing at you with its pickaxe. Uh, because you were damaged by another kobold, it gets uh, it gets a bonus. I was. Damage. Oh, I was. Uh, from the from the explosion yeah. earlier, so that is going to be a twenty to hit. Oh. I believe that hits, right? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. All right, and you suffer ten points of piercing damage as the pickaxe hacks into your shoulder oh. um, as it rushes past. The other one, as it's running towards you, you see it's pulling back its pickaxe to follow through and try and attack with its friend. Just as the final ropes. <laughs> Release and you watch him go and just just vanish into the water below and you hear him once he gets carried by the water current further down the river and he's trying to swim upstream. He's currently uh, stuck in the middle of trying to figure out what to do there. Uh, the other two rush across the other uh, other side of, of the chamber, finish traversing that bridge and go straight towards you, Lokor, because you're the closest mm -hmm. to them at this point. That's going to be a, a seventeen to hit. Misses. Misses. You reach out and you slam, you parry it off to the side. The first type does nothing, the other one's going to go ahead, and instead he's going to. Burp. That's an 18, that's a 22 to hit. That does hit. Um, so you go ahead and suffer. Uh, that is a six points of piercing damage. Yes. As the first one you deflect, the second one hits you, just jamming into one of the plates, bending the armor and hitting you in the side, and you feel your body tense from the severe pain. But it's nothing, you've had worse. Yeah. Yeah, it's fine. Just not the face. <laughs> <laughs> not the face. We're good. Quasarat, you're up. Uh, is there a, a clear path between where I'm standing and uh, either a bridge? Uh, well, one bridge is currently collapsed. Collapsed, okay. The one on the, on the right, you could run through, yeah. but you would be, you would probably be getting attacked from both the kobolds that just ran across and are kind of blocking the path, or you'd have to take attack opportunity from both of them. Yeah, that sounds fun. Go for uh, it. I'm going to run for uh, edge of bridge on this side. Okay. How far is that from me where I'm starting? Uh, I'd say it's about 10, 15 feet from That's you now. That's good, I like it. 15 feet is good. I run towards edge. Okay, so you run to the edge. Yes, You get kobolds. Okay, so you go past the two kobolds. Yes. Are you just running past them? Yes. All right, they both get attacks opportunity on you. Yes. Uh, the first one is, no. wow, <laughs> Golden Snitch is working for me now. Uh, that yeah, is 21 to hit. Sure, that I'm hits. so sorry, I'm so sorry. Uh, that is seven <laughs> points of piercing damage as the pickaxe swings and snags you in the back of the shoulder blade. Mm. The mm. other one is a 17 to hit. No, each hit. That one scrapes across the back of your armor and just Makes no, no uh, effective impact. Uh, you continue rushing across the, the no. bridge. No, you I've stay. used 15 feet to get here, and I'm going yep. to do my running long jump for 25 feet over 20 foot bridge you described to me and land on the other side. Okay. And move up to this asshole on the other side. Okay. You cannot oh, jump further than your movement speed? You're okay. Technically. <laughs> <laughs> but that. But. <laughs> okay. So, so you run, you oh, jump, no. and okay. you're getting right towards the edge there. Okay. I would I would like you to go ahead and make an acrobatics check. Oh, you think I would understand this mechanic before this moment <laughs> no, in my no, life no, at level seven? What kind of check? Uh, this would be an acrobatics check. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, there it is. Okay. Oh, yeah. oh, not great. Not great at all. Uh, but I get to add two because of remarkable athletes, so hopefully that's enough. Uh, 14. 14. You were prepared. You, uh, nice. you make your way through the air, just barely catch the edge of where the other platform begins, and you roll over the shoulder into it, and as you come to stand, you're right there before the leader, Kobold, who's there with his giant pack there ready. He has another one of these sticks that he's currently trying to pull up to the candle on his head. Butter, he looks... Buttercup. <laughs> you, what are you going to do? I'm how far from him? You're right up against him. Right up against yeah. him. Oh, well, I'm going to take his head off. I had a pet rat, but I don't care. <laughs> Here we go. All right. <laughs> What's the rat's name? Oh, that's a one. <laughs> but I have an extra attack, so I will go again. Okay. And that's it. Oh, that's so bad. <laughs> It's a 12. <laughs> As you confidently oh. grin, your massive Draenei body looking down upon this kobold, who looks like he just got his caught with his hand in the cookie jar, you swing wide with the, uh, is it a what weapon are you using? I'm using a greatsword. This giant two-handed cleaver that swings, and the kobold just goes, 
I'm going to attempt to embarrass myself further and use action search. Okay, take yeah. two more times. Like he, he dodges both no, of your don't. swings. No, yes, do it. Do it. Colville, don't you, fuck me, Colville. You can hear the. <laughs> it's now laughing. Still not that great, though. Uh, 15 for that one. 15 just misses. Oh, but this last one is okay. 17. 17 does it. Yes, finally. He dodges the third one and goes, What problem? Can't hit. <laughs> oh, five all, your troubles are just beginning. <laughs> uh, that is uh, ten slashing damage. Ten slashing damage. You take a chunk out of his shoulder. Ah! That's favorite shoulder! <laughs> Kiss my sword, the hilt says Leron Jenkins. Let's get this shit started! <laughs> Perfect. Ending your turn to the top. Uh, it is your turn, Erwin. So there are now currently four living kobolds that have all, uh, <laughs> well, one of them has fallen into the river, uh, who is currently beneath the water, <laughs> struggling against the current. There's one that's been partially damaged that's currently up against and fighting him. Uh, actually, there are two that are up against fighting you and one that's up against you. Mm -hmm. Oh. And, but this one also, with the Yes, there's, there's the main leader across the way that he's currently up against. And there's still a bridge. Right, so going you, there is one bridge. Yeah. This guy, you get sneak attack damage because I'm right up against him. Yes, I want to do that. All right, so yeah, you, you're taking another shot with your crossbow? Yes. All right, so you go ahead and load up another bolt, and then aiming across the way, um, you make your way, in making your way up close to where the bridge is, you'll end up being within melee range of the one that's fighting her, but you can still make the strike, so. Acceptable risk. Okay. Okay. All right, could, so I roll. D20. Go ahead and roll your attack. Yeah. yeah. What you get? Plus your crossbow uh, acting one. Yes, nineteen. Nineteen. Nineteen hits. Go ahead and roll damage plus sneak attack damage. Yes. And damage is. So one d six to start. Okay. Yeah. Then you add the other cubes. Okay, that's good. And then add these guys. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Uh, Twelve plus that's good. six. Eighteen. Plus. P uh, Twenty-three. Yep. Twenty-three. Woof. <laughs> As the kobold still kind of laughing after the blows of your warrior friend swinging wide, it's like, <laughs> that's fun. I take you with me. Let's go. He watches a crossbow bolt just slinks right into where the uh, top of the clavicle and the kobold's neck is. And it's like reaching up, trying to pull it out, uh, and his fingers look like it's going numb, and it's trying to make sure that it's holding on. It, it looks hurt. It's holding on, but it's hurt. It's a nice like shot. Uh, so you've made your movement. You have a bonus action if you wanted to do anything. But well, I'm right next to the one that's attacking her. Yeah. Correct. I think so. I'll turn around with the uh, mm. short sword. No, you no. cannot do that with bonus, I though. Cannot. Okay, what can I do uh, with the But bonus? is she up against uh, any kobolds at the moment? No. Uh, she's right next to one that's been fighting. Yeah. I can well, help her. And you like can. Her. Well, the best you can do with the bonus is maybe to disengage, which means get away from them so they cannot hurt you. But you cannot hit again with anything. Okay. okay. I'll yeah, disengage. Just leave me alone next to it. Thank you. <laughs> just dance. Thank you for the good advice. He no, told me to. That's good advice. Dance back a little <laughs> so, bit. With the five feet of your movement left, you go ahead and step away using your bonus actions to disengage, kind of carefully stepping from the cold bowl. It's just like, ah, 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 it's kind of going feral right now, feeling surrounded. That ends your turn. You're up, Lokar. Yeah, I'm over these guys right next to me. <laughs> Warhammer! Uh, that is a 22. 22 oh. will definitely hit. Yes, that will hit. Uh, that is 12 points of bludgeoning damage. 12 points of bludgeoning damage. It comes down, the hammer slams into the chest area of one of the kobolds that's harassing you. It hits him and you hear this like little ah! this like, squeak sound as the, ch the chest cavity takes a very heavy blow. <clears throat> Still standing, but it's hurt. Still standing, eh? Round two! <laughs> uh, that is a 25. That definitely Jeez. hits. Go ahead and roll damage. Oh, mercy. Uh, another 12 points of bludgeoning damage. Uh, and with that, you do a, you use that momentum of pulling away to swing upward, and from an underhand hit, it just snaps against the bottom of the kobold's jaw, and you hear its neck kind of from the impact, and it just falls onto its back as its legs kind of curl back into its torso, and it's done. With my bonus action, I turn and point to the last standing one. My eye sees you. <laughs> you swear you see a slight uh, tinkle dribble down its leg. <laughs> All right, that ends your turn. Mm -hmm. um, at this point, the leader over there, um, who's kind of glaring at you, goes, No, no, Ham has to finish his work. <sighs> and he's going to go ahead and grab one of the. Uh, yeah, it regenerates. Roll the five. He pulls another one of his, you can recognize now to be sticks of dynamite. Mm. And looking at his pack, you can see his pack is filled. Shit. Oh, there wasn't no. candles in that pack. 
It is jammed, filled with explosives. Oh, oh. God. And he goes rushing past you. You get an attack of opportunity on him. Oh, good, yes. He's got lots of candles! <laughs> Uh, yeah, that's good. That's 24. That hits, good roll damage. Yeah, let's do that. Chop his head off! I'm trying. It's uh, mm, 10. 10 points of damage. <laughs> Takes a heavy hit, but continues rushing uh, past uh, past the, the bridge area. Uh, then, okay. as he's rushing, he lights it from the top of his head and chucks it in your guy's direction. <laughs> as it lands, it detonates, uh, taking out. Uh, let's see here. Damage wise, I need every everybody but you needs to go ahead and roll a dexterity saving throw, please. Oh, yeah. oh man, so D20 bad. plus this good number here. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so you did quite good. Oh. Twenty-two, yeah. That's a one. Very nice. <laughs> Twenty-one oh, no. points of fire damage. Fifteen. Oh, Fifteen. Uh, just barely succeeds. So yeah, you take no. uh, twelve points of fire damage. Yeah, no. Uh. I said 21, right? Yes. Sorry, so it wasn't 15, I wasn't here. It's, it's, it's uh, 10 points of fire damage. Oh, great. 21 points of fire damage. Yeah. 22. Uh, 10 points of fire damage. Does she have evasion? You do, so you Zero. take nothing. Zero. So as this one because detonates ass, because you succeeded. Yes. Because I'm black. So you, seeing this coming, you jump you jump backwards, grab the kobold that's in front, and use him to shield you from the blast, and he just and just scatters into ash as it manages to detonate and explode. Uh, the remaining kobolds in the area. So all the kobolds that were with him have all fallen to the ground now, uh, turned to ash or, or detonated in some way, and you can see as the, the leader of them is kind of, <sighs> kind of catching his breath across the bridge, and he, he goes, oh, no. and he glances past with this long gaze, and you can look over at the other kobolds that had their own small caches of dynamite sticks, some of which have been lit by the recent explosion that are rolling towards the rock wall where you guys entered. We gotta go, we gotta go, we gotta go. One. Double dash, all the way up. Yeah. <laughs> so you, Yeah. Okay. so you guys all start rushing towards the, where, off the bridge, or are you? To, like, across the bridge, right? Yeah, yeah, across. All right, so I need all of you guys to, let's everyone just roll, roll an initiative check right now, since technically the combat here is finished. We're gonna do this as to see who can manage to make it across before the explosion. It's gonna be an early night. <clears throat> so why can the check this day? Oh, initiative? Oh, no. Sorry. Let's check again. Just, just an initiative. Just initiative. Just initiative. Just initiative. 19. 19? Oh, Four. Four. Oh, God, why am I rolling so bad? So it's this plus this. Yeah. 10. 10? 16. 14. Okay. Uh, we, you, you're pretty much most fine across the bridge. Um, all of you go rushing past as you see low court going, <sighs> like the, you see that the whole room behind him just light up. Uh, you can see a silhouette. It's full on, like movie style, like jumping from the explosion. As you see it burn past him, uh, you you only catch the edge of it, um, which is good because you then only suffer uh, eight points of fire damage. Okay. But you watch as the entrance you guys came through <coughs> falls and collapses. A series of boulders and rocks. The opposite end of the chamber just falling in on itself. Part of the river, you can see the kobold is just barely clawing his way out of the water. <coughs> A rock hits and just smashes him across the bank. Um, part of the river follow, uh, fills in, and you can see now the bank just like splashing over and starting to try and make its way back. But you guys are now on the opposite side of the chamber. It's quiet. You all take a minute to breathe. Look at your wounds. You're a bit singed around the way. And there's. I got the, the fire in my hair. I, I use lay on hands to, to put, oh, put out the fire. I forgot to do this. And I cast mage armor on myself. Oh. <laughs> yeah, before. It, much better than after. I'm gonna, yeah. I'm gonna maybe do a prayer of healing. Also, technically speaking, I have Disciple of Life, which means I would have, would everyone have gained an extra five points of They would have, yes, so keep that in mind. Next time. Next time. So, well, I'm, we'll I'm, say for now, all of you guys would have healed an additional five points of oh, damage. Because oh, he's okay. really good at healing as a, as, a, as a priest. Yeah. Do you want to take like five or maybe even 20 minutes? Here before we go Why? forward. I mean, we're hot on the trail. You know. Why do we need to do that? <laughs> I don't know. You know, conserving energy, that kind of thing. Let's go. You want to kick ass? I can tell. Yes. Little one, let's go. I'm with her. Yeah, I'm with. Sm I will now call her Small and Brave. Thanks. I'm with Small and Brave. Oh yeah. SB for short. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I could. I yeah. I, I can't do prayer of healing while we're walking though, can I? How uh, long does it take? It's just verbal. Uh, is it is it the ten minute one? Ten minutes. Uh, you kind of have to sit still for ten right. minutes to do it. Do you want to do it? That's just ten minutes. Just okay. Heal everybody up a bit. Oh, all right. Just that's a so that's 
2d8 plus my spellcasting ability modifier. That's, the, uh, that's not long enough for hit dice and stuff, though, right? Yep, so roll 2d8 plus your wisdom modifier. Oh my god, really? Oh. Oh. Double ones? Yep. Yeah. Oh. So that's three, four, five. He gave the golden snitch away talisman. This know. is the beginning did of the game. Really, did he really? He has it. Did he? He tossed it at the uh, DM. Six, seven. Oh In the DM. This is so that's so nine nice. points of healing to good. everybody. All of you guys heal nine points. Added. Yeah, not bad. it's not five; it's four so added, so it's nine points. Stop me off, though. Thank you. So nine. Yeah. Okay, so we already added five, but we don't add the five. Now you add. Now you add nine. Nine more. Nine on, nine on, top, more of on that. top of the five. Yes. Okay. A lot of math in this I'm game. I love math. As you guys, oh, as, as Bundle finishes the uh, the prayer of healing, and you all feel your wounds begin to close and stitch themselves together, you see a little bit of movement at the edge of the banks. Between the rock that had plummeted into it, you watch as a tiny hand. Uh, one cli- more. Climbing out of the water, you see a very bloodied, smashed, one eye swollen oh. cobalt that's like. Can I use firebolt at it? Uh, no, no, no. Oh. Don't Just you want to ask maybe what they were doing down here or their plans might be? Oh, I mean, sure, if that sounds good to you. <laughs> I, I think it might be wise. I'm a rage monster, I just like to kill I things. I know that about you. That's why she's now <laughs> my new best friend. <laughs> go for it. <clears throat> Do my, no, please, be my guest. Can I go over and uh, pick it up by the back of the neck? <laughs> Hello, friend. Before um, I let one of these fine people <sighs> Scrambling right now, looking up at the candle, which is currently out because of the waterlogged. Oh, uh, right. It's like. I, I know, a, a very sad face. Before one of these uh, fine people sends you to your uh, maker, uh, okay. what were okay. you doing in here? Okay. Just. Hey, friend, right? I work. Help. Yes. Mm-hmm. Friend. Much more work for you, friend. Rixus. 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 Reeks's. Do you understand what he's saying? Because no, I can't tell no, at all. No. no. Oh, no. We, we sent back your right to Togwaggle. Togwaggle Tog send Tog. us to make bigger booms, make better tunnels to People Town. Oh. Yes, yes. I am aware of People Town. King Togwaggle, greatest, best of all cobots. Mm hmm. <laughs> How are those tunnels coming? You've made them, or making them? We made and make more by the glory of Rakanishu mm-hmm. and King Togwaggle. King Togwaggle, is he here with you now, close by? He looks back towards the closed door. Just back, back that way. Does the king oh. have all of our candles? Lots of candles. Lots of candles. We should talk to him. How, how, how many people are with the king? That's a good question. People? No people. Uh, sorry, how many of your kind are with the king? The king is not very kind either, but as good king. Are there many kobolds co- with the king? There is a few. <laughs> More than there were here? Depends on the time of day. Oh. What about now? I don't know. We've been away for a while. Oh. Was... When do you eat? When? When do you eat? When do the cobalt eat? When there is fruit. I like him. Can we keep him? <laughs> well. And what would we do with him? Do you have fruit to eat? Huh. Ah. Are there? Uh, do all the do all the cobalt eat together? Pull out some beef jerky and hand it to him. You may have it after you answer the question. <laughs> you answer the whole question. There's more where that came from if you answer the question. How uh, are there more than us, more than those of us you see here, of the cobalt? There are, but scattered, dangerous tunnels, find dangerous things. Wonder, I've heard them. We do. Quasi, do you think maybe you could convince him to show us safe passage through safe this tunnel? Safe passage, convince him? Yeah. Oh, yes. Bring him closer. <laughs> you catch him as he throws him. Yes, your hands. Your hands, what I like about them is they're so little. <laughs> Make an intimidation check. <laughs> with advantage for breaking his hands. Oh. Uh, that is a 17. <laughs> ah! 
Okay, I can do this to you five more times. No, I will blow up your house! So... <laughs> I can play this game all night long, little man. So, we need to get inside. We need to be, uh, you know, alive and not getting killed. So, uh, we would like to keep you. She has lots of beef jerky. We could feed you. But we can't have any boom... What did you call this? Boom booms. Okay. Can't, can't have that. I'll show you. I'll show you. Hmm? Don't break. <laughs> no more arms left to break. Please. His poor hands. Well, let him earn it first, you know? Maybe 20 minutes we're still alive. You have healed hand and more meat. Okay. Yeah? Put me down. I'm not holding you. Yes, you are. Yes, you are. You gave him to me? Oh, yeah. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> You look I and like realize this guy. <laughs> <laughs> the rush of combat, you didn't realize that you were clutching him the whole time. Oh, well, I went like this. I thought you were holding him. You know, Dungeons and Dragons is a funny thing. <laughs> Your mind's different from my mind. Who knows what we're seeing? I drop his ass on ground. Yeah. Should we secure him? If you want. We've got rope. Got rope. I've got rope. Just so you make sure you don't break your other hand, she's going to make sure that you're secure. Secure. <laughs> do I need to roll something for that? No, easy enough. He's, he's, he waits for you. You just you take. Do you have rope on you? I do. I have rope. Okay, so you go ahead and you just bind him up, and you have a little leash thing you're holding him by. It's like, <laughs> okay, carry the door. Can, can I pass her the leash since he's her pet? <laughs> pet. You want to be the? Do you want to be a pet? <laughs> Girl to me. Thank you. What? Girl to me. Do you want to yeah. have a kobold leash handed to you? Pass him your leash. Would you like to have Pushing him as a pet? Me. Oh, well, all right. Oh, I'm not wearing armor. Broken, jagged teeth, spittle drooling down. Are you oh. sure? I don't think he's much of a pet. He's more of a companion. <laughs> Could you like to come to him? I will in a little bit. Oh. Hearts and spew it. <laughs> What's your name? Reekses. Reekses. You got it. <laughs> Open door. Through the door, then. Through, Through the, door. the door. And I kick him really hard in the ass. <laughs> hey. Lead the way. No. The door is closed. <laughs> Lead the way. I can't bind you, Mobile Parabon. Is there, a, is there a, like a latch, a doorknob? Is it just... uh, there is a handle latch, and it looks like there's a lock mechanism to it. Mm. A lock. Whose purview is this? That's you. It's my purview. You take a look. Take a look. Make sure it does not explode on you. Mm. I don't see any wicks. I don't see anything explosive. Don't, you, don't you can make an investigation check if you want to check for traps. Okay, okay. Yeah. It is, I have a, oh. Plus. A tw okay, uh, 25. 25? What, what did you roll? 20. Well, she rolled a 20. Very nice. Oh, there yeah. you go. Um, oh, this, that's important. Yeah, it's a lock mechanism. Um, uh, it's a relatively simple lock. It is not trapped. So with, with with you could easily undo this with your with your uh, thieves tools. Can I? So I do something so I can do that. Yep. Right? So you just roll another d twenty, right. and then roll add your d20. proficiency modifier beep, 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 and your dexterity six, modifier. Yeah. Uh, this plus uh, this, so 11, plus eight to what you rolled. Eleven. Okay. Uh, so that is fourteen. Fourteen. Yeah. Easy enough. You tink. The door unlocks and opens a bit, and beyond that is just a tunnel of. Darkness. An interesting smell hits you as you open it, though. Um, whereas inside here, you have kind of that that damp, hard water, kind of Pirates of the Caribbean ride smell that's in the, in the water chamber. Ooh. Beyond that, as the door opens, this kind of musty, almost mildewed smell hits you. Uh, it's earthy, it's fresh, um, it's natural, but it's definitely an underground, familiar smell. Why can we never encounter a field of flowers? <laughs> Very true. <laughs> Um, should I, should I light up a rock again? Oh, I can do it. So I pick up a rock and light it up and toss it oh. in front of Kiss. us. Just keep kicking it down. Yeah. Mm. Uh, it lights up the chamber as it goes and you continue to walk and kind of kick it as you push forward. Uh, the walls begin to just slowly glow the further in you go. You begin to notice that aside from a few small crystalline areas, there are heavy bits of fungus that are beginning to appear mm. along these chambers, glowing green, orange, blue mushrooms and clusters of fungal matter that are beginning to just give this sort of faint luminescence to the interior of the chamber. 
and you now very much understand where the smell was coming from. Um, as you begin to curve around the right side of it, um, the tunnel widens a little broader to about 15 feet wide. Um, the mushrooms become larger and larger, some of them four feet tall or bigger. You can see like large pillars, stalagmites, stalactites are meeting in the center where they give off their own little offshoots of fungus, um, but some of these are getting very, very big, and uh, the pathways are getting a little, a little narrow to move past until as you turn around one of the right bends, the fungus is pushed around to the point where it's a very, very narrow passage to push through these fungal forests. I don't like mushrooms. Me neither. Tasty, actually. <laughs> Make like a glowing salad of some kind. Ooh, yeah. Hey, Rixus. Ah. I give him a little bit of beef jerky. <laughs> okay, do you want to go in front of us and lead the way to your king? Okay. okay. And he kind of carefully turns to his side and thins up and just slowly, with a disadvantage because he's bound, still effectively manages to squiggle its way between the small path, and you can see he knows it pretty well, uh, through this small cluster of dense, uh, tall fungus, safely to the other side. Um, Is it bad to touch it? I will not walk on them! <laughs> <laughs> uh, and the rope is still trailing. <laughs> yeah, it's like, like 30 feet of slack rope that's kind of just <laughs> on the ground over there. If only we had some fire. Oh. Do you want me to set these on fire? Because I have, fire? I have some. Where are the flames gonna go? We knew I liked you. What, I mean, what, what is it safe humans? to burn? What if, what, what if it what sets off? Do. Yeah, what if it sets off a poison when they're on fire? I don't know. I'm. I've heard to that disease, burning so. mushrooms could get you. You know. Eating, eating mushrooms. Oh, it's not fumes. No, no. no. Oh. <laughs> I wouldn't know. <laughs> They don't allow that kind of stuff at mage school. Okay, I'm gonna go through. Wait, am I gonna burn it? I'm gonna get to the other side and then I'm gonna try to burn it. I don't wanna burn reeks. Okay, <laughs> I'm gonna try to go to the other side. Okay, <laughs> go ahead and make a straight dexterity check, please. Oh, okay. All right. Oh, wow. Uh, hmm. Woohoo! Wait, is that 18 or 19? 18. Plus the statue, Quantum. Follow, following suit, you deftly follow the same pattern and come out the other side, not even touching any of the fungus with either side of your armor shoulder powders. Fabulous. Your mantle, I guess it would be. Should I try to burn them now? <laughs> what do you guys think? Depends on what we think biggest threat is. Touching mushroom, breathing mushroom. Should we test it first? Touch it to test it to see I'm if it affects us. They might release spores and then become airborne, which is why I only recommend trying to burn it first. That would release a lot of spores. Hmm. How far away can you cast that shit from? Pretty. It's ranged about eight. I don't know what that means. <laughs> <laughs> oh, is it burning hands? Yeah. No, uh, firebolt. Oh, Firebolt? Oh, it's a pretty decent range. Yeah? Just a single hit, yeah. What if we all back up to uh, our different sides, yeah? Get back as far as you can, and we'll get the way the fuck back. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Let's see what happens. I'll just hit it, because I can do cantrips a lot, right? Cantrips you can do as many times as you but, want. I mean, heck yeah! I'm gonna do... <laughs> They don't let cursing happen in mage school. Mage either? school, they don't curse in mage school. What I'm sorry about curse? that. Yeah, they're real tough on that in Dollar Run. Oh, smack your hands, I'll tell you that voice. much. That fucking blows. <sighs> I'm gonna. <laughs> cast... so I wouldn't tell you, my div had a potty mouth. <laughs> I'm gonna cast <laughs> no. higher bolt at uh, the mushrooms. That gives me two d10 fire damage. Yes, and them. and and which. It, even with a, with a singular bolt, and the mushroom's pretty big and it's not moving, it's pretty easy to hit. You hit the first one a while away, and as it impacts, and you watch as the flames burn up, and it immediately kind of the strange, subtle, like squeaking sound releases as it kind of shakes and shimmies, and you watch as spores filter out that then ignite from the nearby flames that immediately destroy the cloud before it can emerge, and the fungus slowly kind of withers and crumples over. Okay, I do the same thing on all of the mushrooms that are along the path. Okay. <laughs> one by one, you kind of create this this pathway, destroying the fungus uh, on the opposite side. Uh, are you still holding the rope? Yes. Okay. <laughs> As the flames begin to burn. I went through. Burn... Remember, I went through, and I'm holding the rope on one right, side. Yeah. Right. 
So as you're destroying these, the rope kind of pulls a little taut to your side as you begin clearing the path and you look over and you can see your friend is like peeking around a rock. You can see this kind of glow on the other side of a boulder just around the bend where he's kind of looking over and looks back at you and it's like, What? The rest of you guys, there is a path wide enough for you to, path, to follow through. We join. They're coming? Oh, yeah. Okay, I go over All right. to read. As you guys approach, um, you can see this small flickering of light shift suddenly, and a, a dark shape of a figure whips around from behind the rock. You see like a, a flash of cloth that floats open and then kind of drifts down to the side as an arm uncurls. You can see immediately, wide-shouldered, a broad, long trench coat that swings open to one side, a clawed, familiar, kind of slightly furred hand holding it open as a brownish hat, wide-brimmed, appears with its candle placed on top of the brim. You see another kobold standing there looking at your tied-up friend and the rest of you, and he goes, Hell! Hell! We're in a bowel of fungus. <laughs> As you look on the inside of the cloak, you can see these little patchwork pouches of different gathered mushrooms, orange, green, and blue. How so? Good brothers come by. Well, well, what do they do? Well, they do. Tell skirts! No. Oh, bad. Good, bad. Fun. I don't understand what he just told me. Just, I mean, to begin yeah. with, you're not alarmed by us just being here in the first place. I'm not the right man. Let's, 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 no. Yeah. Some gift horse in the mouth. A gift rat. <laughs> uh, orange? Orange fungus. Slight citrus will taste. Result of fuzzle sensation. Forty gold. Whoa. And the other two are, uh, what about blue? Blue fungus. Thirty gold. Like for a good digestion track. <laughs> I'll take the blue one. You have that much gold? Yep. You now have a helping of blue fungus. What's the, the, the third was? Uh... Green fungus. Green. 25 gold. Hmm. More of the uh, onion of fungus family. It's a good topping. Uh, I grab rope that is holding red cheeks and bring him over. You know this one? Oh, a strange one. I don't like him. Other corporate stairs. Is he a problem? You be nice to him. That, it's the, it's the, you know, they're Punch real. Punch him in the eye. <gasps> oh. Punch him! Oh. No. Only live once. Orange. I got to keep them in line with tough love. Orange fungus. <laughs> Take the orange. Alrighty. Do I know anything about this blue fungus? You make a medicine check. Oh wow, it's I'm into that. It's good for digestion, I hear. 16. That's what this 16, says. okay. Oh, 20. Okay. Um, so. Eating this fungus has a chance of poisoning you, <laughs> but also has the opportunity to heighten your senses and perceptive capabilities for a short time. Is it? Ooh, it's a gamble. Yeah, it's never stopped you. How about, how about mine? So that's the orange one. You got the. Uh, I got the orange. <laughs> you have the yeah, orange. You got the blue. Well, you got the blue. Sorry. Yeah. No. So the so the uh, the blue one has a faint possibility of poisoning you. Poisoning you. Uh, Sorry. You're the blue. Yeah, I'm blue. You're the orange. There you go. All right. So. Uh, you give the heightened senses. Yours has a chance of poisoning you as well, and or has the possibility of uh, healing some hit points. <sighs> Down the hatch. Yeah. Oh. Ooh. All right. Both of you guys make Constitution saving throws. Give it to Mikey. He'll try anything. Now, because you're next to me, I I have aura protection, which is plus two to saves. Yeah, I would. Okay. Oh. All oh. right. That that helps because my Constitution's really low. Oh. Yes. Twenty-one. Eight. Okay. Oh, so. Uh, so you're poisoned for the next hour. All right. Just the poison status, which means all of your attacks are at disadvantage. That's funny. And uh, uh, and your ability checks are at disadvantage as well. Um, so you have advantage on all uh, perception and uh, investigation checks Great. for the next hour. Oh man, everything's crystal clear. Yeah, you're just like your your eyes dilate suddenly. I can't know kung fu. <laughs> yeah. um, Show me. <laughs> uh, bundle, you heal six hit points. Oh! I, I heal six. At least it healed you while it poisoned you. Uh, I'm also going to cast Lester Restoration and just make the poison go away. Okay. So, uh. so the poison vanishes. Just a, at which point the uh, the, the kobold. <laughs> <laughs> Mush Huster Max, thanks here. Now, 
off to find some new adventures. Puts the cloak in front of his head and just darts away on little like ninja feet. Strange fellow. Through the mushrooms and vanishes into the it's darkness. Weird, you're just that selling mushrooms to random people in caverns like that. I highly recommend the blue fungus. You want another oh, life? A bit off. I would have hit that guy before he said a single word. <laughs> Take his ass. I'm taking the. Oh, we know. Somehow I know that to be true. <laughs> but at this point, you hear a strange guttural growl from the path that you were traveling near a pillar of stone encased in mushrooms. As from around one back of it, you see the shape of a large, hunched, bestial, dwarf ape-like creature, Ooh. standing about six, six and a half feet tall. As it, its long arms kind of drag on the ground, uh, it's drooling down its own chest. You've experienced most of you like this. This is a trog, a large, subterranean creature. But this trog is acting strange. It's kind of giggling to itself. Yeah, yeah. Holds the pillar and grabs some mushroom and kind of oh, and scarfs no. it. There we go. And he just starts walking around the edge. It <laughs> looks around right to you. It's real! No. 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 Make a persuasion check. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, yeah. natural twenty, yeah. about fucking time. <laughs> yeah. There we are. No, too weird. I see things. And you see two other large trogs come from behind, also oh. going. Oh, and they're they're tripping balls. Yeah. Uh, but one of them is currently clutching what looks to be like a long staff of like some purple, uh, some purple and gold inlay, and is kind of gnawing on it like a large lollipop. You can barely, see, you can't see the top because it's kind of jammed. Does not. Like, I'm going to use. They're all some, just kind of looking at you, going. <laughs> I'm going to use some thaumaturgy to just make us all get really fuzzy in and out, if I can do that. You may. Oh. Okay. <laughs> they all just stand there and watch. <laughs> One of them kind of picks his nose slowly. I thought, I thought this through. Uh, I, I use prestidigitation and create little light flares around him. Oh. He can kind of elbows one in the chin. The guy who was holding the staff, he elbows him in the chest. <laughs> pulls it out, and you can see on the top of the staff, it has like these these awesome pointed-looking purple stones, three of them in a triangular pattern that seem to just float. Locked into place with the stuff. <laughs> James it back in his mouth and begins chewing on it again. How do we get this? I don't know. Uh, maybe. Can I make the Can I make the staff like look like it's made of snakes or something? Can I thaumaturgy? Can I like just make uh, it look unfortunately weird? that's an illusion spell. Well, the thaumaturgy is very simple, okay. and it's a very faint effect that wouldn't have any effect if they weren't already tripping balls. If they're already tripping balls, can we just say, "Whoa, why are you holding that snake in your hand?" Oh my god! <laughs> make a persuasion check. <laughs> <laughs> oh, please, please, oh. please! Oh no, eleven. Eleven. He goes, <coughs> pulls it out, looks at it. Snake! <laughs> he just begins trying to bite through it. I'll, you watch as his teeth are breaking on the metal. <laughs> I'll cast command on him and say, "Drop that wicked snake." <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, what's your spell DC? Uh, Thirteen. He rolled a 13, uh, minus one. Because oh! <laughs> Strog is not very wise. Um, he goes, <laughs> and drops it. And you see him like, he's putting his tongue through his mouth and he does bits of teeth are kind of like falling out of his lips and bouncing off of his belly. <laughs> and they're all just kind of currently entranced by the movement oh, and the lights that you're creating. The, um... Yes, I, I would love to collect the... Uh... <laughs> Thing. Make a stealth check to try and see if you can not gather their gaze as they're currently entranced by this. We are doing our best outside, <laughs> inflatable people. 21. 21. You slowly, subtly go beneath their eye line, slip out, and pull the staff away as they're all still just kind of. One of them, one of them begins like picking his ear and pulls something out and kind of eats it. Yeah. Oh. We, should, we should back away slowly. Okay. Oh. Let's back into the shadows. Oh, slowly. Keep going. Reeks. Okay. Reeks, if we leave them, will you keep guiding the way? 
takes away my... <laughs> Behind them. Yeah. The way it is, where they came from. Fuzzy, I feel like my introducing yourself. Mm -hmm. Good news, my brothers. <laughs> We come from both the future and the past. <laughs> oh, 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 oh my god. Help him go. <laughs> Let me tell you, your fathers are proud of you. <laughs> <laughs> they, the two on the sides look into the one in the center who goes, You know, father? <gasps> I've been this fucked up before. <laughs> <laughs> Your mothers love you <laughs> and are proud of you. <laughs> Take a bit of a check. It's so dark. Weird. <laughs> God. Persuasion, you said? Yep. So good. Uh, that's 18. 18? Yeah. <laughs> His giant, meaty, like fur covered hands kind of clap onto your shoulders of your armor. And pulls you in close. You can smell the horrible trog breath kind of billow out across your face. It almost thickens the air around you, and it smells of rotting meat and uh, a multitude of terrible memories. <laughs> and the deep secret is you know that I am you. <laughs> he releases you and takes a step back and goes. <laughs> and just starts sobbing openly. The two other trogs kind of clap the side of his shoulders and start sobbing too, and the three of them kind of sit in place and just start having the most basic slowly. of existential crises you could watch. Slowly making our way around the existential crisis. <laughs> the rest of you make a stealth check. You already made one. Oh my the rest God, of you make a stealth I'm check. Oh just doing God. like inches this way, oh, like uh, an arc. And Papa oh. and Mama <laughs> don't want you to hurt you. <laughs> <laughs> you have to love you. You get, you get, the, sense, you get the sense they're picking up every third word yes. due to the limits of their language comprehension. But they're like, love. <laughs> 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 they're just making guttural noises at this point. Give in to it. <laughs> Make a stealth check, please. Oh, it's a 20. Oh, yeah. Yeah. As you guys slowly curve around the three <laughs> sobbing trogs, staff in hand, you exit through the tunnel they had passed through. Uh, the fungus begins to give way as the heat begins to rise steadily as you traverse further into this tunnel. Uh, you're holding the staff. As you're walking, kind of looking over it, uh, a slow voice begins to peek in. Seemingly from nowhere. Can anyone else Into your head. It? Just, <laughs> oh, wondrous. Another unworthy soul. I command you to throw me into a river and be done with it. Hmm. First, you must tell us your secrets. I require a wielder who walks the path of power, fool. What does it say? It requires a wielder who walks the path of power, fool. Magic? I'm not calling you a fool, it's calling you a fool. Good, 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 good. Magic. Yeah. Magic. Magic. I do magic! I'm going to take him. Take him. As you take the staff, it kind of warms into your touch, and for a moment, there's this kind of awkward silence of, did she actually hear anything, or has your friend been crazy this whole time you've been traveling? Both. <laughs> <laughs> I know. I just As a voice slowly echoes in, you, you have potential. A withered seed that could blossom into a tyrant well, of the Well, I'm pretty blossomed already, but. <laughs> yes, you will do. I am Aluneth, and together we will do great things. And that's where we're gonna take a break. Yeah. <laughs> Thing. <laughs> and the little gems are floating in like a triangle. Yeah, they're 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 literally just held aloft by some mystical power. Fancy. I'll show you things. Yeah. Okay. Nicely yeah, done. Okay. Your baptism is going well. Yeah. Very well. Yeah. Yeah. Sorry about trying the narrative thing. I was like, oh. Oh no, it's all good. That's good. First time in, you just kind of figure out what you're doing. You're doing great. Oh, oh there's a wall there. <laughs> uh, thank you guys so much. Uh, we're gonna go ahead and go to break. We'll be back in a few minutes. 
uh, rest. We're gonna get drinks. Um, we have some fun stuff at the break for you to watch as well as you get to check out. Uh, if you haven't seen it, the uh, the song in which I sing for this expansion. So yeah, pretty sure that's coming up. Um, Yep. Where's the notebook? Show it. Show the Fi Wild. Yeah. Yeah. Stay wild. Fi Wild. Alright, guys. Not about to do Russian, mm -hmm. We'll be back here uh, in just a few minutes. We'll see you then. Alright. Yay! Oh my gosh, so much fun! Legends tell of a vast underground world and the countless treasures that lie in store for worthy. Adventurers. You've signed up the best. You're on a great quest to find the mighty mother load. There's treasure galore, but perils in store and construction that isn't up to code. Trespass with care, there's sure to be something rare. You can grab all the loot that you can handle. Such riches you'll own, but leave one thing alone. the light, you then must take flight, eluding each hazard and each threat. It's a chaotic race as the monsters give chase, and all the while you're trying to follow the map. They're gaining on you, your options are few, and you fear that you're never gonna get home. You sought after wealth, will you lose all your health? To kobolds and catacombs. <laughs> it's kobolds and catacombs! Hey Critters, as always, thanks for supporting our shows. It's time for tonight's giveaway of my wood. This week's gift from our friends at Wormwood Gaming is this zebra wood tabletop dice tray made from the wood of real zebras. And the code word is DELVE. Remember, only to type it once or you will be disqualified. Good luck and congrats to the winner. Thanks again for watching. Stay turned, my friends. Don that helmet, scarf down some protein bars, and shave those legs. That's right, we're learning how to play Flamme Rouge from Stronghold Games. Sorry, French people. This strategic cycle simulator pits two to four racers in an epic competition for two-wheeled glory. Setup begins using a stage card. Today we're setting up the intro track, Avenue Corso Paseo. Using this card as a guide, build the course with the correct letter casing side face up. Next, players select their color and take their player board, a sprinter and a roller model, and energy cards matching their color, split by rider. Players then shuffle their energy cards to form decks, one for each rider, and lastly, the exhaustion cards are placed face up within easy reach of all players. Starting with the player who most recently rode a bike, definitely not me, my bikes have all been stolen, players will place their riders in any free lanes behind the start line. The board is divided by squares and lanes. Each square has two spaces, one on each lane. Play is gonna occur over three phases. We've got the energy phase, the movement phase, and the end phase. In the energy phase, players simultaneously choose one of their riders and draw four cards from that deck. Then you're gonna choose one of those cards and place it face down. And then recycle the remaining cards. Recycling is when you place cards under the deck face up. Later in the game, players will shuffle and flip over the deck once they reach the face-up cards. This is genius, we should always do it, in every game. This process is repeated for the other riders on each team, then we're off to the movement phase. Really good. Is this the bike? <laughs> Starting with the frontmost rider, players move that rider ahead the exact number of squares on the matching card. Five, six, seven. Some movement notes. You can change lanes at no cost, but the right-hand lane is considered in the lead in each square, so it would be silly to not go to the right. Players can pass through other riders. However, if a rider would end movement on a fully occupied square, they cannot pass and stop in the first square with a free lane. In the end phase, remove all played cards from the game. They're all for good! 
Next, apply the slip streaming effect. First, identify the packs. Packs are one or more writers that have no empty squares between them. Then if two packs have exactly one empty square between them, the rear pack gains slip streaming and moves forward to merge into the forward pack. The process repeats for all packs, and some writers can gain slip streaming several times in a round. Finally, if a writer has an empty square in front of them, draw and recycle an exhaustion card into a writer's deck. Exhaustion cards are just like other energy cards, but their value is just two. Play starts over again with a new energy round, and the game continues until somebody hits that finish line. Once you have a few races under your belt, you can try alternate stages, including tiles with mountains. Ascent squares maximize a rider's speed to five and eliminates slipstreaming. Descent squares add a minimum speed of five to a rider's movement. And that's Flamme Rouge. If you want to watch me play this game and other awesome games live, you can check out Game the Game every Wednesday on twitch.tv slash geekandsundry or projectalpha.com. Keep playing games. Au revoir. Au revoir. Au revoir. Au revoir. Au revoir. Yeah, here I am. You caught me. Oh, you caught me being beautiful over here. Come on. Hey! Hey, don't you turn away from me! I've got so much a heart! I'm so fucking pretty! Hey, shut up! Everybody knows you're beautiful! Just shut up, damn it! Introducing the first ever Critical Role art book, The Chronicles of Exandria, Volume 1, The Tale of Vox Machina. Standard and deluxe editions available now. Order your art book today at the Geek and Sundry and Alpha online stores. Welcome back, everybody. So, before we before we dive in, before we dive in, uh, the winner of the uh, the Wormwood uh, giveaway is uh, Flash Fletch thirty three. Flash Fletch thirty three. So congratulations, Flash Fletch thirty three. Uh, Denova will get your contact info. We'll get that off to you ASAP. Uh, also, I was just notified at, at this little side thing that was something. I was notified that the chat had discovered. Um, so back when Vanilla Launch happened, I was one of the people waiting at the midnight launch of World of Warcraft outside of a Best Buy, a cold Best Buy in Irvine, many, 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 oh, many no. years ago, <laughs> and started uh, my long trek on the RP server Silverhand at launch. I discovered today uh, via uh, Fatal Cake 23 in the chat that there is both a Vox Machina and a Slayer's Take uh, guild on the I'm server sorry, I started what? on, which is so yeah. weird in full circle shit. to me. Yeah, we used to play on that you, server. Yeah, you dragged me on the silver hand. Yeah. Holy fuck. So that's kind of a cool. So, so hi everybody on silver hand and those Yay. guilds and beyond. Um, it's been a while. It's been a while. We're such fake nerds. That's <laughs> fake. That's fake. I just want to so. go deadlift right now. I aspire to nerd. <laughs> you aspire what? I aspire to nerd. I just thought it was a nerd. All right. So as we come back in. <laughs> You have acquired. Do 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 do. What is it? What is it? Ooh. Should I read it out loud? If you'd like to. Ooh. I have acquired Aluneth. This ancient, extremely powerful staff was once owned by Agewin. 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 Sure. Agwin. The only female guardian of Tiras Fall. This staff carries a mind far more ancient than most things in Azeroth. My spell attack rolls gain a plus three to hit. Whenever I deal damage, I deal two additional hit points of force damage. That's amazing. As you're clutching the staff, as it speaks to you in your mind, together we will do great things, but you must survive. So, be smart, stay alive. Okay. 
perhaps ditch these unnecessary dregs. They're pretty cool, actually. Well, some of them. Who's cool? What? Oh, I'm cool. What are you talking about? What? what are you doing? Did you eat the mushrooms? Yeah, you said they're pretty cool. You said they're pretty cool. You're talking out loud to no one. Oh, no, it's the staff. It has a voice. What did it say? I heard it. What did it, it say said that you? I'm really amazing and that I'm going to do good things. Oh, no, we're pretty it's cool. It's basically, I think it's, a, it's like a really powerful weapon. It's like the kind that you take with you for several, several levels at least. It's like a staff you of... That you get the epic loot drop. Staff of flirting. He wouldn't speak to me. Mm. I'm too tall. Mm. That's mm. probably what it is. Mm. I think it's just your own positive nature speaking to you from yourself. Oh, not That's that possible. Mm. <laughs> My mama and papa are very proud of me. I mean, that's up to you and them. I don't know <laughs> shit about that. But <laughs> is he you? Is it a question? He? I don't know. No, I is mean, he you? Yeah, oh, remember. him. You. Right, mm. not staff. I'm confused. <laughs> Your perceptive uh, night elf sense pick up the air becoming more sulfurous as you progress. Mm -hmm. You all begin to feel a bit uncomfortable in your armor as the temperature gets warmer <laughs> and warmer. As this tunnel descends slightly and then comes to an abrupt leveling point, you can see a faint orange glow begin to fill the chamber before you as the pathway opens up into a large cavernous dome. The floor of this new chamber is cracked with dark soot and brittle black rock. The room seems to maintain its own kind of uh, atmospheric reddish-orange glow across the entirety of the roof. Roughly 30 feet into this chamber, you get a glance at this source of light as the rocky floor suddenly drops off into a river of roiling molten magma. The heat at this point is extremely intense, causing you to squint as you back away from the edge. There's a series of pillars that rise from the lava into platforms. In fact, it looks like at one point, two wide uh, stone bridges that were perpendicular meeting in the center once reached across this lava field, both from where you stand and then one on two opposite ends of this cavern where you can see openings on the opposite end to the right of where you are and then to the left it appears a portion of it has collapsed and closed it off. These bridges, however, through time and erosion, have fallen in parts. And to give you a visual perspective of what you're glancing at, you entered from this chamber. These are the existing platforms still. The shaded elements represent ones that are down in the lava and just resting there. There's a slight alcove over here. There's a number of dotted bits here and here. This appears to have collapsed. And there's an opening here and an opening here. You're cert currently on this platform. Okay. Wow. See, this would have been an appropriate place to build Bridges that are kind of iffy. <laughs> Two of them, even. Mm, yeah. Uh. Hey, Reeks. Uh, Which direction is your king? Uh, and he kind of bends forward and tries to get one hand up, and the finger goes like. Uh. Hey, look, your hands are working again. Mind over matter. They mostly just let me through. Okay, well, we'll figure it out. Now, now, you know King Tagwaggle will be very disappointed. Tagwaggle! Tagwaggle will be very disappointed if you know we are not brought before him. Wait. Across. And the finger, kind of like the broken hand, tries to lift up. Across. I remember. That way. That way to talk, Michael. Straight across. Yes. I, okay. I want to take a quick inside check and oh, give him a nice give, him, give him an eye. Across this one. That's a. Uh, that's a. Uh, that's not bad. That's sixteen. Sixteen. Mm. Kind of hard to read. You, can't get, be you get the sense that. Something doesn't sit right with the way he's saying it. All right. Erwin, do you uh, see anything hinky in this room? Anything off bed? You can make a perception check if you like. I'd like to make a perception check. Can I join her with my heightened senses from my blue fungi? You may. <laughs> with advantage. 
What's that? Is that a defense? Uh, okay, yeah, 16 plus perception. Plus there you go. So, so 23. 18. All right. So as you both glance over, uh, you notice one the part that's collapsed and taken down that portion of the bridge, there is no way through. It is completely sealed off. You both notice simultaneously on the central cross platform or in the center of the chamber um, where you see across the broken stone, there's a bunch of scraps of metal, like empty shells of armor plates that are just kind of left there and have long been covered in dust and soot. Um, you notice with your fair vision that the small alcove on the far end of the upper corner that's down on near the surface of the lava, it appears to be two figures laying down in the, sh in the shadows there. You can't make out much more detail than that, but it appears to be two humanoid entities that are just currently resting on that platform. They're laying a trap. Mm. I'll bet you anything. I need to get closer. Trying to. They're who? With dark vision, can I see them? At this distance, no. You have probably have to get closer to the central platform to get a better oh, view. Still, okay. <clears throat> All right. I'm gonna try and go for the center platform. Wait, but but she just said there's a big pile of of metal in the middle, and yes. and two creatures hiding. On the other side. What if they're waiting to explode the middle? And we're standing here talking in this chamber, so. Could I take some of my ball bearings and go across and? To have my ball bearings in my pocket to trip them and go across and try to get closer. Real. You can throw them out in front of you to try and see if it hits No, you. I'll have them with me in case hmm. I need them oh, as a defense. In case. Okay. All right, can so I you sneak across to see them. Cool. So you pull out your small pouch of ball bearings, kind of hold it in your hand. Um, go to make a stealth check. Mm -hmm. okay. uh, uh, this is good. You're going to be good. Uh, 23. Jeez. That's not bad. Um, okay, so you have to leap across to get to the smaller platforms going up because there are the breaks in it. Um, what's your uh, strength? My st mm -hmm. ten. Zero. Ten. Right. It's so, ten. so maximum ten. So you get about ten foot jump across that way. It's about a ten foot jump to get to that smaller platform. So you kind of keeping low, using the balls of your feet, go and make a leap for it. Just catching the edge ever so carefully. If you can make an acrobatics check to use your momentum to tumble onto it Cross and not fucking fall back. fingers. What's four? Uh, acrobatics, you say? Twelve total. Twelve. Okay. Oof. You just oh, barely, oh. just barely use your momentum to not tumble backward towards the molten rock below. Using your shoulder, you roll, and using momentum, you come to the other side of that and leap a second time towards that other side of the platform. I need you to make uh, one more check for me. Same thing. Acrobatics to try and. Uh, Thirteen. Thirteen. All right. So you leap. Tumble and you make your way across the platform. Uh, as you stand there, looking around, you get a quick glance down into that uh, that little alcove below. As you kind of take in the circumstance, you see there there are two figures. Um, they are armored. They are lying down and they are skeletal. They are long burned away. The flesh is gone. Um, they they long died there. Either they were trapped and couldn't find a way out and just slowly starved or dehydrated. Um, but there's nothing but just a pile of their equipment, uh, their weapons, their armor, and bone. Um, oh, man. At this point, the floor below you kind of just gently rumbles a bit, and you watch as some of the metal scraps kind of scrape across the ground oh, no. on their own. They leap up into the air and form what looks to be almost bracers of some sort of large, thick pieces of armor, just separate as molten rock begins to shoot up and flame ignites, oh, filling the center oh, of the empty no. armor into what appears to be a large, elemental-like enemy made of fire and magma within the armor. You watch as this magma rager appearing, giving this flexing roar, <clears throat> goes charging towards you. What are you doing? Am I doing this? Uh, you would, well, you're definitely not <laughs> hidden from it yet. You'd have I'm to hide hidden. first. Okay, okay, okay. I'm going to, strength is not my thing, I think I'm going to run. Okay. Yeah. I'm going to run. Okay, so you run back the opposite direction. Mm -hmm. dush, dush, leap. Hit across the way. Go ahead and make an acrobatics check. Flat. Oh, okay. Well, Fine. You spend, run off all of your shoulder, leap a second time on the other side, and make one more acrobatics check. Uh, uh, do, 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 16. 16. Not a problem. Make it across the other side, and you watch as this large, raging elemental stops at the edge. Dush, 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 
scoots back and just stands there waiting on the center platform. Oh. Well, at least now we know. <laughs> what about the two things laying, laying in wait? Were, were they setting a trap? They were skeletons. They were done. They were dead. They were undead? Oh. They're dead. Just dead. Just They're dead. dead. They're oh. regular dead. Well, that's iffy. <laughs> you know. Yeah. But also tempting. Because what did they have when they died? We should definitely check it out. Yeah. Yes. I can chuck you over. But there's a giant flame well, yeah, monster. First the one thing, then the other. Yeah. You know. How I, are we gonna beat him? I could stun him. Think that would work? Might. We'd have to be fast. And no one could fall. I'm not going to fall. I guess. Why I... do you think I was saying that you would fall? You were staring straight at me. Was I? <laughs> oh yes. One of us could fall. Now you seem sarcastic because you're rolling your eyes. I'm not taking your water for drinking. Um, I'm not very good at jumping, but I can cast fly on myself. Oh, oh she's invisible. She has invisibility. Yeah, I think we just have to get to. Did you trust Ski Fur? Freak? Yeah. Well, <laughs> hey, that's a good point. Reeks. <laughs> Why didn't you warn us about the giant monster in the middle there? Sorry, I forgot. Did you? Yes. What happened to your voice? What? <laughs> <laughs> I have a question. Did they die from the monster in the middle because they're on the far side? Or did they die trying to get out that entrance because it's not really an entrance? It's like a little wow. alcove, right? That's deep. <laughs> that could be anything. Oh. Well, Maybe they just fell, well, there, and then they couldn't climb back up. There but is it's some... It's quite a bit to get across, because... It, they had to have gotten there for a reason, right? And this big there. bruiser is just floating there, staring at us, doing just nothing. Just staring at you, right. yeah. Well, you can fly. Yeah. yeah. I've seen you do it so many times. I mean, yeah, I'm really can't good you at just, it. Can't you just skirt the uh, yeah. edge of this room and go over there? You don't need to go through the over sky. Over to the, the alcove? Sure, see if there's anything worth, you know. Yeah. Well, I can. This is what we live for. Try. Of here. Fly. Fly. <laughs> Kobolds and. Fly. Fly away. Fly, 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 fly away. Fly, fly away. <laughs> Catapults. Yeah. I'm not going. Too much hassle. I've played a lot of Kobolds and Catapults. Okay. We can totally Catapult. kill this thing if we need to. Let me Big fire thing. Okay. What? What do you yeah. say? Big fire thing. Yeah. How do you How do you make him go back to sleep? Don't let it know you came. Okay. <laughs> um. Tell you what, Locor, will you hold his leash, please? Sure. <laughs> and I'm going to, I'm going to fly. I know exactly how to do it. You just cast it on yourself, it's, it's concentration for, I believe, up to an hour? 10 minutes. 10 minutes, even better. Sure, yeah, I'm gonna fly. All right. And then I'm gonna try to go over to that little alcove and see what happens. All right, so you watch as the tiny gnome suddenly <laughs> just takes off and begins gliding across the roof of this Magma area. I'm giving the creature a wide berth. Look, Laura, you're finally doing it. Hey! <laughs> <laughs> 116 episodes later. As you're doing it, you watch as the Magma Rager just stares and tracks her. She goes, and as you head across the other way, it kind of shifts to the very edge of the platform, almost tensing at the border, and just watches you as you slowly descend towards this platform. As you come down, make a perception check. Uh, 17. 17, yeah. okay. Glancing, you look down, yeah, they're charred and long dead. Um, bits of the armor appear to have been burned away. There are a few pieces of equipment that seem to have lasted okay, though covered in black soot. Uh, there's a couple of small satchels that are left there, and it looks like they both were kind of back to back, just hoping for help or trying to find a way off, and eventually expired. I'm sorry you had a tragic ending. I'm gonna keep flying around them. I don't want to touch my feet to the ground in case something comes out of the ground. Okay. But I'm gonna dig through all their shit and see what I can find. Make an investigation. Okay. Find good stuff. No! Wow. Wow. On the loot hole. Wow. Oh. So disappointed. Goodbye. <laughs> now, good now I'm happy. <laughs> okay. Goodbye. Um, well, glancing through, most of the leather falls apart as you grasp it. The armor kind of crumples and <laughs> falls apart as you touch the armor. Um, the only thing that catches your attention because it's the one piece of equipment that is shining amongst the rest is in one of the sheaths, there's a blade that as you pull it out, it's got this beautifully like wicked metal that kind of curves into a point at the end, like a forked point. It's got a bit of an energy pulse gem in the center of where the hilt is. And as you reach over to look at it, it looks pristine, untouched. 
by tying the soot. Pardon me. A little effervescent tonight, apparently. Um, the, the soot wipes off of it cleanly. I hold it aloft. I found a weapon. By the power of Queen. and you die. <laughs> I'll bring it back over to you guys. I also <laughs> talk to you. Yeah, I was saying no, no, no. But at this point, LNF does whisper and say, "You've already found a weapon. This is of no use to you." I'm not going to keep it. Yeah. I'm going to give it away. Side Good. Pit. Sooner the better. <laughs> Go silent. Shh, you watch as coasting over, blade forth across the, <laughs> the magma rage. You're still kind of tensing against the edge as she flies over. I wave it landing. towards the creature as <laughs> I fly by, but I don't get close <laughs> enough to really do anything. As, as uh, Girl Demi finally, finally lands on the ground, presenting the blade. Uh, what kind of blade? How big is this thing? It's a long sword. It's big for a long sword, but yeah. it does technically act as a long sword. Yeah. Which one of you would like this beautiful blade? Oh, shit. I, I would like to see it. I would also, but I would do um, Rochambeau with you. Yep. Okay. Best out of three or just one time? Just one time. One time. One time? Throw on four. On four? Yeah. I have intelligence of eight. Well, throw on three. Throw on three? <laughs> throw on one. Why are you changing it on me? <laughs> what are you Let's do it on two. We go one to shoot. Okay. <laughs> okay. Yeah, yeah. That's, that okay. sounds good. Yeah. All right. One, two, shoot! Oh shit, two peppers. <laughs> <laughs> we go again. We go again. Yeah. One, two, shoot! Give me that Aww. shit! <laughs> <laughs> there you go. It's a very fine blade. Ooh. What's the name of her sword again? Aluna. Aluna. It's a, it's a staff. Sorry, does, does Alunef have anything to say about where we are? Does he have any. any? Oh, mighty Alunef. Oh my god. Do you have anything to say about where we are? You seem really crazy right now. <laughs> it talks, I swear. The voice oh, comes back in from, from the ether. <sighs> I do despise these subterranean regions. I don't recognize where we are. This world has changed quite a bit since I last walked its surface. Yes. How long since you walked, walked its How surface? How long since you walked its surface? I mean, I know, I've heard about Alineth before. It's very ancient. Of course you have. I don't know. Generations. Long time. Girl. Could, could you could you fly over to the to the? Uh, Do you wish to attune to the weapon? Hell yes, I wish to. So I'm uh, attuned the, to nothing. The, the, the so I will attune very, to this. The I have an idea. You want me to go over to the the, the collapse? Yeah, lead, lead 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 the creature over to that section of the. Oh, of the, okay, okay. I'm gonna fly over to the collapsed area because I've still got a little time left, right? Okay. Yep. So you coast over to the collapsed area. And I land. All right. Now what do you want me to do? I'm gonna try and cast hold person on the on the creature. Wait, I want him. I'll wave my arm so he kind of I want walks to towards him. me. Make an intelligence check. Mm, God, it won't work on him, will it? Okay, so so the creature kind of heads over and it's focused towards you. What'd you get? Uh, I got uh, twenty. Twenty. You get the sense that hold person mainly affects small humanoid creatures. A large elemental like mm. this would not be held not by be, a spell. Never mind. Never Is mind. an elemental considered a monster? It's considered a monster. Creature though. Um. So you discovered your weapon? Yes. This was made for me. Should I be describing this? <laughs> of course, why not? Table? It's fun. Yes, it's this fun. is called Adventure Fury, Blessed Blade of the Thrill Seeker. <laughs> this weirdly pristine longsword is encased in meticulous, almost gaudy gold scrolling and rune like carvings that spell out phrases like Carpe Diem, like your shirt with donut. And you only live Carpe once. Carpe Donut! You only live once. You gain plus two to all attacks and damage rolls made with this weapon. You are immune to fear. And if you ever attempt to flee from danger, you must make a wisdom saving throw, DC 12. On a failure, you instead rush towards the challenge in hopes of glory. YOLO. Yes! Yeah. <laughs> it's a great item! It's Adventure Fury, Perfect. the Blessed Blade of the Thrill Seeker. Oh my god! Perfect. 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 Is there an actual blade in the game? No. If you oh hold my it for god, long enough, does it, it's, does it please start to extract the tattoo under your game. forearm? <laughs> Practically. It's, it's an inside joke. For Argus and for Argus and for L.R. Jenkins, one, two, three, four. Yeah. There you go. There you go. I could try to stun him if we all wanted to make a break for one side or the other. I'm not sure if it would work, so. Um, Any other ideas? Which side? Which side? Um, straight through, I think. I mean, that's what Reek said. Wasn't Reek lying? No, he's very oh. trustworthy. I think there's something about the other side that we don't know. That we need to know. I cast Zone of Truth. 
Ah. Okay. Ooh. What's your spell DC? Uh, A 13, right? Yeah. Nope. Yay! <laughs> <clears throat> uh, Sheiker, what's his name? Reek. Oh, right, Reek. Reeks. Reeks. Reeks us. Reeks us. Do you really know the way back to King Tagwaggle? I do. Yes. Which direction is it? That would be. Right. Ah. <sighs> oh. oh. He lied to me. He did. I did. I'm sure it's nothing personal, though. I'm bad with directions! <laughs> He's telling the truth! That is the truth. Oh, yeah. that is true, yeah. Do you like us? Oh. Do you like me? No, he has, he has to answer. Yes, <laughs> though. I'll endure you! <laughs> what? I'll what? take it! <laughs> I endure you. Endure. <laughs> hey, Shakira, do you fear me? Good, that's all that matters. Let's go. I think I'm running out of my Actually, 10 while, minutes. While this You're getting down, down to like the last couple I need minutes. to stand up and, and I need to fly away okay. from this laser or else I'm going to be stranded well, you, on this side. You can you can land where we, where we need to be. I'm yeah, that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to yeah. fly around and fly. I'll do the other side. Okay, you coast around to the opposite, to the to this platform yeah. over here and land on the opposite side of the, side of the bridge. Okay. Oof. The Magma Rager spins and is like flexing in the direction of where you are. While the zone of truth is still active, Bundle, what are you the most afraid of? Make a wisdom saving throw. Oh, damn it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, that's uh, 18, uh, oh, 19, 24. Answer yep. as you feel. Not you. <laughs> no. Not even a little. I know, we're allies. They're like so soft and squishy. No, I was, if it was like a spider, then I could take care of it for you. I don't want to put it's you in an spiders. awkward position. <laughs> Should we leave you two alone? <laughs> no. <laughs> no. <laughs> well, you only live once. What are you gonna do? <sighs> do it. I'm gonna make a run for it. Do it. Fuck it. <gasps> What's your strength? Uh, my strength is uh, is uh, uh, sixteen. Sixteen? That's easy enough for you. You run and leap. <laughs> Big dwarven strong legs. <laughs> you leap across. <laughs> You land on the center platform, at which point the magma rager turns to face you. Yep. Are you? What are you doing? I'm going to cast a sacred flame, which I know will do very little on him, but it might just temporarily irritate him. And I'm going to run the opposite okay. direction. That's sacred a flame action, right? to my side. All right. So it makes a dexterity saving throw. No, it's an action to do that. Oh, it's an action to do that. Yeah. Uh, should I just burn my action running? To dash, you can. Yeah, I'm just going to burn my action to dash. Okay. You like? Mm, nope. Mm. You go running. As it goes charging towards you, it's going to go ahead and attempt to make a charge slam attack. Oh no! Uh, that is going to be a. Uh, that is a twenty-three to hit. Oh my god! Yeah, that hits. Okay, you t double ones on the attack, so oh, okay. only six points of bludgeoning damage. I can live with that. Six points of fire damage. I can also live with that. And as it slams into you, you immediately get pushed fifteen feet back into the air. Uh oh. You arc backwards. As you're falling back, you can look, you're just edging towards where the, plat the central platform where you were before you got to the middle one, and off to the side where the lava is. Uh, go ahead and make an acrobatics check. Okay. Oh, shit. Uh, God, if I have to do an action, I hope I can get an action before this happens. No, no. Uh, acrobatics check. Oh, God. Okay. No, why'd you give us this check? I was I'm an idiot. Okay, okay. 20. 20? You just barely managed to catch yourself on the edge <laughs> and roll back up <laughs> onto the platform. <sighs> And Magma Rager is right there at the edge, just staring at you. It's burning coal magma eyes, just angrily staring at your dwarven form. So where am I now? Am I? You are now currently still right, right there in the center. Yeah. Ah! Oh, he ran backwards. He slammed into him as he ran towards him and pushed him back onto the middle okay, platform. Okay, okay, okay. I have. An he I didn't fall in. I have an idea. Okay. Is he considered fighting us right now, or is he just staring? I mean. In theory, once it can't, he seemingly can't do anything at you from range, so he's just waiting for someone to come to his platform. If you decide to then assault him onto the platform, then there would be an initiative roll. But right now, it doesn't okay. seem to have any means of attacking okay. at range. Okay, then I'm going to cast Charm Monster on the, the creature. Okay, cool. this is your fourth level. Mm, it is. Cool. It rolled a four, so it does not succeed. Oh! Yes. Woo. You love us. We're really great. Let us pass. You watch as it's intense. 
in, like expression towards the dwarf slackens, and it kind of flexes its shoulders, and then rolls back to the center platform, and then just kind of looks over towards you with a nod. Your mama loves you very much. <laughs> Your papa's very proud of you. <laughs> Come on, you guys. Doesn't seem so scary. Across. All right. So your strength with your strength. What's your strength? Uh, zero. Uh, ten. So ten? Nobody ten. attacking Sorry, ten, you guys. Ten. If anybody touches him, this is going to break. Attack your strength. Oh, oh, goat. Yeah. So the three of you make it across fine without an issue. Go ahead and, and make an acrobatics check for me. Yeah. We'll say oh, 20, natural 20. Natural 20, I'll let that go for all of them. With a natural 20, you, seeing all this happen and watching them all dart across, you just begin to do hand over, over feet, just full on hand, handspring style, <laughs> leaping over the platforms, yeah. past the rager, you all make it over to the side platform, mm -hmm. meeting up with your mage friend as the magma rager is still kind of sitting there resting in the center, just looking towards you for some sort of an order. I did have Rixus with me. Great success. <laughs> <laughs> He's just being dragged and slammed like some horrible no, slow motion yo yo. Like, like the skip it toy. I did a quick cure wounds back to 41. Just okay. To, just to... Can you talk, Magma Monster? Magma. You hear it emitting some sort of sound, but it sounds like a, like a, like a heavy bonfire and rocks banging together. You know what That's friends awesome. do? They dance. Friends dance with each other. We should dance. So as you step up to the edge of the platform, begin to gnome dance. The rager. This is, is, it, uh, is it the Warcraft dancing animation? <laughs> <laughs> and there's just this, this this large elemental covered in armor that's kind of like pseudo getting down with this tiny mage gnome on the edge of the platform as the lava glows from underneath, uplighting him. Wow! I guess we can go, you guys. Yeah. Okay. See you later. And as you walk away, it slowly stops dancing and kind of goes back to rest in the center of the platform. Yay. All righty. <laughs> that was a unique well, uh, solution. Level spell. Oh, Goodbye, Rixus, though. now that your lies are through, lead the way quietly. We are problem yes. solvers. <laughs> quietly is the key here. Why is that? Oh, oh I don't feel Maybe bad. Like Why is that? We healed his hands. Big. Full loves a hut. Big no. thing. Not um, Tuddle Waddle. Someone else. Something else. Tuddle Beyond. This is Big Dragon. Did you. Dr uh, dragon. Uh, what did you say? Dr dragon. Dragon? Big Dragon. Great. Uh, I have actually not gone up against uh, a dragon. Oh, really? I just want to put that out there. They're not bad. They're, well, I mean, I hear, I hear they're not bad. I, I, Have you ever seen a dragon in person? No, no, I mean, well, no. Well, no. Rix is one, one dragon? Just one. One dragon. Not too bad for you, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, Have you uh, ever seen a dragon? Yes. <gasps> well, my grandfather, he told me tales of them. Mm. Let's talk yes. to Will. Okay. Okay. We, we, we choose the shadows in the presence of dragons. Yes. That's let's, good idea. Let's stealth for it. Yes. <laughs> As you guys press down through the darkened grade, the heat subsides slightly, and you feel the the breeze now. This 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 pulsing breeze, the tunnel, uh, rhythmic almost. As you turn into an open cavern. Of a magnificent natural pocket of geodes and crystals. Beautiful blue and green crystals refracting patches of luminous fungus into these faint kaleidoscopes that permeate the entirety of this entryway. There's a visible exit across the chamber and slightly to the left, uh, where you can see in the middle is a glittering mass. Piles upon piles of gold coins. Punctuated by gems of all colors peeking through this hoard. As you enter and look about it, it's more money than any you have ever seen. Uh, there atop this mound, you see lying the gargantuan curled form of a sleeping red dragon. Arms crossed, head resting there. Creature. Hasn't acted in combat yet. Yeah, oh. but um, <laughs> I, I have to share. I have to share. I Speaking must. in accent, but out of the game. As a as a for, former rogue, boohoo. 
this one is asking me if assassinate <laughs> oh. is good in this moment to get a, a special surprise attack on Gargantuan size dragon. Yeah. He doesn't yes. know I'm here. You would, it's true. Is she, <laughs> asking, is she asking quasi Can or is she asking best? Can you would magnify? almost definitely hit dragon, but it would be like taking donut and hitting the side <laughs> of um, the Empire train. State Building. <laughs> Creatures. Absolutely, He's you will creature. hit. Absolutely, and you will take off half of one scale of the dragon. <laughs> I mean, you can do it. This is Dungeons and Dragons. <laughs> do whatever you like, but I'm just saying the game will end in <laughs> two minutes. It's kobolds and catacombs. Point made. Point made. I am curious to see. <laughs> It's still sleeping. Snake. 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 What else do we see in this? Um... Make a perception check. Okay. Ooh. With advantage still? Blue fungus? Still? You do, yeah. Yeah. You're a fun guy. Thank you, Talisman. 19. <laughs> 19. Yeah. Glancing about, you can see that the, the crystals that, that uh, go across the room appear to have been either uh, naturally grown and some have been placed with what appear to be some sort of faint magical light behind them that when it refracts, it actually acts as a light source within the chamber. Um, and almost intentionally so to make the place prettier. Mm. Um, looking throughout this large cluster of coins uh, on the floor, you can see what appear to be broken bits of furniture and decor, things that have been just kind of jammed in there and bent slightly, like vases and uh, uh, you know sculptures, various pieces of art that are kind of scattered in this hoard. Um, what does catch your eye is there is a, a beautiful, uh, jagged-looking dagger with a series of almost red-like gems across the blade, a chain affixed to its pummel that is currently resting partially jammed underneath one of the hands of the sleeping dragon. <laughs> tempting, tempting. I bet he's a heavy sleeper. Yes, if anyone's going to fuck with that shit, it's going to be you, but it's still a big if. I'm in. Yes. Oh, yeah. yes. But I, and I also have a, I also have question. Yes. About uh, this uh, item that I'm attuned to. Let's say that this one's not crazy enough to grab dagger, and we just want to go by. Uh, this says that um, if you ever attempt to flee from danger, you make wisdom save. The sneaking by. Avoiding is different than fleeing. I just wanted to triple check. Part of me thinks it would be hilarious. Yeah. To see me rush in, but uh, oh, believe me, a part of me thinks it would be hilarious too. Yes, yes, um, yes. But distinctive is fleeing. Okay, is good, different. Good to know. If the dragon in the sense were to awaken and engage you, it might be yeah. a different deal. But slaying a sleeping creature is no glory. No. Right, Yolo. Yolo. Are, there, are there any other exits <laughs> out of this room? This, this Currently, space? from what you view, no. Uh, the rest of the chamber appears to be the home to where this dragon is. Um, you do not see an exit, and it seems strange that a dragon of this size would find its way in or out. Um, just, not to be a stickler for our uh, contract, but do we see any, any candles? candles? <laughs> <laughs> Looking around with your perception bit, uh, you glance around and you can see there is a trail of flecks of wax that lead across the, f the left side of the chamber into the exit where it goes. So it looks like whatever has been transported, the massive candles, went that direction. Great, there's the exit. I'm going to start making my way that direction. Sneaking, no sneaking, what. sneaking. All right, so you're who's, as who's, stealthy as possible. Who's sneaking first? You are. Sure. Make a stealth check, please. Okay. That's that's all right. Uh, Nineteen. Nineteen. As you make your way slowly around the edge of the chamber, carefully stepping gingerly on your dwarven toes, with a sudden snort. <laughs> It kind of shifts slightly, and as it blows air, hot air from its nostrils, a few coins kind of, ding, 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 kind of glitter and come to rest. Stillness. Your breath is held. Slowly you exhale, as it does not appear to have disturbed the dragon. You slowly make your way the rest of the way across the chamber, and you're now standing at the archway for the tunnel that extends beyond to the next area. Who's next? I, I elbow the gnome, okay. and just lip syncing as I. I don't, I know, I know. <laughs> don't, don't do it. <laughs> okay. I'm gonna, are you going? No, you go first. Okay, I'm gonna try to go. Okay, make a stealth check. You all need to go through because, you know, I'm so big and heavy. And Once she, you're through, and then she's gotta go last because yeah. she's gonna try to steal that dagger. Right. Where'd you roll? 13. 
13, okay. As you slowly make your way through, there's a slight shift to the dragon's oh. neck position as it kind of turns. <laughs> One eye slightly opens, and you watch as this, the interior secondary lid kind of flicks a little bit, and a voice kind of. <laughs> And it just instinctively lobs out a jet of flame in your direction. I need you to go ahead and make a dexterity saving throw, please. Shite. That's a lot of die. Okay. You hear that? That's a crickety clack. You take 38 points of fire damage. Well, I'm unconscious. Can I? Can I? Uh, oh, wait, no, 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 no. I have, okay, wait, let me do my math. Do your math voice here. dropped all of a sudden. Because I have my mage armor up, which wait. means that my arcane ward is active. Correct. Which means I have 19 hit points on my ward. Which it takes those off first, yes. Yes, so that means there's how many? 38 minus 19. 19. So 19 left. Yep. So, so I'm still So you take 19 alive. points of fire damage, yeah. So, so okay. the dragon, after snorting haphazardly in a brief moment of being Roused from its slumber, its dream, it kind of <laughs> goes back to sleep as the jet of flame subsides, and you look over and see this, this what once was a tightly and well placed together bun is now just a singed mat of scraggled gnome hair as the mage stands there, <laughs> covered in soot, little bits of fire kind of burning off the edge of the cloak robe. I'm going to throw a cure wounds at that just to, just to, just to help with that. Stealthily run towards him. You catch up with Bundle as he goes ahead and heals. Go ahead and roll for that. Turn into Yahoo series. Uh, take 11, you get 11 points back. Oh, thank you. Just to help. All right, who's next? Not me. I'll, I'll, I'll go. Make a stealth check. <clears throat> That's a five. All right. As you follow suit behind your gnomish friend. Clank, 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 clank. clank, 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 clank. clank. A couple of footfalls hit, and you hear how loud it is, and you stop, and <laughs> heck yeah, it's totally sleeping. Oh, Two more steps, clang, clang, clang. <laughs> you hold still. Okay, it's fine. <laughs> Two more steps, clang, chink. You foot hits what appears to be a small pot on the ground, and sh breaks and shatters at the impact of your armored foot. <laughs> <laughs> Make a dexterity saving throw. Oh, God. Uh, nope. <laughs> Fine, again. Oh, my God. Oh. Okay. Let the dice hit the floor. Let the dice hit the floor. 35 points of fire damage. Oh, jeez. Are you alive? I'm alive. As, as this, this gout of fire slams into you and just burns all of your flesh, and you takes you takes all personal strength to not scream out in pain as the flames subside, you're like, uh, yeah, can I, can I, uh, Are you still holding the rope that can, oh. What the, oh, yeah, I was, wasn't I? I still had. Reeks. Reeks. Yeah. Reeks is... The rope is burned off now, and Reek, while still bound, doesn't have a tether. Did he get smoked by the fire, too? No, because he was, he was a number of feet behind you. Oh, He's like. Can I, can I use... But you can make the rest of the way if you want to. Yeah, I would like to, and can I lay on hands, dump the rest of my hit point? You can. Okay, yeah. There you go. And so the three of you are across now. It's just the two of you and Rixus. All right. So you want to uh, tangle with the devil and try to take this blade? I do. I do. Hmm. And um, what is the landscape like from where they are to where we are here? Uh, it looks like most of it is either a small, maybe eight to ten foot wide walkway with bits of furniture and gold that have kind of pressed over there, and there's a few small pillars that have nothing resting on them at the moment, uh, and along kind of the curved wall is where everyone's been stealthing around. Yeah. The rest of the chamber is filled by Horde Pile and the dragon. Here's what I think. Okay. If I fucking move, big noise, jig is blown. You need me to stay still. So you do your thing, and uh, if it goes well, you go, and then I go. And if things go bad, we all die together. Things go bad. Can you run while I distract him with my things going bad? Um, you know, no promises. We'll see what happens. Good luck. <laughs> Here goes nothing. Right, stealth check. Stealth. Oh, <laughs> the 
it's a one. Oh, is it? Thank you. But yes. Does she have... Luck of the Rook. She does not have... Does she have um, what I had? Are you talking about reliable talent? Yeah. That's a much higher level skill, oh, unfortunately. Oh, too bad. So sad. <laughs> <laughs> so. Oh, shit. As you approach... Shit balls. As you approach and grab the base of the dagger, you slowly climb up the coins. Oh god. And get your hand around the hilt. And as you tug, it's it's caught on something. Like, no. Oh. I don't know if this is worth it. You pull again. It's caught on something. And eventually it comes free. And you glance up and watch just this large yellow eye is just looking right down at you as a deep moving voice begins to just vibrate the ground. The coins jangle at the sheer base of its, of its intensity. Might I ask what you're doing? I thought it was stuck in your hand. I thought I would help. Well, allow me to help you. The arms suddenly reach out and grab as it lifts its torso back. Its head retracts as it inhales. Power word, oh, no. power word shield. Okay, so oh, you're using nice. power word shield on her. Go ahead and roll up for that. <laughs> uh, you guys are over there. Uh, what are you doing? Sink L What are you guys doing? Are you are you? This oh, no. large dragon is now rearing back. What are you doing? Running forward. Yeah. All right, yeah, yeah. so I know you want to roll initiative. 16 temporary hit points. Uh, 16 temporary hit points. Yes, so add that. What does that mean? means add 16 uh, add. Oh, sorry. that you're about so, to probably lose. So Nine. you're there. 56, 62, 13. 72. But this is where you're at, isn't it? Or no, is that right here, at? that's my new at. You shouldn't be there, because you can't go higher than that. So now you add so, 16 to that, and that's where you are. Oh, okay, so. Uh, so 45 or 16. 61. Yeah. Mm. All right, so initiative, everyone. 25 to 20. 20. Uh, 24. Oh, nice. Oh, shit. Oh, that wow. was Max's voice. That <laughs> <laughs> was. Seven. 19. 19. <laughs> do I, no, I don't. Do I you do, yeah. Roll yeah. initiative. <laughs> <laughs> Four, you're done. Four plus, what's your initiative modifier? Uh, my initiative, my initiative is. Five. Here, Thank five you. plus five. whatever you roll. Nine. All righty. Nope. It's gonna go very badly. Oh god. Alright, so and would you get bundle? Seven. Ooh. Yoda? Yoda. Wow. <laughs> that was We have candles to get. So oh, top of the round is you. Oh, are you just running to meet up with the rest of the party? Party? I'm 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 running a dragon. Okay. Yes. All righty. Three. Years. Not running from dragon. Couldn't okay. if I tried. Oh, now, well, maybe I could. Not now. It's a small anyway. tunnel that everyone else is standing at. No, I'm going for the dragon. Okay, right. go for it. Yeah. Uh, first one is seventeen. Uh, nope. Nope. No, of course not. Uh, second one is twenty-five. Twenty-five hits. Yes, it does. Okay, so that is um, three. So big damage. It was 14. 16. 16 points of damage as you strike, arcing your Adventure Fury Blessed Blade of the Thrill Seeker across the chest of the Red Dragon. It scrapes through, and you see a little trickle of blood begin to spill from the little bit of scales that you carve through. It doesn't, it's still inhaling and seems to not even notice your presence. Oh, buddy. <laughs> Let's go. <laughs> All right, that ends your turn. Uh, uh, Greldamine. I'm going to hide and not fight a dragon. OK, so you, you're you retreating into the, into the hallway and hiding? Yeah. All right, go ahead and, and you run deeper into the, into the hallway. Are you trying to make a hide action? Sure. Make a stealth check. So you just disappear into the, t ah, into the cavern. Oh, I didn't stealth very well. Seven. Okay, you seem like you feel like you're pretty stealthy. Okay. All right. Uh, all right. Uh, Lacour. Uh, I run forward with my warhammer, <laughs> and I am going to uh, take two attacks, and I'm going to div uh, dump divine smite into both of them. Go for it. Okay. Smite. Smite. Uh, Twenty-two for the first one. That hits. And sixteen for the second one. Does not hit. No. Yeah. Okay. So, so you don't dump the second. You, you you once you hit, you divine smite. So you oh, didn't, right, you didn't lose bonus, any right. spells. Yeah. yeah. Uh, 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 13 plus, what's Divine Smite? It's 
There it is. 2d8. Twenty-five points of radiant damage. Nice. Nice. All right. So as you run forward, slam! Your hammer hits right near the wound that was left by your uh, Draenei friend, and as it impacts, there's a flash of radiant energy, and you watch as the wound kind of opens up ever so slightly more. The dragon still. Your second strike, you go to swing, and it hits the scales, and the impact, it, it causes your entire body to shake from just the sheer force of its armor against your impact. Oh, no. no effect. Good sword that ends your turn? Yes, yeah, it does. All right, the dragon rears back. <laughs> and releases an entire burst of fire breath towards all of you, except for you, you're just out of range because you ran. Uh, everyone else, make a dexterity saving throw, please. Uh, you have plus two because you're near me. Yeah, what is this? Only you know. Oh, no, that's no. seven. Quasi. Seven. Plus, you have de- uh, dex, so, but it's still not great. Um, 15. Ten. 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 All right, hold me, we'll just. Shit. Not me. You get a plus two, Liam. Twenty. Uh, hmm. That's not bad. And What'd you roll? Twenty-two Ten. total. <laughs> Okay. Still gonna. Uh, so you take back. 24 points of fire damage. Oh no! Ain't nothing but chicken wing. You failed on the save, but you still take half because of your evasion. So you also take uh, 24 points of yeah, fire damage. Okay. Thank you for that cold resistance, by the way. That's really cool of you to, to put on this character. Dude, dwarves have fire frost uh, no, resistance in Warcraft. Just, I'm just, sorry. Yeah, no, bring it. Bring it. <laughs> All right. So what'd you roll on your? Ten. Ten here as well. Okay. So you take 48 points of fire damage. Oh, jeez! Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, no. <laughs> All right, so you watch as both of them just oh, so the go to the ground that can bring unconscious. Our back. Well, do you have a healing potion? I do. Um, we still have to kill this beast. Oh, no! no. <laughs> 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 I'm gonna give you. I'm gonna give, with your time traveling as though as minor as it may be, when you're you're facing death in the face here, and you don't see much of a chance of victory at this point. Oh, so no. these two are down. Yeah. Okay. All right. That ends the dragon's turn. Um, all right, Erwin, it's your turn. Get the hell out of the dodge. Out. We have to get them out. We have to get everyone out. Tell them. Tell them. Tell them you're sorry. Sorry. Um. <laughs> <laughs> All right, you have two allies that are currently on the ground, one that's right next to you, which is your big friend, and... Uh, I need to help him. What do I have that can help them? Uh, you can grab and drag him if I'm you want. Yeah, that's all you've got. Yeah, okay. I'm going to grab and drag him. Okay, I'll say, so you go ahead and grab him by the, by the scruff of the neck and begin pulling him across the way um, towards the direction of where they are. Um, that's, uh, as you watch, too, the flames as they pour through, they just barely miss and uh, begin to catch fire to, you're now looking, you're inside of an old mine shaft. And you can see the uh, the archways where they have uh, wooden supports in the mine shaft that are starting to catch fire. Oh, no. um, so you're dragging him through. You get him right to the edge of the cavern, uh, using your movement and action, pulling him over there. Uh, the dragon's going to take one swipe at you oh. as an attack of opportunity. Oh, yes. uh, oh you should have used this. Engaged. Oh, that is a She's four. So no, that's a uh, thirteen. What's your armor class? Um, Seventeen. Seventeen. It just one big swipe barely misses you over the head, and you hear the wind. Over top, as you just barely duck below, drag him through the coin and get him to the edge of the cavern. That's the end of your turn. Um, that's going to bring us to Bundle. Make a death saving throw, please. I'm cool. All right, cool. <laughs> uh, you're up. Okay, this is bad. I'm stupid, but not that stupid. So I'm going to run <laughs> towards uh, these two, toward Dwarf, yes, and okay. use action to uh, cram Portion of Healing into his mouth, wake him up. Okay. So you rush out, the dragon's gonna take a swipe at you. Attack one, two. Oh, yeah. Um, you actually already used a reaction on her. Yeah, so you cannot. So. Oh. So you go running, you get up to Bundle's body, mm-hmm. drag him the rest of the way, so now you have both their bodies at the edge of the cavern entrance, which now you can see the flames are starting to curl up in this area. Um, you put a healing potion. What healing potion is it? Is it a? This gr- is a potion of healing greater, 44 okay. plus four. 44 plus four, you heal. 44 plus four. <coughs> All right. <coughs> Just you, right? Yeah. Damn it. Quasarat, that's the end of your turn. That's the end of the turn, yes. All right. Uh, that brings us to. Uh, this is anything else you want to do. That was action. Uh, wait, hold on. Um, I will use a bonus action. Mm, yeah, bonus action to do second wind on myself. Okay. 
Sorry, I didn't mean to cut you off there. So no, that's fine. Go for it. Three, yes. All right. That brings us to uh, uh, Greldeming. It's your turn. You watch oh. as the rest of your allies come in, two of them being dragged in, burned and unconscious. One of them slowly comes to consciousness as a potion is applied, and the dragon is in the room behind, roaring now. The whole chamber shakes and quakes, and you watch as bits of rock begin to fall in the mine shaft that you're in. What are you doing? Uh, who else is still in the room? Uh, all, all, all your whole, all your allies have now kind of, sort of, them quite caught up to you. They're about ten feet away from you, but they're coming into the tunnel that you're in. Ten feet away. Yeah. He is. Yes. I'm gonna run towards him because he's still unconscious. He's being dragged. Right? Correct. I'm gonna run towards him, ten feet. Give him a greater healing potion. Okay. Four d four plus four. Oh yeah, you or you roll that. No, you roll. Oh, it. I roll. Whichever, as long as somebody rolls it, it's fine. Oh my wow. god, I can't grab it. <laughs> grab it. This is the slippery dice ever. <laughs> <laughs> 12, Plus 16. Four. 16. Man. And right. then I'm going to use the remainder of my movement to run back to the tunnel. Okay. You go rushing back down uh, the tunnel. <laughs> <laughs> Alrighty, uh, that brings us to. Your turn, <gasps> Lokor. You, you come to consciousness as like <coughs> coughing from the vial of healing potion. <laughs> Double dash. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so half, half your movement to get up, uh, and then you do the rest of your movement, and then dash. You just go screaming past your gnome <laughs> friend. <laughs> you haven't seen a person in plate move so quickly. Um, all right, that ends your turn. Is now the dragon's turn. Uh, to your luck, the breath weapon does not uh, regenerate. Oh, uh, the dragon. Um, it's going to go ahead and take swipes at each of you. Um, oof, that's going to be a 24 versus you. Only hits a little bit, though. Okay. And then against you, it's going to be a 15. 17. 17. So is it both claws kind of strike out to slam into both of you, just down on the ground. You manage to just dive out of the way and you feel the impact behind you. You almost don't get to your feet as you catch up. You turn around though and you see the arms and legs splayed underneath the dragon claws of your uh, Gunai friend there, Quasarat. Um, you suffer. Everything's going to be fa- <laughs> <laughs> That is 15 points of slashing damage. Yes, okay. Are you still alive? Yeah, you know, always living. Yeah, there's no room in here to do a tail attack, unfortunately, so I can't make that. Yeah. That ends the dragon's turn. That Your turn, Erwin. Okay, so we're gonna decide what we're gonna do. Yeah, so all your friends are running out that way. The dragon seemingly can't get into the size of the chamber. I'm running, I'm running. All right, so you go bolting out there. Yes. Good thing you got that dagger, though. Yes. Okay. Yes. So you're holding the dagger like, yay! <laughs> so you go running and you catch up to the rest of them. You, you're bolting past the uh, the mage, just full on double dash. You manage to catch up and actually go past your paladin friend. No. Um, that ends your turn. That brings us to Bundle. I'm running. <laughs> no, I'm out. You go you go bolting, dwarven legs, catching up to the rest of them. That brings us to the top. Quasarax. I'll get there. Oh, okay. But um, I'm going to flee from the dragon. Go ahead and make a wisdom. Yeah, we'll see how we do. Oh, oh shit. Uh, that's, that's so exciting. Uh, it's, uh, it's big 13. <gasps> exactly? What's, what's the DC on the sword? Uh, 12. Oh, well, you God. succeed. Let's so, get the hell out of it. <laughs> you, res you resist the magical influence of the YOLO bestowed upon you by Adventure Seeker Blessed Blade of, or, or sorry, Adventure. Uh, Blessed Blade of the Thrill, of the thrill Seeker. seeker. Yes. Adventure Fury. Blessed Blade of the Thrill Seeker. Yeah, 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 too much hassle. Go, go. I believe he's wielding Adventure Seeker. All right, um, so. Running. As you guys are bolting, behind, rushing as fast as you can, you hear the rumbling and the roar of the dragon and the heavy inhale once more. Oh, no. As the head begins to push its way into the cavern behind you, uh, the impact of the cavern shaking. You two, who are running the fastest, notice before anybody else does, the ground gives out beneath you. Oh, no. And you both go into a free fall as the, the strength of the ground just dissipates beneath your form. The rest of you see this happen just as you reach the edge, and you watch as the tunnel is actually falling and collapsing beneath you as you all begin to tumble down into darkness. Right as that gout of fire is released, and you watch above you as you spin into shadow, the flames just completely engulf the cavern where you once were. Strangely, the collapse kind of saved you. Um, as you plummet down, whack! I need everyone to go ahead and make an acrobatics check to see if you can manage to lessen the impact oh, of the fall. Natural 
natural 20. Not nice. a natural 20, but 20. So you take four points of bludgeoning damage. Okay. 14. Uh, four points of bludgeoning damage. Right. 20. Four points of bludgeoning damage. Mm. Oh. 19. Four points of bludgeoning damage. 24. Four points of bludgeoning damage. Wow. You guys all managed to lessen the impact of the fall. Uh, it rolled pretty shitty. <laughs> Um, <laughs> he is oh. nowhere to be seen, so uh. who knows what his fate was. Oh, Probably very toasty. Another story. But he's very really helpful. Can I cure wounds on myself? Yeah. yeah. Cure wounds. Go for it. <sighs> um, as, you're, as you're currently in the process of doing this, by the way, you now have Something. your yeah. dagger, which you must from that. Let's see what you got. What you guess? Ooh. Read it out loud. Oh, Kingslayer. Yes. Dagger artifact requires a two minute slot, one handed weapon. Once commissioned by the orc warlock Gul'dan for his assassin Garona, this blade has seen many a death at its hands. One of a pair, the other has been lost to time. You gain plus three to all attack and damage rolls made with this weapon. When you hit an enemy, they suffer an additional 1d8 poison damage and must make a constitution save oh. 14 to be, or become poisoned at, till the end of your next turn. That's, that's me. Yeah. That's a, I that's told you that shit. It was hell to get. Yes. <laughs> Worth it. <laughs> so she needs 20 minutes with that, so we should probably, you we know, rest up. We take a I'll do a, a, I'll do a, I'll yes. do a uh, mass healing word. Do you want to, or we can just, just use short. our hit we're dice? Short. Mm-hmm. Oh. If we take a short rest, I I'll mean, she attunes. Mm-hmm. We can just use our hit dice, or I can do, a, I mean, like, yeah. I mean, because we might need that later. Yeah, do, oh, yeah. do, do, yeah, yeah, do the fine. hit dice. Okay. You guys glance around the space you're in. Which oh, is yeah. which is in, as you guys are having this conversation, you look, yeah, you look around, um, what faint bit of light you carry through torchlight or the light spell to kind of look in the space around, you seem to have slipped down into a small crevasse that partially is broken open and, and you haven't, you're kind of hidden in this small uh, collapsed portion where a lot of it is filled with the loose rock. Just beyond it, you can see what appears to be a flickering orange glow. As you approach and glance off to the side, make a perception check, whoever is at the front of that. I got it. Yeah, right. Advantage. Blue fungus. That was crap all around. Uh, nine. Ten. Oh. Ten. Ten. That's terrible. All right, uh, as you come inside, you you see a, a circular chamber, um, but more hexagonal, I guess. Um, stone built, constructed. Most everything else here has been natural. Uh, this has some cavernous feel, but then has some sort of structure to it. This entire chamber is filled with knickknacks, uh, Gold pieces, random boxes, collected odds and ends, and mounds, mounds of wax, ending in numerous lit candles. The entire chamber, hundreds of lit candles, the most romantic of chambers you've seen. Large, small, this seems to be the mass of where candle storage is for the subterranean cavern network. That's all you're able to make out from this point. Wow. Well. There's a shitload of wax ahead. <coughs> Should we sit down and, and heal ourselves? Yeah, I, I think I think the coast is clear. Okay. Thanks. I mean, all right. Actually, all right. can I do? Is there a thing I can do? A thing that might help. Um, what is the thing where I can uh, I can make it so that we uh, all get max healing no matter what? Oh right. That oh, that's a third level though? spell. That is. Uh, you can have. No, no. Uh, no, that's not. I don't think you have it. Yeah, no, it's Beacon of Hope. Yep. Oh. So I'm going to cast Beacon of Hope on uh, everybody. So for the next minute, um, for the next 60 seconds, uh, so I suppose it's just. Will, will this work on hit, her, uh, hit? Not on hit dice. Okay, no. never mind. Then. No, Beacon of Hope is for like spells and effects that oh, heal no, you. Right, the so hit we'll dice is resting for an extended period of time. Okay. All right, so we'll just do the hit dice. Never mind. Save that for later. It's been so long. So, where are you at? You're at the So, oh my god. You're at level seven. Up to 10 times. All right. What? Awful. And you have five I'm back. Dice. I'm back, baby. Boy, I'm not. As you guys are completing your short rest, a new sound perks your ears as you're resting, and you all kind of stop for a moment and listen. 
It's the sound of a soft violin. Echoey. From the direction of where the candles are being stored. Wait, can I peek through the little thing? Go ahead and make perception check. I don't like that music. Yeah. I don't like it. Uh, 17 plus five is 22. Okay, as you come to the edge and you glance past the first few rows of wax and candle mounds, you can see in the distance uh, a, a number of piles of collected unlit candles that line the walls. And then to the back of this 30-foot diameter chamber, a large lump wax throne stands, crowned with a dozen wide candles all flickering as they wreath, a sitting Larger, more rotund than average kobold, wearing leather armor that cannot seem to contain his bulging belly, now freed from the bursting leather plates around his torso. A white, wild chin strap beard marks his chin line, as a large metallic crown of cobbled golds, silvers, and iron adorn his head, seemingly fused with a tall window lantern that shines brighter than a lantern should. You see shifting movement from within the lantern, like the light source seems to even be. be moving of its own accord, almost alive. A smaller, elderly kobold stands next to this wax throne with a tiny violin, and he's just playing music as the kobold king sitting on the throne just has his eyes partially closed, listening. You see, through the shadows of the flickering candlelight, amongst the various piles beyond your vision, apparently other kobolds are also in the chamber, rummaging around, moving, Organizing, placing goods they've received. That's what you see. How far away is the throne? Uh, it's about 25 feet from you. Guys, the king is right there. Mm -hmm. Lots of other dudes in there, too. Does the staff have any suggestions? Hey, Hallerneth. Should we attack? If you feel confident in your power, then destroy them and siphon their magic. Feed on what power they've got. Can, can I do that with you? Of course, my darling. <laughs> What's he saying? Uh, Aleneth is saying, destroy them. Can you do that? I don't know. Can you do that? Yeah. Then prove that you're worthy of my gifts. Yeah. Should I, should I do a fireball at the king? Who's playing the violin? Uh, an old kobold next to him. I thought it was a little no. No, it's, it's a, old, it's a it's tiny old. elderly kobold who's just like. Okay. I've seen you two in action. What if she fires and you follow okay. with fire? That's true. I'll let her do the first attack because you could assassinate, yes. and then I'm going to fireball immediately after that. Perfect. And I'll sacred flame as well. Am I assassinating the king? Yeah. Yeah. Because All right. should we assess first the power of these other kobold around him? Fuck it. All right. Let's do it. Eyes on the prize. Eyes on the prize. Crossbow's ready. Okay, so you just hit your crossbow. Make a stealth check as you approach the edge and we get to get to a place where you can 19. No, it's not. Oh, it's it's uh, uh, much higher. It's uh, 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 still 30. It's 30. Well, 30. <laughs> you feel comfortable enough stepping from the crack in the wall and then diving below the first row of large, heavy wax mounds. You ready your crossbow across your forearm, aiming it right towards the king's soft underthroat. And as you prepare yourself, the music comes to a halt from the violinist. And the king turns to him. Ah, thank you. This earthquake has made me ever so nervous. Do you take your shot? Yes. All right, you have advantage on your attack, so you get so the roll twice play. and take the higher of the two. That's cocked. So what's the higher one? Nineteen. Plus, uh, Plus twenty-seven. Twenty-seven. That is. 27. That definitely hits. Go ahead and roll damage. Okay, and that's this one? The 
Uh, no, damage, damage, no. Is, uh, you're doing 1D, crossbow, 1d6. 1d6. Where's the, this is my six. Just roll a Q. No. All right, three plus your sneak attack damage. Okay. And we're going to double this when you're done. So, because <laughs> it's you're an assassin hitting yeah. a guard. It is considered a critical hit so because three, he is unaware. Eight plus eight, 16. 16 times these, two. These, well, hold on. 16 32. 32 plus the modifier now, so you're at 37. Ooh. <laughs> You're an assassin. Fireball. Okay, so it reaches up and turns as you release the fireball into the room. The violinist is like, he starts playing again, looks back, and just barely pulls the bow away and goes, oh no! As the entire room just bursts into flame. Go ahead and roll your 8d6 damage. Every kobold is the best in this game. Oh no! Nope. How many? 8d6? Yeah, 8d6. Oh, jeez. Okay, wow. Well. 11, <laughs> 11 okay, 17, okay. 21, 23, 24. <coughs> okay, so 24. <coughs> oh, plus 2, 26, because I'm attacking with Alina. There you go, so. <coughs> So four <laughs> of the uh, ten kobolds in the room uh, are destroyed as the explosion hits. So you hear like a bunch of <laughs> screams in the corner as a bunch of them just are annihilated. As you can see, the throne itself <laughs> is like melting in the wake of it. Oh. Uh, King Togwaggle, three does not make it. So that's 26 fire damage to him. Oof. And the violinist. <laughs> <laughs> is ashes. As the <coughs> as the flames subside, Bless you glance over and watch. There's just a a kobold shaped skeleton clutching a now burning violin that just <laughs> tumbles into a pile in the ground. Yes. <laughs> um, at which point, the other kobolds kind of jump out, damaged and burning, looking to King Togwaggle as he's sitting there, as kind of the edges of his chin beard kind of burning and curled up. He has this giant shovel that he has resting to the side, and he kind of glances up at his crown and goes, Rakanishu. Oh, shit. It looks like company we has, and you no take candle. Oh, <laughs> Slams the shovel onto the ground and stands up. Everyone roll initiative. Oh, All right. my god. <laughs> what the hell? Woo! What's Rakanishu? Okay, that's good. Alrighty. And then, oh! Wow, okay. So, uh, 25 to 20, anybody? 22. 21. Oh, wow, look at that. Yeah, it finally happened. <laughs> finally happened. <laughs> Alrighty. Uh, and then, uh, 20 to 15. 18. 18. 15 to 10. 13. 13. Big 10, my man. <laughs> All right. We've got. All right. Uh, Grumity, you're up first. Okay. You just finished the shooting the fireball. They're all now pulling out pickaxes and going, Wah! and they're all turning and they can see you. They can see you and the rest of you kind of currently now stuck in this hole in the wall right now. You're all kind of locked yourself in this, this pincered oh, position. Shit. Let's go, we won. Okay. Ooh, um. Okay, are they? How close are they all to each other? Uh, they're all about fifteen feet from each other. Fireball! <laughs> <laughs> all right. Boosh. Roll, roll the damage. <laughs> okay, Togwaggle does make a save this time. Thirty-four. Wow. Thirty-four. All right. So it's, uh, Seventeen points of fire damage to Togwaggle, and the rest of the kobolds went. Ah! <laughs> they just get just <laughs> annihilated. The More. one syllable protest. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> their, their pickaxes just kind of tumble off and hit the ground, and some are stuck in them, like into the stonework. Um, 
uh, surrounding beginning to melt wax elements have now melted even further and are now beginning to coat the ground with soft molten wax. The entire chamber is now becoming a sticky Whoa. sort of wax base. Oh. It may have reverse. melted all of our loot that we were supposed to take back. Mm. Oh. It'll form back together. Yeah, though. he can. It's, he's getting <laughs> his wax back. That's the important bowl. part. <laughs> I am gonna back away from the little crack in the wall and hide against the wall. So you're now moving out of the crack in the wall and moving into the chamber. No. There's a there's a, there's a giant kind of hexagonal circular chamber yeah. and the small crack in the wall where you guys were hiding. Just all of us in this teeny crack. Yes, except for you. You're actually outside of it and, and by one of the mounds that's slowly melting in front okay, of you. Okay, okay, okay. I guess I will step outside of the crack. Okay. And. Try to hide against behind a mound or okay. something. Okay, so you dart off to one of the mounds. Uh, you you don't have any action to do a hide check, unfortunately. No, but, I'll but you're like yeah. using it for cover, hopefully. All right, that ends your turn. Bundle, you're up. Everybody say crack as much as you can. Say crack. 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 crack, crack, crack. crack. Um, I'm going to cast. Um, I'm going to cast. A, um, just for fun, let's do. Where is it? I keep losing everything. I'm doing. I'm going to do. Um, uh, uh, just a very standard uh, um, guiding bolt. Uh, and a sacred flame attack. I'm going to just go for a twofer on on the on the big Kahuna. Uh, those are technically both actions. Oh, they're both actions. I thought yeah, it was a bonus. Sorry. Never mind. Uh, I'm going to do. Uh, I'm. Um, uh, yeah, I'm going to do a a a. a, a, a <laughs> this is so hard to do. I it's been so long since I've done this. That's okay. Um, guiding bolt or guiding bolt. I'll do a guiding bolt at at level. Yeah, I'll just do a standard guiding bolt at this guy and just okay. see what happens. So go ahead and make a range spell attack against King Togwaggle. Yeah, here we go. Guiding bolt. Oh wait. Oh, that's a 19. So a 19 plus, plus uh, guiding bolt is a, a 25. That'll hit. Go roll damage. 46 right here. Wow. Ooh. Uh, 16 points of radiant damage. Okay. And uh, he has. Well, the next hit against him has advantage. Yeah, the next hit against him has advantage. And yeah, I'm going to just uh, go and, and uh, give myself a quick healing word as a bonus action because I'm, I'm really low. Okay. As a reaction, uh, King Togwaggle is going to go ahead and use Vengeance of Rakanishu. After you, the Gutting Bolt slams into King Togwaggle. He lifts up his giant shovel in his hand, and you watch as the interior of the lantern crown that he has begins to brighten, oh, and no. suddenly your chest just bursts into flame. Whoa. Oh. You suffer uh, 14 points of fire damage. 14 points of fire and damage. And you are considered on fire. Until oh, you spend an yeah. action to put it out, you're going to take 1d6 fire damage every turn. All right, I am, uh, uh, yeah, I'm at 29 points of damage. Health, that's okay. All right, so that ends your turn? Yeah. All right, suddenly you watch across the chamber, which you didn't notice before, there is a door that slams open, and from the inside, what little bit you can see, it looks like some sort of a latrine or like an open kind of uh, piss pot room, and uh, four kobolds start rushing out <laughs> into the center of the chamber. Their feet kind of getting stuck in the wax. They're only being able to move at half their speed, so they can't get up to anybody. <laughs> they take their pickaxes and just throw them. So they're going to throw three at you and three at you. Um, technically, you guys would both have a little bit of cover because you're behind those. So I'd give it's a plus two to your AC for each of you. Okay. So the first three against you, uh, that is going to be a 16. What's your armor class? Uh, I did mage armor, so I've got Correct. 16. Correct, so with the plus, plus two. two is yeah, it. so it does not hit. So the first one ding, just deflected off the armor. Uh, oh, that's going to be a, that's a natural 19, so that hits you. Uh, you suffer uh, nine points of piercing damage. Okay. As one pickaxe swish, hits you kind of in the chest clavicle area, you're like, ah! The third one is going to roll again, and that is a uh, 12, uh, 17, 18, 19. Hmm. That hit you? Yeah. So you take uh, that's seven points of piercing damage. From a second pickaxe, it jams you in kind of like the hip area, and it, it falls out, but the wound's open. Uh, the three against you. That's going to be a 15 plus four. It's a 19. I'm 17. I don't have any pluses, yeah. right? Okay. No. Plus two. Well, plus, two. plus two. Okay, so 19. So 19. So it hits you exactly. All right. So you take uh, <laughs> six points of piercing damage as one pickaxe just grazes you across the neck and shoulder. It hurts. You can feel the welt kind of picking up. Uh, second one's going to go ahead and strike you. That is going to be a 11. Uh, so 19. yeah, no. 
that one you just dodge out of the way, and a third and final one is going to come for you. That is a natural 20. Oh, no. So as you, do, as you dodge out of the way and come around, there's one that just takes both hands. And as you spin around to hear the scream, it crack hits you right in the forehead. Uh, oh, that's a six. That's 12, that's three. Uh, take 15 points of piercing damage as your head is ringing from the impact of the pickaxe. Your vision kind of blurs and doubles for a second as you right yourself and kind of clutch onto the soft wax, which kind of you fall into a little bit and pull yourself out. Um, all right, that's going to end the Cobalt's turn. Now it's King Togwaggle's turn. Oh, God. Uh, King Togwaggle is going to. Okay. <laughs> okay. Oh, no. He's going to rush forward. Um, currently, it's only the three of you visible right now because nobody's come out of the chamber yet. So he's going to rush forward. And uh, get between the two of you and make a shovel strike on each of you. So the first one against you, it's going to be it's a twenty-seven. Oh God! I was rolled a natural nineteen. Uh, you take. He's a disadvantage though because I'm a gnome. I'm very small. Uh, no. <laughs> uh, that is a. That was an excellent. Yeah. Time. Well, so fifteen well, so points much. of bludgeoning damage as the shovel bang, hits you upside your head. Oh. Um, and then attacking you, that is a 16 plus 8, yeah, that's 24, so that hits you. Yeah. That's uh -oh. an 8 plus 6, uh -oh. that's uh, 14 points of bludgeoning damage. Oh. Uh oh. <laughs> All right, ending their turn, it now comes to you. Can I push out of the, the crevice and run yeah. it? You King push out, and, you, and he's like almost right there. You guys are all clustered right on the outside, so he's easily within range. I can get right on him. Can yeah. I use my... Hammer of Justice, target creature within 15 feet of you, make a constitution saving throw against your spell save DC or become stunned until the next yes, you round can. of my next turn. Yes, you can. All right, so that is a 11. What's your? 13! 13! Yes! So as you step out of the, out of the crevice, you summon the radiant energy granted to you from the divine, and you watch as this giant radiant hammer summoned from the sky slams down and strikes the top of King Togwaggle's head. The crown kind of goes uh, you know, uh, uh, off to the side for a second. He's like He can't make words. He's, his bell is rung, so he's stunned until the end of your next turn. Yeah! All right. Uh, that's your action. Yes. You're there and you're up engaged with him. That finishes your turn. Um, all right, uh, you're up. Oh. Everyone. With stunned, if you hit him, does it break the stun, or he's just? No, he's stunned. Oh, okay. And atta attacks against them have advantage, and melee attacks against them, I'll double check, I'm pretty sure are auto crit. Do I get a bonus Whoa. action with that crazy move? Or you do, it... if you want to do a bonus action. Yeah, I want to I want to pour some searing smite into it as well. Okay, Yeah. I'll let you do that, sure. Yeah. Well, it's not a melee weapon attack, I think, unfortunately. Oh, that's right, never mind, that's, that's what it is, yeah. Okay. Cool. Yeah, stunned, incapacitated. Yep. So, as an incapacitated creature, uh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so you guys melee attacks are auto crits on him right now. Okay. And your 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 buddy is there. So. Um, oh. Dagger, dagger, dagger. You're not dagger. hidden. Can't do that. But you're still dagger. gonna get sneak attack. Dagger, dagger. definitely. I want to do the dagger. <clears throat> dagger. Yeah, yeah. You're Go going to attack. <laughs> Is she at advantage because he's stunned and weird? Yes. Okay. He's just so roll auto twice. Crit. Oh, auto crit. So you don't have to roll. Yeah, you do. You have to roll to see it hit. Wow. 16. Yeah, you hit. Oh wow. Sixteen plus eight. Plus uh, eight so Twenty-four. Twenty-four definitely hits. Yeah. Okay. I'm checking to make sure I do this right. So you roll um. One d four. One d four, which is the triangle, the pyramid. Roll that. Okay. Now you roll your four. Good. Roll these guys. Whoa. Okay. <laughs> roll those. Okay. Okay, at the door. Oh, oh, holy shit, shit, that's shit, a good sneak attack round. 22. 22, wait. Plus four. Wait. wait. Uh, uh, you double it because it's an auto crit, so 22. 44, 44 plus the three, uh, 47. Plus the poison damage? Oh, did we do Plus the eight, which is doubled because it's an auto crit. So roll d eight. Oh, you have smoked Jesus this guy. What are those? That's the that's that's yeah, diamond one. Yeah. Yeah. Five. Ten. Ten. So ten. And 57. Whoa! Jesus, so as 57 using bucks. using the dagger you mustered uh, from from the beneath the dragon, you jam it right up into the abdomen of King Togwaggle, and and he's while still standing, he goes and you watch as some of his brackish blood kind of out of his mouth. Yeah, he looks hurt but is very angry while still stunned in place. His eyes have locked it on you, and you can see the bloodshot look behind the whites. He goes, 
Is that your turn? Is it the end of my turn? Uh, well, if you want yes, to try and... That's, that's the can, end of my you turn. You can dis- disengage as bonus action and get away from him so he can't hurt you. I'll do that. Dance back. Okay. I'll dance back. Okay, yes. well, he's a stun, he can't even attack her, so you oh, should move yeah. away from him. All right, so you pull away, pulling the blade out from the wound, which sounds like... Um, ending your turn, you're up. How far away are How's other uh, little guys from this one? Uh, they're about ten feet behind him. In ten the, feet in the behind him. Well, yeah. then I will use my whirlwind uh, warrior mm. plus ability, and I will start with the big man and move to his little bodies. Okay. Okay. So here we go. So, so as an action, you can make it make an attack against each creature that you come adjacent to. So I'll start with him. Yeah. So uh, I get two attacks because of of who I am. That is uh, 14, 16. Not great. You don't, you don't get two attacks as part of this. Okay. You get one attack against each thing you go across. Okay. So you so, want attack on him. Okay. So am I at advantage because he's fucked up? Yes. You okay. Are. Good. Uh, that's better. Uh, that's twenty to twenty-four to hit. So that hits. hits. Good. Well, damage. Yeah. Okay. Here we go again. And I'll say with your movement moving through, you can hit four of these six kobolds. So okay. Great. Six. Uh, seven, eight. Fourteen on this guy. All right. Fourteen. Keep, keep going. So you're shifting around. You watch as as a uh, quasirat. Suddenly grabs his blade and begins just spinning in a circle. Whoa, 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 whoa. You guys have to like duck out of the way as he carves into King Togwaggle, whoa. carves through a bunch of the wax, and begins just burning into the center of the chamber and just cleaves through, hopefully, four of these kobolds. So Every Brishnikov, <laughs> amateur, amateur. <laughs> do I roll for attack on each yes, one? You do. Yeah, okay, here we go. Okay, first one, we get uh, Etienne. Hits. Okay, second one, we get natural 20. <laughs> Third one, we get one. Nope. Fourth one, we get uh, let's see, 28. Okay, yeah, so three so, of them hit, one of them's a critical. Okay, so first one, we get 10, 12, 18. 18 damage? Yeah. The first one, you just cleave the head off. Yeah. <laughs> okay, second one, critical, we get uh, 8, 16, 18, 24. That one, the blade just bisects him from like hip to chest, and he just tumbles forward on the ground in two pieces. Oh, buddy. And then last the one. last one, four, four, eight, ten, uh, fourteen. Fourteen. That one, the blade stops in his body and is like, cut! Why? <laughs> Life comes at you fast. <laughs> <laughs> All right, that ends your turn. Sure does. <laughs> All right, uh, Reldemeyer, your turn. Okay. Um, okay, I'm gonna try to take his crown off his head since he's stunned. Okay. Go ahead and, uh, what are you gonna do? You're just gonna grab and pull it off? Yeah. Okay. Uh, go oh, wait, no. Can I use Mage Hand to do it? Is uh, that what Mage can, Hand does? You can does? attempt it. I'll let you roll it. If you wanna do that, make an athletics check. Sorry, not athletics, an arcana check to see the, if you can manage to pull it off. Fifteen. Fifteen. You watch as the crown tink, comes off and is now kind of floating there as you're holding it with the mage hand. Oh, my guy's crown! Um, I'm gonna run across the room with the mage hand following behind me and and like start trying to bury it in wax on the other side of the room. <laughs> okay, so you're like holding, holding the air and like trying to dig a hole in the soft wax. Okay. All right, that'll end your turn. Bundle, you're up. Um, so it's going to take an action to put myself out, I assume. If you want to put yourself I out. I would like to put myself okay, out. So, right. so at the top of the round, you do take Stop, three points roll. of fire damage. Okay, roll the um, And you spend the round going, ah, hey, oh, God, just I, putting the fire out on I, you. Do I get a bonus action? Roll you do. The burning wax. So for a bonus action, I'm going to catch spirit, uh, cast Spiritual Weapon at a fourth level, because I think that gives me a, an extra d8 for the Spiritual Weapon. It yeah. does, yes. All right, so I'm going to cast Spiritual, uh, spiritual right. Weapon. And what do you summon? Um, I'm basically want to summon just what is basically a big chomping mouse trap. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I'm gonna take a whack at the king's head with a giant. A divine oh. mouse trap. It's a, it's like beautifully carved from ivory. It looks like. Oh wow. Like this 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 silver snapping mechanism that looks like it's made of elven make that has, has filigree on it. As it sh- appears, you hear like this chorus go. Oh. <laughs> as it prepares itself. Reason. And I'm gonna smack it right into him. Does right. it auto crit? Uh, uh, it will. Oh. It's advantage on the attack, and I think it'll be an auto crit. Oh, it's also yeah. advantage on the attack. 
Uh, it's, it's I rolled a 17 plus. Uh, yeah. Well, you so. could get a 20. Yeah. Yeah. Come on, man. 23, but like. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. yeah. But it's not a crit, crit anyway. So. Is it? It's not a crit. He's still stunned. He's stunned. Yeah. 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 So okay. that's uh. Uh, that's seven. That's twenty. That's uh, twenty plus my sky. That's twenty-six. Nice. Uh, twenty-six points of damage. Twenty-six points of damage. Snap. Oof. Okay. He watches it snaps down and the more kind of just blood spills out, and you hear like the snapping of a bone from the something kind of one oh. eye kind of closes in pain. He's still standing there and is just furiously awaiting his his return. Um, <laughs> I'm gonna back up a bit with my movement and get okay. a little, yeah, get a little bit of cover. All right. So the uh, the four kobolds see you running by with the uh, the, <laughs> the the crown gliding. They go, Rakanusu, Sabbath, and they all throw all their um, uh, pickaxes at you. <laughs> that is. That's uh, <laughs> twelve. Misses you. First one just hits soft wax. Second one, uh, that is a 24. Oh, no. So you take, uh, that is five points of piercing damage. Okay. Make a concentration check. Oh, and a concentration check for the mage hand? Mm-hmm. Okay. I don't know. I don't know. Pretty sure mage oh, hand's <laughs> We'll find out real fast here. No, it's not concentration, it just lasts oh. for a minute. Okay, good. Oh, oh no. <laughs> it just lasts for a minute. All right. Okay. So, uh, so that one you took, took the damage. Mm -hmm. Third one, that's going to be a 17 plus four. That's a 21. Oh no! So you take another. That's uh, four plus three damage. That's seven points I of piercing damage. Turn and look at it right as it hits me in the face and knocks me out cold. <laughs> oh, it does! Oh. Oh. <laughs> you fall to the ground. <laughs> then actually, ping! There's like a little trickle of blood on the forehead as you hit the soft wax, which does soften your blow. Oh, it cracks my glasses. It does. <laughs> one one side is now shattered in a spider. <laughs> as as the uh, the crown clatters to the ground, ping, ping, as it does, it sh the glass of the lantern breaks. Oh. All right, um, that's the end of the cobalt's turn. Your turn. <clears throat> My turn. Yes. Hold real still for me. Whoosh! Two big attacks with the uh, Warhammer. I'm gonna Go dump Searing Smite into the second one. Ooh. Okay. Advantage. Oh, advantage, that's right. Oh, I mean, they're crits, aren't they? Yeah, right. So, 18 yeah, yeah. to hit. Uh, uh, 12 points of damage on the first one. All right. No, no, you. It's a crit. It's a crit. So double you double it. Oh, so yeah, 24. Sorry. Whatever the dice was, you double. Yeah, oh, oh, I'm sorry. Right, so 14 plus 5. Uh, okay, so. 19. 19, all right. Blah, blah, blah. 13, 21. All righty. 7, 14, 21 again, and I'm dumping Searing Smite into it. He does a constitution. 19. Yeah, sorry, what did I say? 19 again. Yeah. Okay. I said 21. Oh, damn it. <laughs> sorry. How do you want to do this? <laughs> Oh, stunned, I walk up with the Warhammer, spin it in my hand and do one, two, with the second one arcing up with all that radiant damage, just coming under his chin, trying to uh, change the way his pretty face looks. <laughs> and as you do, frozen in place, you see the neck muscles tensing against the magic, trying desperately to, to find his way back. And as the hammer swings up, the first hit clanks across the jaw, which you see can break and go slack. And the second strike, as you hit, the jaw slams upward. You see teeth shatter from the sheer force of the impact. And as the jaw slowly falls slack, both eyes are cross-eyed. The forehead's kind of pushed inward. Um, and he just kind of gurgles before falling onto his back, onto the ground, unconscious um, and bleeding horribly. Um, all right, is that in your turn? Uh, yeah. All right, at the end of your turn, you glance over and you notice the mage is down. And you watch the shattered lantern. Suddenly, flames are beginning to emerge and swirl. You see all the nearby candle wicks that have been slowly, kind of burning away from the heat of the room. The flames are almost being drawn from the candles towards this lantern and this flame that's growing in the center. And you see all the kobolds now going. Rakanisho, Rakanisho, Rakanisho. Uh oh. That ends your turn. Erwin, you're up. Oh, we need to get to safety for a minute and get everybody healed. 
I think. Uh, let's. We have two. There are two outs here. There's the latrine room, and there's the crack where you were in. Latrine room. Yeah. Hmm. Latrine so you should go room. darting for the latrine room. Yep. Okay. So you you double dash around, leaping over the body of King Toglagel, leaping off of the soft wax uh, mound, going past the uh, the just out of the range of the kobolds that can't get a swipe at you. Dart into the open latrine room, and as you dart inside. Uh, you see what seems to be a makeshift royal restroom, complete with the terrible smell you'd expect from a cobalt latrine. Uh, there is a rickety wooden commode series, like three of these kind of nasty looking, supposed to look nice but really aren't nice at all, uh, cobalt toilets. Uh, even dangerous to sit in, they look like they have shards of wood and nails kind of jagged up. Um, and there is a rushing underground river that vanishes through a far wall. It looks like it's set up with bars to be almost like a bathing apparatus. River bathing apparatus. Can I duck in there to hide? You, uh, you can certainly try. I'm going to duck in there and hide for a minute. Okay. Just to get out of so you get into the water and you get down into the rushing water. Um, it's a pretty strong current. Um, right. sh- you can hold on to one of the one of the the, the, the the rods, the rails there to kind of hold you in place. Okay. So you're kind of there, keeping low in the water. Do I have any more rope left? No, I used it. I could tie myself up to rest for a minute. Um, no, I'll just sit. You got okay. six hold seconds. So you take a moment there. Okay, All on. right. Uh, that brings us then to uh, Quasarat. Right, um, I see the little one go down, so I start hoofing it in that direction, and I plant my hand right down on her uh, little forehead, and I use Gift of the Naru. Uh, and you get just seven hit points of uh, life. Hey, I'm alive! But then I keep running past her. Right. Well, you get, okay. What? Uh, so, all right, so you do that. You rush past, go to heal her. Two of the kobolds that were you just struck last turn, who are in Nearly range with you. Sure. Swing out with uh, the reactions to attack opportunity. That is a it's fine. twenty. Sure, that hits. <laughs> you take uh, five points of piercing damage. Okay. Other one. Oh, that's a natural one. He just swings wide. Hmm? You rush forward <laughs> between the two other kobolds, where uh, kind of get to get to her, heal her, and then continue to run which direction? Uh, towards the latrine. Okay. So you go darting towards I'm the latrine. Just technically fleeing. So do I need to make saving throw with sword? You would. Okay. Good. Uh, no, it's not good. It's a, f- it's a four. Yo. Adventure Fury, blessed blade of the Thrill Seeker, calls to you, and this day, glory must be found. Yo, low motherfucker. Watch him, my friend. All righty. But am I out of movement and I'm just stuck where I am? Ready you you healed back. her and then you spin around, blade ready, and you, you're going to fight these kobolds and whatever that fire thing that's, that's growing. Of course, you're like I an am. electric guitar in the background. <laughs> I take the sword. Oh, no. All right. Uh, Grumity, you come to consciousness and watch as your. your <laughs> <laughs> Your friends spin around with this giant blade and start laughing in the face of this, now you notice, swelling elemental entity that's drawing fire from all the candles in the room and is growing by the moment. Uh, okay. Um, I'm gonna use Frost Nova. Whoa. And try to target the, the fire element. Okay. And the, the other little things that are in the room. Okay. All right, so that's a twenty-foot radius. Yeah. Uh, you can hit every. Th- you can hit all the kobolds. Okay. All right, so uh, so roll three d six cold damage. Money. Ooh, uh-huh. fifteen. Fifteen. All right. Sorry about that microphone. Uh, and they have to make a constitution. Constitution. Uh, for the uh, kobolds, that is a. What's the DC on that one? Uh, Your spell DC? 16? My spell DC is 16. Okay, no, oh, it's a well, fail. Oh, well, did it go up? Uh, no. With that, no. No, no, no. So yeah, 16, so that's a failure on the first one. Uh, one Cobalt just freezes to death. <laughs> then it's just <gasps> locked in place as a frozen solid one. That one does succeed. Next one fails with a one. Turks the light. And uh, this Rakanishu uh, fails with a six plus. Yeah, because Constitution it doesn't have its plus four, so that's uh, 10. So you watch. First off, Rakanishu takes double damage to that. Takes 30 points lives. of cold damage, being uh, vulnerable to the cold. He watches the the fire and she kind of the flames slightly flicker and pull in there, and the ice that's cased around it seems to create this kind of orb or sphere that's holding it in place. The source of the fire that's drawing towards it seems to be temporarily cut off, and all, all but one kobold are all locked by ice. One seems to break forth. <laughs> 
Mouth candles now! <laughs> um, all right, is that a new turn, or you, you can still move? I'm going to move, yeah. I'm going to run towards the uh, latrine. Okay. Half your movement to get up from prone, because yeah. you're unconscious, so you can get about 10 to 12 feet. So you rush over, you're not about maybe 10 feet away from it. Okay. But you're making your way best you can. Are there any candles around? There's dozens of candles. Still? Yeah, I mean, they seem softer, and you can see clusters of them, but yeah. Okay. All right, that ends your turn. That brings us to Bundle. Uh, I'm going to channel Divinity uh, and quickly just throw seven points of healing at everybody. Okay. Myself. Uh, every little bit helps. Uh, and I'm going to, just for fun, take a swing with the with the uh, with the uh, um, mousetrap at the giant <laughs> flame beast just to see what happens. Okay. So. Go ahead and roll an attack on that. That's a uh, 14. 14, unfortunately, as it goes to snap, it hits the ice that's encased around it and it can't seem to break past. No effect. Oh, I'm going to turn around and run. <laughs> <The latrine. laughs> okay. turn around and run. So you go in a run. You can get just into the doorway of the latrine to avoid the, the kobolds that are still in place from getting attacked. All right, cool. So you get there, that's the end of your turn. The kobolds now are there. Only one of them can move. He's going to go ahead and charge after you, who just got back up, mm -hmm. and swing at you. He's going to rush up to you and swing with his pickaxe. That's going to be a uh, 17 plus four. That's going to be a 21. Ah. You take no, but you're so uh, five points of piercing damage. Okay. You still up? Where are you yeah. at? Yeah. Okay. Um, seven. The other two are going to begin throwing their pickaxes. Like they have like the whole like cluster of them in their bag, and they're just throwing them as best they can. Uh, one of the other ones going to throw it at you, and then two of them are going to. Oh no! And then one more because one of them died. Uh, it's going to go ahead and throw at you guys are in range. I'm going to throw at you. Uh, so against you, that's going to be a 14. No. This is. Oh, sorry. Against you, that's going to be a 12. Okay. So you guys are just deflecting the pickaxe in the middle of the air. Uh, ending their turn, it is now Rakanishu's turn. Ooh. At least I can't move, you guys. We don't know what it is. All right. So, beginning of the round, uh, the ice kind of breaks. This movement still zero, so Rakanishu cannot move. But you're watching as it begins to gather the flames again from the nearby candles. This is a burning fire elemental entity made of pure rage and flame. And this like flickering voice goes, <sighs> Free that foolish kobold knew not what he had. I will be the new fire lord. <sighs> and his mouth kind of opens and you watch as all the flames shh, begin to pull out. All the candles in the room are snuffed as the flames are consumed and the elemental begins to grow bigger and bigger. As it does so, uh, everyone is still in the room, which is you, you, uh, and the door, you're so at the you. door, Perfect. and you all suffer uh, one point of fire damage. Hey. <laughs> uh. um, and then as part of his attack, he's going to go ahead and use his explode. <laughs> and just detonates in the chamber. Uh, 40 foot radius. So that's all of you. Is that a deck save? Uh, nope, all of you just ignite. Okay. Oh. So, no immediate damage, but you're all on fire. The top of your round, you take 1d6 fire damage until right. you take an action or something to put the fire out. Okay. Yeah. All right, so, that's the end of Brokinishu's turn. Uh, it's your turn. Merch. Ow! <laughs> I run so, forward. Top of your turn. Oh, yes. You take 1d6. Uh, six points of fire damage. Got it. Uh, I run forward with two attacks with my Warhammer. Against? Against Rakadishu. Okay, go for it. Yeah. Uh, that is uh, 16. Misses. Misses. You swing and the flames seem to actually dodge out of it. You hit air as it seems to be reforming its body to avoid the blows and then oh. going back into its semi-solid fire form. Uh, 23? 23 hits. Oh, thank God. 10, and I will use my bonus action to dump uh, Searing Smite into this one. Go for it. So that's an extra five points of. What kind of damage? I'm not sure. Searing smite. I think it's fire. Flat damage. Searing smite? Yeah. Yeah. That's fire damage. Yeah. yeah. That does uh, nothing against a that fire was, elemental. That was smart. <laughs> Good deal. So it's a shh, the flames can consume your hammer, and it hits, and it just devours the fire from the hammer. Well, 
Cool. Good deal. All right. Next. <laughs> <laughs> you still do weapon damage. Yes. On top of it, so roll that. But you still oh, do uh, it. Ten. Oh, it was ten. Oh, right. So it was ten. All right. Ten damage there. All right. That ends your turn. Uh, that brings us to you, Erwin. I'm going to go after it with the Kingslayer. I'm going to try to. Okay. Dig well, it out. top of your round, because you're on fire. I'm on fire. Right. Uh, well, technically, you were low in the water because you were in low in the water. Yeah. The flames, when they begin to take take form on you and begin to engulf, you just kind of ducked low and shh, you were probably been affected. So water puts out the flames. Yes. All right, so you let go of the pole, you rush back into the chamber. You cannot quite get close enough to hit him with a melee. You could throw the dagger if you want to, Please. or shoot it with the Oh, with the crossbow. crossbow. Either way, what do you yes, want to do? Yes, I'm going to do the crossbow with okay. the dagger, yeah. So, bolt in, release it, go ahead and fire as you with the crossbow. Is Lokor adjacent? Okay, okay. He is, yes. Okay, good. I so you can sneak attack. This, and then I you're get You're good, add, yeah. Because it's the dagger, so No, you're I'm doing the that. crossbow, you okay, said, okay, so, so you can do the dagger, but it's 26. the dagger in the crossbow? No. Oh, well, you're, you're okay. thinking you, you cannot just fire throw, But you can throw the dagger. You can throw the dagger, or you can fire the crossbow. Throwing the dagger. All right, so uh, that was an 18. 30. She's a 30. 30, that'll hit. Yeah. Go and roll damage. So 1d4. Roll the pyramid. Then roll your four uh, QBs. Okay. Add that all up. Uh, eight, 11, uh, 11 uh, 13. Plus that. 13, 16. 16, mm-hmm. 16 points of damage to Rakanish. Plus Rakanish. poison. That's right. Plus poison. Mm-hmm. Uh, so 1d8. No poison damage. The elemental is immune to poison, yeah. unfortunately. Okay. It is just made of fire. There are no veins it's for the poison fire. to affect. The dagger slams into the fiery torso, and you see a moment of resistance as the blade kind of carves into the flames and then falls and clatters to the ground below it. It seems like it did some damage. Spicy food also has no effect. But it doesn't seem to be reacting to the impact. All right, and, and so now I I will I will uh, let's see I daggered him now I will sh- can I short swing him? No, you can't okay. do another attack. You can use a bonus action I'm to back up. Do so movement just, away. Yeah, you can dash back into the water back. if you want to. So you I'm go back, back to the, the water. Back to the water. <laughs> Holding on there, the water's rushing below you. Um, you can see the water as it rushes in. It's disappearing into like a small opening where the rest of the river is disappearing towards. Um, that ends your turn. Uh, that brings us to bundle. Um, I'm going. The first thing I'm going to do is attack with uh, with uh, uh, the the spiritual weapon as my bonus action. Go for it. So that's uh, aha. Uh-huh. That's uh, oh, that will probably hit. Uh, Twenty three. Oh wait, no. I'm sorry. Bundle, you're. Uh, oh, I got the order wrong. God damn, it was such a good roll. Pause the rat. Hold on to that roll. Right, hold on. Okay. Roll. Okay. So I'm on fire. Fuck it. I run and I attack. Uh, I shot for Argus. And I run forward to him, okay. and I would like to attack, attack for my attack, but then also use my recovered action surge. So I'll hit this fucker three times. First one is good. Uh, is um, uh, don't distract me. Is uh, 27, 29. Second attack is. That hits. You take four points of fire damage. Fine. Is uh, 17 for the next. Uh, that misses. Okay. And last one. Oh, both. Is it in 20? 20 hits. Okay, so two of these hits. And you suffer six, so 10 fire damage you suffer just from hitting him. Okay. You now see at the size that it's gotten, hmm? hitting it with a melee attack does fire damage to you by proximity. That's good shit. So here we go. Uh, first attack is, uh, oh, that's terrible, for 10. Second attack that hits is four plus six is 10, 12, 18. So a total of 28, all told. 28, all told, gotcha. Yes. Okay. So as you're slamming into it, the flames are burning your skin, and you're kind of wincing, just swing as hard as you can. A few make purchase into its body, and you can see it carving away, it reacts a bit from the hits, but the giant kind of jack-o'-lantern-like fire grin just continues to swell and grow with its physical size. It's all right, they'll hold my ground and block my friends. Okay, uh, and then that, now it comes to top of the round. Your turn. Are there any more kobolds alive outside of, or is it just There are the three of them. <sighs> Right. Actually, no. actually, yes, there are three of them, but they're on fire. Oh, okay. <laughs> it didn't distinguish. Everything caught fire in the room, and there are three kobolds going, ah, 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 they're burning up. Rakanisha don't give a shit. Okay, well, I'm gonna cast, I'm gonna cast sleep at second level. Okay. So that gives me 7d8 worth of hit dice to knock people out. Okay, go ahead and roll that. Whoa. Whoa. Ooh, sweet. Ooh, 
I'm thinking they're sixes, but they're not. 15, uh, 21, 25, 29. Don't act surprised, Travis. We know you're going to be a sleep magician 30, next campaign. Totally. Just sleep. Four, 34. 34? Uh-huh. Okay. Uh, you watch as the three screaming kobolds. Just smoldering as they sleep on the ground. <laughs> oh, on fire. Really tired. For my movement, I'm going to run um, towards the latrine. Okay, you're still on fire, right? Yeah, and jump in the water. Okay, you took four fire damage at the top of the round. Okay. And I'm going to jump in the water to okay. put myself out. The flames go out as you dive into the water. They look um, so innocent when they're asleep and on fire. <laughs> <laughs> Bundle, now it's your turn. Sorry. So you can still take uh, right. that attack if you uh, want to. Uh, 23 with the spiritual weapon to hit. All right, top of the turn, you still take six points of fire damage as you're burning. All right, that's fine. And so let's hit this thing with the mousetrap again. And that's, um, uh, it's a plus my spell attack bonus, so it's uh, 16 points of damage. 16 points of damage as the fire, the, the giant divine trap snaps on it. You can watch kind of snaps through one of the arms. The fire arm kind of vanishes as it seems to sever it at the shoulder. And then it reforms afterward. Um, then I'm going to uh, I'm going to use my second channel divinity pr- uh, preserve life and put um, basically let's put thirty points of, of of health into you just to keep you awake. Oh geez, thanks. And I'm going to take five for myself. Uh, and then I'm going to run into the latrine as well. Okay, so you dart into the latrine. <laughs> you can yes, you go to go into the water. Yep. You managed to put the flames out on you, and now you have three of you sitting in there. There's enough room for maybe four of you into this this rushing water area. All right, so you've mostly clustered there. Ends your turn. The kobolds that are sleeping, it's their turn. To burn. <laughs> they all just quietly <laughs> and then <Sorry>. expire <laughs> as they smolder in their sleep. Maybe At least you see. <laughs> Die this candle. <laughs> Live by the candle, die by the candle. Yes, and they, and they are, they are their own candle. Um, okay, so uh, that finishes their turn. There are no more kobolds in this chamber. Uh, Rakanishu is now going to let's see. I mean, I'm in his grill. Yeah, it's pretty. Both of you are. It's going to go ahead and focus on you. It's going to go ahead and take two fire rakes at you. That is 26 to hit. Kind of hits. And 25 to hit. That almost doesn't hit, but it does. All right. So you take 18 points of fire damage from the first hit. Cool, totally cool. Ooh, that's uh, 21 points of fire damage from the second hit. Okay, so 18 and 21. Yep. Okay, cool. Find out what that does. I mean, I'm not down, but. Mm hmm. Okay, cool. I'm up. Actually, technically. Oh. oh yeah. <laughs> Sorry. It should be both of those should be an additional d6 just because every round that he sure. consumes fire, he increases yeah, the damage he deals. So. Uh, yeah. So an additional seven points of fire. Damage. Cool. Yeah, I'm good. All right. Cool. That brings us to the end of Rakanishu's turn, who is going to begin shifting over towards using the movement, which gives you guys both an attack opportunity. Is now moving towards the latrine where everyone's rushing yeah. towards. Cow. Okay. So both you guys can attack opportunity. Yeah. Okay. <sighs> Bit. Jesus. Nope. Okay, Blow. both of you guys, woof. It's just too fast. And both of you, when your weapons actually hit in the middle of the air, ping, and there's a spark, and you both kind of damn it at each other. <laughs> um, all right, that means it's up to the top. Uh, oh, man. Uh, that brings us to uh, Lokor, your turn. Lokor. Oh, me. Uh, uh, I run up behind it, I hit it. Go for it. <laughs> 20. Hits. You take three points of fire damage. Yay. Mm. Okay. Uh, 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 I rolled the wrong thing. Six. <laughs> Six points of damage. Six points of damage. Second one. Sixteen. Sixteen misses. Oof, goes wide. <laughs> oh, there you go. Cool. That's it. All right. So you rush up and you're behind, swinging, one hits, one misses. The heat is intense now, and, and whatever facial hair you had is now gone. Your actual hairline is beginning to burn away. The hairs in your head are being singed off by being this close to the beast. Die. All right. That's going to bring us to uh, Erwin, your turn. I need to get my dagger back. I'm going to get my dagger back. I'm gonna... Oh, you're picking it up instead of a dagger? 
What's your call? Uh, no, I want to attack. I don't know what the right thing to do I is. I want to attack. I want to attack. I want to attack. I want to use the crossbow because that's what I have. All right. Go ahead and roll for an attack. Um, okay. Sorry. Yep. Plus, what is it, a seven? Seven. Plus? Fifteen. Fifteen? Sixteen. You go to strike and it just barely misses it by a couple inches and fires off into the distant room, unfortunately. Uh, um, he's coming toward the latrine? He's coming in that direction, yeah. I'm going to go around him to the other side to prepare to come after him again. Uh, you mean in the, still inside the latrine? No, she's not in the latrine. I'm not in the latrine. I came out of the latrine to attack him. Oh, I thought you backed back into it, into the water. Uh, in the be- end of the last turn, I-, I went back in, right? Correct, yeah, you, you threw to... it and then went back into the oh, oh, I didn't have to come out to crossbow him, did I? Not necessarily. I wanted to, I came out to crossbow him, and mm-hmm. then can I run across the chamber for the second? Sure, I'll let yeah. you do that. You can... I want to do that. Okay, as you move past him, he does get an attack of opportunity on you. That's going to be a 23 to hit. Yeah. That is uh, 15 points of fire damage to you as you run past. <gasps> She's up. Oh no, unconscious? No, she's up. Oh. All right. She's up. That ends your turn. Looking kind of rough, though. Quasar, you're up. I think of my father, <laughs> Leron Jenkins. <laughs> I like Leron Jenkins. Not like <laughs> <laughs> offshoot bloodline. <laughs> I run at him and I attack again. Go for it. Yeah, okay. So, forced attack is okay. Is uh, in 22? That hits. The second attack is a 21. Both hit. Okay, first time we get Etienne. Next one, 16. Okay, 18 and 16. Yes. All right. You also suffer uh, nine points of fire damage from the two strikes. And the flames just beating into your face each time you hit them. That is so cool. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so then you turn. Yes, it is. Okay. Um, Still up. Nice. Uh, yeah, it looks like it's, it's taken a, a beating, but it's not looking okay. super rough. Um, all right, that's going to... Next gonna, round, for sure. Oh, uh, yeah. No, your turn. Okay. Roll me in. With my magic oh, wand of missiles... So, I'm, I'm sorry. I have bonus action. I'm going to use my uh, second wind. Thank you. Go. How many times can you use second wind? You already I recovered it. I used it once before. We took a short rest. Right, you did. Okay, and go this for it. is the last time I get to With use it. With my magic wand of missiles, can I use all my charges? Sure. I'm going to use all seven charges in the magic wand of missiles. Okay. The weed, mm. or whatever. And I'm going to try to hit it. All right. So that would technically be a seventh level magic missile, which means you, you shoot. Three plus six, that's nine darts. So 94 plus nine. Not bad. 94. 94. Four, eight, 12, 13, 13 13, 16, 18, 20. One of us. One more? Yep. Nice. Uh, 21 nice. plus, plus, four. Nine. Oh, plus, nine. plus 9. Yeah, so 30. 30 points of force damage as, a whole, as you hold the wand out in front of you. Like full on anime missile, missile style. Nine magic arcane missiles. And slam into Rakanishu. As the impacts hit, Aluneth in the back of your mind goes, Yes, that's what I'm talking about. <gasps> uh, <laughs> awesome. And you're going to stay in the water? Heck yeah! All right. Uh, and that's going to go ahead and end your turn. Bundle, you're up. I'm going to cast Spirit Guardians at level three. Spirit Guardians is still up, isn't it? Uh, Spirit Guardians is a different. It's not. I'm thinking oh, no, Spirit Guardians. Guardians. Sorry, Spirit Guardians. Guardians. So if he's within 15 Free feet of me, that's going to be a thing. Yes. Um, on his turn, if he's within 15 feet, also he's slowed by half. Uh, but I'm also going to hit him with my with my uh, with spiritual my weapon. Spiritual weapon. Uh, Mouse trap. Um, yeah, god damn it. No, I missed. It's just terrible. <laughs> can I have my die back? Okay. No. Nope. That's mine now. All right, that ends your turn. It is now Rakanisho's turn. Uh, the flames, it continues to swell even larger, and now there is a, a flaming radius. Now, fire is now just around him. You see all the wax around us beginning to burn and bubble in the immediate vicinity. Oh, god. Um, so I was going to go ahead and make two fire egg attacks. Um, one against you, one against you. Sure. Against you, that is a uh, 18. Oh, I'm an 18 AC. Oh, that hits you, Sweet. just barely. Yep. And against you, 
That is uh, a 16. That misses. All right. So misses you. You, however, suffer uh, uh, 19 points of fire damage. Does the done, yeah. Falls to the ground, burning in cinders. Still conscious, but hurting. All right. Still conscious? Well, I mean, not conscious, sorry. Still alive. Still alive. All right. Um, and then with that, um, watch as Rakanishu begins to move into the chamber, the actual uh, oh, no. commode, right? and begins to, just the presence begins to light the commodes on fire. The wood's <laughs> beginning to burn. The whole room is, the entire area is now in flames. Um, so at the end of his turn. Harry Potter in the Chamber of Pots. <laughs> you, do get a, you do get an attack of opportunity as he moves away from you. Hey. Uh, that's a 24. That hits. Sweet. So for five points of fire damage. Okay. Uh, that's nine points of bludgeoning damage, and I'll put some branding smite into it as well as a bonus action. Okay. Do I get a bonus action on a reaction or just a? a oh, on a reaction you don't. Yeah, so you no, can't do that. No, yeah. So it's nine points of bludgeoning. All right. So uh, that brings is, us. Is he to within inverter. fifteen feet of me now? Uh, he would be. He yeah. has to do it with some saving throw. Okay. Uh, natural 20. Yeah, oh, never mind. <laughs> Still takes damage, but it's half, I believe. Uh, yeah, so that's... Uh, 3d6, I think? 3d8. 3d8. Uh, 10, 12, so six points of radiant damage. All right, six points of radiant damage on Torakinishu. All right, end of the turn, top of your turn. Um, Lilcor, <clears throat> uh, you suffer three points of fire damage from proximity in the, the fire oh, aura. Oh, gosh. Nice. All right, your turn. My turn. Uh, two attacks against him. Uh, that's a 23. All right, that hits. Hit. And the second one is, no, that's a, not, not a hit. Okay, so four points of fire damage from the first hit. Okay. Uh, uh, nine points of bludgeoning damage, and as a bonus action, I'm gonna put Branding Smite into it, All right. Um, which is 2d6 radiant damage, and the enemy glows bright. <laughs> <laughs> I think he's pretty bright as it is, but it's Four okay. points of radiant damage. All right, he got it. All right, that ends your turn? Yep. All right, so you rush up to him, you're now like, I'm all out of clustered in the commode, which is now in flames all around. Uh, um, Erwin, your turn. I'm going to shoot him with the crossbow. Because all right, so you're now on the other side of the chamber. <laughs> yes. Crossbow out, go for it. I, I, let's see what happens. 18. 26. That hits, go to all damage. Is Lokor adjacent? It, it, yep. It, okay. It, uh, let's see, 1d6. Mm, uh, yeah, you hit, so your cube. Yep. Plus sneak attack damage, so four, plus these guys. Okay. Yeah. Six, seven, 12, uh, 16. Plus that guy. Uh, 21. 21 points of damage. <laughs> okay. So it sticks in the back, and you watch the flames. While it's growing, it's starting to grow thin. The flames are growing more disparate, and the connectivity of all this fire is beginning to look like the mass is lessening. The damage oh. is starting to take a, take a toll on it. You gonna stay where you are? Uh, I'll back up. So you're even further away on the opposite side of the room. All right, gotcha. Mm -hmm. Cool. That brings us to uh, make a death saving throw. Yo. Uh, good. All right. Uh, Grildemeyer, you're up. Grill, Grildemeyer. Grildemeyer, sorry. It's fine. Grill. It's a hard. It's a hard name. Grundelmeyer. Um. Grundelmeyer. I'm gonna yes. <laughs> I'm gonna cast uh, Grandelfarts at sleep again at second level. All right, go for it. Roll the dice. On the thing. Yeah. So wow. that's that's how many? That's seven d eight. 78. Uh, 11, 15. 15 plus seven is 22, thank you, 25, my brain. 24, six, and then, uh, what did I just say that was? 24, 24, 24 25. Okay. Um, you watch as the flame begins to flicker a bit and then suddenly die down to this tiniest little candle flicker on the ground. And just there, you see this tiny flame that's just kind of wavering lazily. The room is still on fire and everything around it is awful, but apparently it was at a point where the sleep could take effect. Oh, shit. Oh my gosh, you guys, 
Grab as many candles as you can. Let's get the hell out of here. It's not that flame. I don't know. If you damage it, it wakes back up. Oh. I'm not exactly mm. sure how this thing works. Mm. Uh, I have a a, 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 a a water skin. If it's that size and sleeping, would that much water take it out? I mean, let's grab all the candles we can. All right, all right. They Good might point. all be completely melted. Make an investigation check. About 20 seconds have passed. Should I make another death save? Yes, you should. Yeah. I'm going to sneak over and put Somebody a healing, else, healing potion an in his. Check. Oh, yeah. Two, we're searching for candles. What are we doing? What are we doing? Uh, take a 2d4 plus 2. Okay. How much 2d4 You managed to find two? like an armful of soft candles, and Thank they're kind of like you. pushed together and mushed now. It's is more of like... A, is there like a bag I can yeah. shove some wax you've into? Got, you've got sacks. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah still, I start like putting start filling, wax. filling sacks for a bit. How long does the spell last? Filling backpack. Full. It doesn't say... Oh, a minute. Okay. So... Oh. <laughs> You gotta hurry. Yeah, literally, really quickly. Grabbing, uh, finding uh, candles, jamming. Good things, things we're running. Get up, get up. Did I get him? Yes, yeah. we're running. Okay, what are we and then doing? right as we're running out, pour the water on him, and we'll jump in the latrine. Okay, okay, got it. It's done, right? All right. So wait, you see so you guys all rush into the latrine room, yeah. and what are you doing? And then she's gonna pour the water on him the water and run. Skin. I'm gonna pour some water on him. Okay. And try to flame. kill him. Try to kill it. All right. So you uncork it and pour the water on the flame. You watch the flame. <laughs> <laughs> Run. The stores into the full Rakanisho elemental. The room immediately, the, all the flames brighten once more. Um, what are you guys doing? Jumping in the latrine. Yeah, jump in the latrine. Maybe let I the just, raging current wait, take us wherever. Yeah. Go somewhere. Yeah. Go somewhere. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Let Let's do that. Take us. Well, they're, 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 yeah, so the, the, the rushing river, you mean? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, right, so we make a run and I make a wisdom save. Yep. Uh, and I fail. So oh. I turn around so, and go all, back. All, all Drop you, my candles. All, all of you guys dive into the water, one after the, just letting the water take you like a water slide. <laughs> down the curse, one after another. <laughs> and he watches Quasarat turns around with Adventure Fury, <laughs> the breasted blade of the thrill seeker in his hand, and knows, no, this, this is your fate. This is your glory. And the last thing you see before you all vanish into the water is him scream and run towards the reformed Rakanishu's oh. elemental form. Hi, Lord Jenkins, one, two, three, four! <laughs> Your father's proud of you! <laughs> oh. So, at this point, darkness takes over. You're just being rushed around the current that's battering you around at a rapid speed. Even though you the dark vision, things are coming by so fast that you're only seeing things quick enough uh, before it impacts you. I need. Uh, all of you to make a perception check. If you have dark vision, you make it with advantage. Ooh. 19. Success. 23. 16. 17. 17, okay, you all succeed. Mm -hmm. So uh, you only suffer three points of bludgeoning damage as you guys are being battered around by, oh, you go limp and unconscious. Oh, you do? Oh, no. Three no. no. points. <laughs> All right, as you're being thrust around inside, the river's yeah. carrying you, you're trying to hold your breath, the air escapes your lungs. Um, you guys all try your best to hold together. You hit another sequence of rock uh, using your perception from before. You still only suffer another seven points of bludgeoning amongst you. Oh, jeez. So seven, seven, uh, well, it, it, yeah, it would be half. So uh, three to each of you. Okay. Okay. Sorry. Um, eventually, after a minute or so, your lungs begin to burn from holding in uh, the air. What's your constitution? 16. What about you? Mm, uh, 13, okay. plus one. 14. Okay, so your air begins to escape your lung. You, you can't hold it anymore, and you begin to drown just as a light comes to you. All of a sudden, the thrusting of water stops, and you're all free-floating in water, and there's you all begin to, to scavenge around in the air for any sort of what's up, what's down. Uh, the light is below you, the glow, and then you begin to right yourself and realize that that is actually above. You look up and it looks to be there's a surface of water, and you all begin to swim up, at least those of you that are conscious. You're struggling and drowning, and you just limply begin to float Do we, to the surface. Is she floating to the surface? Yeah. I'm going to follow her up then. Okay. So, you go ahead and make a constitution saving throw. My plate mail problem. Yeah. You have a high constitution, so you're able to hold your breath oh, longer. <laughs> Ten. Ten. Uh, you you go unconscious and begin drowning. Oh, wow. Does that mean I start floating? 
you're, you're, you're scrambling under the water and then just go limp and begin to slowly rise up as well. Oh. So two of them begin to rise up to the water. Rise up. <laughs> All right. So as you guys break the surface, <gasps> you glance around, kind of gasping in the cold air. The blue sky above you is nearly cloudless. A welcome sight as you recognize the nearby docks and the humble buildings of what is Lakeshore, where you once left. You apparently were jettisoned to the bottom of Lake Everstill, and you're just around the corner from where you started this venture. <laughs> healing word level two, healing world level three. Okay. Just You there. come to consciousness. <gasps> Um, she's a little worse for you. Oh, oh no. Uh, what do, do I got? Do you ever vivify? Mouth to mouth. <laughs> I am actually, if I, if I use my healing word not knowing that she was dead, do I use my healing word not knowing she was dead? Well, um, because I'm out of magic at that point if I've used two healing words. If you knew she, make, uh, a, make a medicine check. All right, that, that'll do. Also, did his spell reach three miles back? <laughs> no. Okay. Uh, oh, 24. 24? Glancing over as you begin to cast the spell, you recognize the signs that she is not. Revivify on this one, healing word, and level two on this one. So. Okay, I'll allow that. So, All for right. the purpose of this, you reach over, and <gasps> from, from the cold shackles of death, the spirit of, uh, of Erwin, who went on to greet the goddess Ilun, is pulled back into her form as she gasps for breath the surface and begins to paddle. Big Morven punch in the face, just wake up! <laughs> <laughs> the four of you slowly scramble and make your way towards the shores of Lake Everstill. Waterlogged and down one ally, you make your way, <laughs> beaten and bruised. <laughs> oh, just rough. Man. Um, so you have like two satchels of no longer soft candles, and you make your way inside Lake Shore Inn which has another patron now, so business is booming. And you see as Wendell oh, turns around as you enter and goes, my goodness, friends, you've returned. <laughs> oh, and a little worse for wear, but uh, where's your, where's your friend with the beard? He died. He died, getting your candles. I almost lunch. Terribly sorry, but food can be prepared. Oh, that's, that's a shame. Yeah, it is. But it? did you get my candles? Show them the bag. As you dump out a solid rock of wax <laughs> onto the wooden table, he kind of glances down. Those okay. creatures, they, they had melted all of your candles already. We saved as much wax as we could for you. Let me go make some breakfast, as he shell-shockedly winks his way towards the kitchen. You all sit down. <laughs> pull the wooden chairs out, <laughs> slap down on the table, water still dripping from your armor and clothes. You sit there, grab whatever what appears to be half drink and tankards you left as you exited, finish them off, make eye contact and think, man, can it really be worse up on Argus right about now? <laughs> <laughs> and that's where we'll close today's game. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yes. oh no, poor Toad. Oh, no. Please look after my WoW account. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Thank oh, you guys so much for playing. Thank you, Jen, for coming and joining us. Yes. Thank you. This was so fun. Oh, thank you. Ridiculous. Amazing. My pleasure. Amazing. And thank you guys for coming and joining us. Thank you very much to Blizzard for oh, yeah. Yeah. working thank with you, us everybody. and putting this together and letting so us fun. play in, in Azeroth for a bit. Amazing. Um, once again, please check out the Cobalts and Catacombs expansion for Yarn. Hearthstone, releasing on December 7th. Yes. And they're streaming on the official Blizzard Twitch and uh, YouTube on the 5th for their awesome Cobalt and Catacombs escape room. Um, thank you guys again. Have a wonderful night. And is it Thursday yet? <laughs> Bye. Yeah. Oh.